You are about to watch an historic stream. I think it's an historic. I don't think it's a historic. Point is, this is the stream in which I start wearing the heads up display. You see, once we had switched from YouTube to Twitch, I could now watch Twitch chat in the heads up display, which meant it's useful and I can actually wear it. But I couldn't because the little clip had broken off the back. It kept sliding down my shirt. It was super annoying. So the first thing we do here is launch into building a little clip for that. It did end up coming together. And in fact, I am wearing it this very moment. Ha ha. We also took like a major leap forward in the keyboard project because we put together what's actually a really tricky technical model. So this is what we end up making. See these, it's in, it's in these two halves that oh, let's stick together. It, it is very difficult to model and talk at the same time, but it paid off because this model turned out great and you're gonna learn a whole bunch of Fusion 360 tips and tricks. Anyways, enjoy the show. Um, yeah, I did this really good intro and then I forgot to hit record, so just pretend that was really entertaining and now you're super captivated. Welcome back to Void Star Lab. We have some really cool stuff to do today. Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back when uh, back when we were still on YouTube, right? I took a bunch of I took a bunch of sponsorships, uh, you know, to look at various products and stuff because, uh, yeah, like I was just, eh, it seemed it seemed like a good thing to do. Uh, but now that we're on Twitch, the dynamics have changed a little bit because only the most only the most serious of viewers have followed us here. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, the last. So the last episode, uh, we un we took a look at this new Lulzbot printer that we're going to be giving away for a contest. We'll talk more about the contest later. But, um, yeah, uh, that was the last time we're going to review a product. So, um, yeah, uh, basically after I switched over to Twitch, I told the remaining... Uh, basically, I told uh, everyone else I was going to uh, do like a product or something. Uh, product, like it just... Basically, everyone who I was going to uh, use their product on stream, I told them to suck eggs uh, because I want to focus entirely on projects. The whole point of this Twitch thing in the first place was to hang out with you as I build my projects. And we have gotten out of the distractions, and now we're back to building projects. So for the indefinite future, every one of these streams uh, is going to have one main goal. Oh, I do... Robert Blackheart is correct. I do have a crumb in my beard. Basically, from here on out, every one of these streams is going to have one main purpose, and that is building projects. And today is certainly no exception. So here, allow me to uh, let, let me let me bring you up to speed. Uh, <laughs> Oshikuru 9 x asks if there's a way to miss to watch the past few streams. Uh, yes, we try to upload the streams to the YouTube channel. Um, there was. So problems with the last one, I ran out of space in the hard drive midstream and it corrupted the recording. Uh, I have been having some trouble downloading that and getting it getting it processed uh, to transfer over to YouTube. The reason why, oh man, there's so many things to talk about today. The reason why we can't just put all the streams on Twitch is because you can't do that until, is because the streams are deleted after 14 days unless you, you are a partner, right? So we're not a Twitch affiliate, so you can't subscribe yet, but this is our seventh stream, right? This is our seventh stream in the last month, which means that after we hit stop streaming, we'll hit all the prerequisites to become a Twitch affiliate. As long as this, uh, there's a gotcha, the stream has to hit 75 uh, viewers. We have to maintain 75 viewers for most of the stream. Uh, and as long as we do that, when we're done, uh, I'll hit all the prerequisites to become a Twitch affiliate, and then I'm then I'm rad. Uh, yeah, so there you uh, there you go. It's part of the it's part of the fun. So um, yeah, let's explain what we're doing today. First, uh, this episode is sponsored by Next PCB. Uh, Next PCB is uh, an overseas circuit board manufacturer. Uh, they're an overseas circuit board manufacturer, and uh, they pride themselves on. Well, I'm sure you I'm sure you're familiar with a whole bunch of companies that offer uh, that offer low prices and. Uh, and quick and quick service, but Next PCB takes it to the next level by offering a whole bunch of uh, 
offering like a whole bunch of, uh, of, of, of perks on top of that. You're not, you're not as limited with Next PCB as you are with other, uh, with other quick turn overseas manufacturers. And that's why I picked them to help out with this project. Because this is a board unlike any I've ever designed. First, this is the second largest board I've ever made. Uh, second, because of the nature of the board, it has to have some interesting, uh, well, here, allow me to just, let me just show you. Uh, we're continuing a project we started a few streams ago, and that is the, oh, here we go. And that is uh, my mechanical keyboard. And I realized that I was going to set a new snap zone. Oh, I can't even see my face. Where's my face? There we go. There's the face. Uh, let's just make sure my face is. Oh, I had, oh no, it fell, fell out of sync. Ah, oh no. <laughs> There we go. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is the mechanical keyboard, and uh, you'll notice right here it says, Boards by Next PCB. We have Next PCB right here in the corner. Uh, they sponsored this episode, and they sponsored the board, because this project would have been kind of ridiculous to do uh, really, really with anyone else. So this is the mechanical keyboard project, and uh, the whole idea of this thing is, this is, a, this is an ortholinear keyboard, so the keys aren't staggered. They're they're lined up in in a grid. If you've never used an ortholinear keyboard before, don't don't be scared. It's it's super easy to adjust, and in my opinion, it makes it much easier to touch type. I can't fully touch type on a staggered keyboard. I have to look down once in a while. Uh, but I find an ortholinear keyboard it's super easy because all you have to do is move your fingers directly up and down. Uh, I like this layout. That's why that's why we did it. So this isn't just a, a, an ortholinear keyboard though. <laughs> I mean, first up, it is. Like, if you just want a 60% keyboard, uh, then this is a good one. Um, yeah, it's got a few more buttons on the bottom. Instead of having one, instead of having one long space bar, I've split that into four, which I will give you an option to, which, you know, you'll get the option to either you link them all together, sort of, like using software. So it's one space bar if you're used to that. Or if you would prefer to... Um, you know, if you prefer to use a, a more a fancier layout, you can reassign those, and then you have your thumbs do more of the work. Isn't it weird how, like, we trust our thumbs enough that we use them for literally every button on a gamepad, but in so little that their only job on a, a keyboard is to hit the largest button on the keyboard? Uh, anyways, yeah, we're, we're smarter than that. So here's why we had to use Next PCB, uh, and that is because this board has a lot of tab routing, or has, has, has tab routing, and it has uh, inner slots and cutouts on it. Uh, so we got, we got a bunch of these here. First, we have this huge slot running through the middle, and then we have these slots here around these headers. Let me explain what's going on here. So I don't actually like to use a plank style keyboard. Uh, I prefer a split keyboard because I have back and shoulder problems and I find it a lot more comfortable to be able to move my hands apart. So if you are like me, all you have to do is take the board and break it in half and now you have two now you have two pieces. You can, this, this right here is a headphone jack and you can use that to connect the two pieces. Uh, yeah, in f if you are already satisfied with your keyboard, then don't worry about that. Just take this side right here and shove it up your ass, because this side is also a macro pad. Uh, you'll be able to set this, yeah, you'll be able to use this right side on its own as a macro pad. And that's why it's called the Mirage board, because if you use both together, it spells Mirage. And if you throw the left side out, it's the Rage board. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Julia39 says, wait, the side's connected via aux cable? If they're split apart, so here's how I, here's how I designed this thing. So if the halves are split apart, you use a headphone cable, you know, an aux cable, 3.5 millimeter TR, TRRS. It's not the same as an aux cable, because that's usually a TRS, one tip, one ring, one sleeve. This has to be a TRRS, tip, two rings and sleeves. Basically, it's the cable you use if you're connecting headphones with a microphone. Uh, yeah, so you connect with that. But if you're using this as one piece, they're already connected. So they're already connected right here using these little tabs. And once you break it apart, it just severs that. Uh, if you get second thoughts, if you break it apart and you want to unbreak it, I've added connectors here for, I've added uh, footprints here for a right, for right angle headers. So you just add in the headers and you can snap them back together and pretend nothing happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then over here, this is another one of the special features of this board. 
This board has three OLED displays, three 128 by 64 OLEDs, which are uh, little monochrome displays. And uh, it's got three of these things, and the, pla the place where it actually connects to the board has this tab routing around it. So it's actually sort of free-floating. It wobbles around. So we put two buttons under each one, left side and right side. And that allows us to not just have three buttons that are also screens. And not like a Stream Deck either. Stream Deck, the buttons aren't really screens. It has one TFT with a bunch of clear buttons over it. Nope, in this you actually press the screen down, but it's not just a screen, not just a button. It's two buttons, so you'll be able to rock it left or right. So we'll be able to use... Oh, pardon me. So we will be able to use these to do things like switch layers if you're into that. Maybe switch like modes if you play like Osu or you have like... A, or like you're a lefty like me and you like to put the, the left hand side of the keyboard on the right hand side, you'll be able to cycle in with that. You might be able to add some widgets and stuff. Uh, yeah, and you'll be able to just rock those back and forth. So that's so we designed this uh, over the last few... Uh, we designed this a few streams ago. I actually made some substantial changes in between that. Uh, if you're a patron uh, on our Discord, you have... If you're a patron and you've gone to the Discord, you've, de you've, you've seen the full rundown of this. But uh, yeah, today, so these boards are still in the mail. Uh, we're still waiting for these, we're still waiting for these to arrive. I ordered them a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, it's like the nature of the game. Uh, it must, this might take a little longer because um, generally, with, generally with mechanical keyboards, you want to try to use, so normally you use a 1.6 millimeter circuit board. That's kind of like the standard size of, standard thickness of a circuit board. Uh, for mechanical keyboards, you generally want to use a 2 millimeter because it's a little thicker, it's sturdier. So, um, yeah, hopefully that doesn't make the, the displays too wobbly. Anyways, that's still uh, on the way, but, no, but that, that, there's no reason that should stop us from making the mechanical parts, making the enclosure. Uh, hopefully we can get that done today, and uh, when these things show up, we have... Uh, we have something to do. I actually realized I got a little bit ahead of our, myself when I was when I was making the to-do list down there. By the way, if you just listen to these, I, I try to I have this to-do list on screen, and uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, I've got my my Optagon here, and I finally got that set up to look at stream chat on my heads-up display, which is something I should have done ages ago. The problem is that the little uh, the little um, the hell is this thing like the belt clip it's not really a belt clip right basically you got this little module right here that uh microphone and speakers can plug it can or an earphones can plug into that kind of provides strain relief it's supposed to clip onto your collar but the the little clip snapped off so i'd like to build something uh, i'd like to design something really quick to uh to take the to take the place of that because uh, this thing's really uncomfortable. It falls down the back of my shirt and carves up my back. So, um, yeah, uh, that's the first thing we're going to do today. Uh, let me actually get over to... I don't know, one, uh, I'll one a second. Uh, let, me get my, let me get my Discord chat out of here. Um, oh, yeah, and by the way, uh, hi to my dog. Hello, Dread Pirate Roberts, because I know uh, Dread Pirate Roberts is the biggest watcher of my stream replays. Uh, he's been acting up a little bit, and giving him something to listen to has calmed him down a bit. So, hello, little guy. Uh, what was I What was I doing? Oh, right, we're going to open up our stream to-do list, and I was going to update it. All right, so make, make new clip for opting on. I think that's a good warm-up project. Yeah, there we go. So we'll do a little, uh, we'll little warm-up project here. Uh, just real quick, design a uh, design something or other. I don't. Th I'm not going to fully. So it's this little module here. I should actually swing the uh, the auxiliary camera, the auxiliary camera, over, so we can see what's going on. I I finally got this thing actually like pointing the right way and all that. Yeah. So I have too many 3D printers here. I have to figure out what to do with all of them. It's an embarrassment of riches. It truly is. It's the compl the fact that it's complicating all of this is that uh, I actually really like the BQ. I didn't expect to actually enjoy the B the BQ B1SE, but it's actually pretty solid, and it's the by a wide margin the largest printer I have. 
So I have to figure out where to put all these things because that doesn't really fit in the doesn't really fit in the 3D printer closet. By the way, uh, in order to use the heads-up display, I'm wearing my lav mic. If you hear it scratching too much, please let me know in chat. Because uh, I uh, it shouldn't scratch that much, but it's larger than uh, my my previous one because I have to, I want to improve the audio quality. And uh, yeah, just let me know. Anyways, uh, there we go. Oh, Man, the friggin' faces causing all raising all kinds of hail. All right, we're having a let's see, I'm having a bit of a bit of weirdness with the auto exposure. It's been it's been acting up. Uh, yeah. So here, let me show you. Uh, let me show you what's going on. So we've got our so this module right here is sort of what provides strain relief and also allows me to hook up a mic or a headset. I don't think I've ever actually done that the whole time I've had this project. Anyways, this thing is, it's got this, uh, it's got this little zip tie on it because I busted the clip that holds it together. I don't think I, so let's, let's remove that. You see, it comes apart really easily because I broke all the little clips inside. Uh, yeah, I don't like this type of construction. <sighs> yeah, I, well, it's actually staying together fairly well. Yeah, clips, ultrasonic welding, just use fasteners. I can, like, I guess on a wearable you kind of get a bit of, on a wearable you kind of get a bit of a pass when it comes to using fasteners because, because keeping the weight down is really important, but still. So basically, I um, want to make a little something that goes around this and gives us back our belt clip. And uh, yeah. The, let me just think here. So one of the challenges here is figuring out what... So this is tricky. It's going to be tricky to print because we're going to have a bit that goes around this to like hold it snug. But we have to make sure it doesn't fully cover it because there's no way to thread it on. This doesn't unplug very well. This doesn't unplug all the way. Like it's got these big connectors at the end. And we have to make sure that... We have to be careful with the orientation here because we... Um, the belt clip, we want it to print this way for maximum strength but it doesn't make sense to print the bit that holds this that direction because uh, then it's going to have to support it has to be supported so um yes look at my legs gaze upon my thighs so uh yeah i guess it's a good thing i have a bunch of different materials so we can figure out which one to use i think the best choice here we could try pc tpe last night i did a test print in polypropylene to remind myself if it was to, to, to see if it's as hard to print on this uh, tool changer as it was on the Prusas and it certainly is so yeah I, I think we should start just I think we should start printing this we need something that has excellent layer adhesion but excellent layer adhesion but is also semi flexible uh, we want, yeah, it's important that it's kind of flexible as well as it's got layer adhesion. Another option is if I had a metal belt clip, I could just build something with a slot in it and add that clip in. And I used to, I, I used to have some belt clips, but I don't know what happened to them. I think I might have thrown them out during the move. Yeah, because that was for a very old project. That was for a, like a Google Glass, like a battery for your Google Glass or something. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure I have those, those belt clips anymore. Hmm. I think I might have even used them on a different project. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's think here. So what kind of, ma what material are we going to want to use here? Another thing to consider is that, um, we have to, another thing to consider here is, uh, Nylon materials are probably waterlogged. I don't think we'll be able to get away with using any sort of nylon. Uh, we could use we could use ABS. Could use uh, we could, I mean we could try nylon. We could do polycarbonate. I'm thinking poly. I'm thinking polycarbonate. I think our best bet here is uh, inland tough polycarbonate because it's it's got the it's got some flexibility. It's new. It hasn't. Uh, Probably hasn't taken on a lot of water. So uh, yeah, let's grab our calipers and fire up Fusion 360 and get rolling. Yeah, let's get back over here, get our picture and picture going. Uh, yep, cool, cool, cool. 
So yeah, today's episode is sponsored by Next PCB. They gave me a really, they gave me a really sweet deal uh, to pass on to uh, to viewers. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see a link. Uh, you see a link go by in the chat. You can also hit exclamation point sponsor to queue that up. And uh, let's. I have to. I had some files open last time when I closed this. Uh, yeah, you use that. Use that number. Uh, use that. Uh, if you use that link and register, you'll get a hundred dollars off your first order. And let me tell you, this site a hundred dollars goes a really long way. The uh, to get, I had ten. I think I ordered ten copies of this. I ordered ten copies of my mechanical keyboard of the Mirage. And this is a full size keyboard. It's like a full size sixty. This is actually slightly larger than a sixty five percent. It's about a, I'd say, an inch or two smaller than, uh, an inch or two less wide than your standard number pad keyboard, because it's got the little screens on the side. Anyways, 10 of these was about $350 before shipping. So, yeah, uh, if you're making a more sensible board, 100 bucks goes a really long way. Yeah, uh, thanks to Arlesium for reminding me to, uh, <laughs> thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for Elysium for reminding me to um, talk about the talk about the contest. Yeah, the Hello Wearable contest is underway. I guess that's even why I had the idea of uh, of doing this. <laughs> the Hello Wearable contest is underway. I'm challenging you to make a wearable. Uh, yeah, I'm challenging you to make a, uh, a 3D printed wearable before Halloween. So uh, yeah, I don't know why I said so. That's kind of a weird way to segue into that. Basically, the contest is make a wearable, make it mostly 3D printed, get it up on things, and do it before October 9th, and you can win your part of a $2,000 plus prize package. It's, uh, yeah, oh, it's great. We have, uh, we have a, lo the winner gets a fully loaded Lulzbot printer configured by me, and five kilos of super high quality Greengate recycled PTG to print with it. Uh, the runner up gets 250 bucks uh, store credit at Lulzbot, which is awesome because they have a lot of cool E3D parts, as well as a few kilos of filament. And uh, third place gets, uh, gets a, I think, 100 bucks on Lulzbot and, and a kilo of filament. But it's more than that. Not the top three, like, I, I want to say, like, the top three, as well as any others I like, are going to be featured in an episode. That's why the deadline for that contest is October 9th, because I'm going to make a top 10 list episode, top 10 things to 3D print for Halloween. So, uh, yeah, if you ever wanted your project to show up on one of my episodes, and you want to win a cool 3D printer for your trouble, that's, uh, and this is, this is your chance. Uh, yeah, you can you can type an exclamation point contest in chat to uh, get the to take a look at the rules. It's not legalese. I wrote them the um, uh, What else? Yeah, uh, it's being sponsored by things and Lulzbot. and uh, oh the only caveat is uh, They can't ship the printer anywhere uh, outside the US So if you are international and you win the grand prize or yeah, you win the grand prize You'll just get fifteen hundred dollars of store credit uh, at Lulzbot instead of the printer so that you can configure whatever is appropriately cleared for export. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, yeah, here we go. Oh, some folks were asking a few, for, some folks were asking last stream what ended up happening with the, uh, with the last client project, with the Fusion Mandala, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the art that spins uh, when nobody's looking at it. I have the uh, I have the follow-up to that I had to move the window off screen though because I was because uh, this picture came in through text and I don't want you reading all my texts but yeah here we go check it out this is it this is what ha this is what was made of the last client project check it out so these are the art pieces this is the fusion uh, the fusion mandala and behind each one is one of these projects and the only part you can see is this remember remember we made this cap that attaches on with mag like magnets well there you go that's the only part that's visible and yeah they're they're hidden they're hidden uh, away back there so that's it the last client project has been uh, almost i still have 10 more to make uh the, the first 10 were for the gallery the second 10 were for uh i think um i think for uh like like auction or like clients or charity or something uh, yeah. Anyways, that's it. That's what happened to the last client project. So, yeah, let's unwind the, uh, let's unwind the ADHD. And get back to, get back to, uh, building our, our distraction. Uh, I made another one of these filament, 
you know, they're one of these filament racks uh, to store more filament because the place is getting a little out of control. But uh, yeah, let's real quick make ourselves a thingy to a thingy to hold this thingy. Yeah, we got we got thingies within thingies. It's thingies all the way down. So uh, yeah, just really really all we're gonna do here is make something that grasps this most of the way and has a little belt clip on it. We're gonna add a cutout here. Uh, so this actually, I think it's well, I had a cutout, but like I want to file this nub off so it doesn't doesn't scratch up my ba my back. So uh, yeah, uh, a blade of kitten is 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 heading out. Uh, a blade of kitten's a stream regular and also our newest mod on Discord. If you're not a member of our Discord, head over to discord.gg/voidstarlab. Yeah. So let's make this. Engage the engage the calipers. I dub the X caliper. So, yeah, just taking some dimensions here. Uh, we're going to want to keep the dimensions fairly tight. Uh, NL12PT says you could do a time lapse of it. I actually rigged up, the, I finally rigged up the, uh, the, the Scorpius, the tool changer, to do a time lapse. I had to do it in hardware. It's pretty cool. I, I got I to gotta say, I showed a time lapse last, uh, well, in one past stream, I showed it uh, in the Hedamame stream. I, uh, with the headphones, I sh which I finished, I have to show those off. Uh, yeah, I showed off a time lapse. It's really cool. I rigged up an optical isolator so I could trigger it using, uh, trigger the camera with the GPIO pin. So it looks like we've got about 21.5 on this way by about 13, give or take this way. Yeah, no good way of figuring out what the radius of these are. I'm guessing that uh, I'm guessing that these bits, that the rounded bits, are, are, are about circular. So that's going to make them about 13, give or take, millimeters. I, I like to mentally add uh, 0.25 to 0.5 somewhere in the neighborhood. Uh, but yeah, let's. I think we'll stick with with tight. We'll keep our dimensions tight for now uh, because we're expecting this to stretch a little bit. So let's see. We got 12, uh, give or take 12 and a half by. By 21 and a half. All right, so let's get that done. Uh, right, I'm just going to. Let me think. How are we gonna? How are we gonna do this? Uh, we want to add some center lines. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I should be using a space mouse. I totally forgot. So we're gonna add a line. Uh, we're gonna make this a center line. Uh, I want to make sure that it's. Why? Why is this not snapping to? All right. I guess we'll. I guess we'll do this the hard way. Okay, so we're going to midpoint uh, these two, right? They're already at 90 degree angle, so once we set this one to horizontal, it should snap the other, okay? And uh, right, now we just want to move. I'm going to put a point at the center, and then we're just going to set the point and the origin to be coincidental. Ah, oh, geez, I'm so used to, I'm so used to eagle. There we go. I'm so used to Eagle because in Eagle you type in full commands, and in Fusion you type in letters. It doesn't. Uh, Fusion doesn't have a command line, at least none that I know of. So okay, we've got we got a little grid here. So we're going to make a. Uh, did I even did I even need that? I didn't. I don't even think I needed this. Yeah, because now we now we have uh, now we have slots. That's a good point. All right, so we're, we're going to draw ourselves a slot. Then we'll add our dimensions. This one was 12.5. This, so we have to go from, oh, I'm gonna grab a point here. Gotta go from point to point. Oh, that's not, that's not what we want at all. <laughs> so what happened was we dropped the point. It also added a, a midpoint. Oh, the midpoint constraint. All right, that's fine. I'd add a midpoint constraint because it's probably through the arc. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's so we can measure from edge to edge. And that is going to be, what do we call it, 21.5? I think. Our Elysium says, uh, oh, so people are wondering why you can't use all the presets on the, uh, on the, the Chromance. Uh, you can type stuff in chat to put it on the, to put on the, the lights behind my, behind my head. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't use presets, uh, or rather, it um, 
you can't just type in any effect. I have to I have to manually set up a preset. So maybe at some point we could uh, we could do that. I have to I have to manually create a preset and name it for you to be able to uh, for you to be able to do it with with effects. And I, I set up a few of them, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's kind of it's kind of a pain in the butt. And uh, oh yeah, uh, it's not the script that needs editing. It's the uh, it's the WLED itself. I have to configure all the presets. Uh, yeah, kind of a pain. Um, I guess I have to do. I guess I do have to tweak the script a little. I also, if I, I at some point I need to extend the script, so that there's some way for you to check, for, like to run a command and have it tell you how, what, like what's available. Oh wait, what am I doing? I gotta use my space mouse. There we go. Let's turn this a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. So yeah, uh, we're going to offset this. Uh, let's think. How, how do we want to? How thick do we want the walls to be? Uh, Iman say asks you left-handed or is the cam mirrored? No, I'm I'm a lefty. How thick do we want this? Is 1.2 going to be uh, three walls? Is that is that going to be too stiff? I think that'll be all right. So let's go uh, 1.2. Could actually make this a bit a bit thicker. Let's call this 1.5. I keep forgetting that the thickness of the lines is not an integer. It's not an integer multiple of the nozzle size because there's actually a little bit of over extrusion. So yeah, um, let's think here. So we're gonna need that. Uh, we're going to also we're going to also offset in the other direction. Uh, let's call this another minus one point two because we want a little bit of a lip. To keep this from sliding around, uh, so actually that's this is the critical dimension here. So this is what we want to measure. We want to make sure it doesn't go too far. Uh, so we got a little lip here. Yeah, I think 1.2 should be fine. Okay, cool. So we've got that. Uh, now we want to add some. Uh, then we want to add. Here we go. Some cutouts. Add one here. We're gonna mirror it. No, we're not going to mirror the center line, you stupid piece of software. There we go. Let's add a, let's see, I actually want to dimension the first one so it affects the second one. Uh, let's call this, do you think five is going to be too little? Six? Is that, does that go right to the, yeah, that's going to give us a problem. I think seven's the way to go. Unless, actually... Yeah, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna make this coincidental with the center line instead. Basically, uh, we don't want this to go all the way. We don't want the. It's hard to. It's really hard to model and talk at the same time. Uh, or, or, what was I saying? Oh right, we don't want this to fully wrap around. We want it to snap on, because uh, then we can put a little lip in the top and bottom and keep the little bit from from sliding out. P P polycarbonate is. Um, it's polycarbonate's kind of kind of slippery. It's not um, it's it's not as bad as nylon or PETG, but it's still it's still kind of slippery. Okay, I think that'll work. Um, we should probably also model in the belt clip. So we're gonna I want I want the belt clip to be as big as possible. So we're gonna go. We're gonna start here, continue like here. Uh, don't worry, we will. Let's see, so we're gonna so the belt clip is gonna have uh, we're gonna have an offset, and uh, actually no we're, we're um hmm oh this is tricky an offset uh, yeah okay we're gonna do it this way we're gonna add the clip itself in a different drawing because that will let us uh, add some contouring to it but uh, what kind of how thick is my shirt let's see. This is this is approximate. This is this is more of like a, a sanity a sanity measure a sanity check. All right, let's call this 1.5. 1.5. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it should be good. Alrighty, so we're gonna finish this. Let's let's turn. All right, so how thick do we have? How tall do we have to make this? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 51. Yeah. Soydu says calipers on fabric. That's right. That's right. Alrighty. So again, like the point is like the goal isn't to get the goal for that isn't to get like 
a perfectly, uh, that's the way of saying it. The goal is not to get a perfectly exact um, measurement. It's just, just a sanity check. So, let's see. Nested Dream says, the sketch is already making me nervous. Freakhead would be upset at the number of nesting lions, unless some of them are construction only and I can't see it. Some of them are. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Fusion, uh, fusion starts to get weird once you have, uh, once you have a lot of things that are mirrored, the mirror constraint and the symmetrical constraint, see, or not the mirror, the symmetrical constraint that's applied by mirror. Uh, it seems to be pretty heavyweight. The thing that really kicks, uh, I forgot this already, the thing that really kicks Fusion 360 in the crotch is, is, uh, organic shapes, right? Like, like splines, uh, that type of stuff. Is this... Should I, let's see. I think this actually might still be too aggressive. Let's let's cut this down to five and see how see how it looks. Yeah, that that should that should be better. Alrighty, so let's add ourselves uh, the little lips on the bottom to bottom and top to keep this in place. Hopefully, this prints well uh, without support. Actually, we we're gonna have a little bit of support. Yeah, I hope it's. I hope it's all right. Let me think. It's fine if the top... Actually, now think about it. It's fine if the top... All right, so check this out. So this little lip here is going to keep it from sliding down. But it's fine if there's nothing at the top, because I'm not worried about sliding upwards. I'm worried about sliding back down and into my shirt, uh, not upwards into my neck, because what's going to pull it that way? There's a ton of slack. Cool, cool, cool. So we're also going to... Let me think here. We're also going to extrude the, the belt clip part, or the, I mean, the, the, the shirt clip part. So we're going to do two sides, right? The first side, the, ups, the upside, we're just going to have it go to here. And the downside, uh, what do you want to call this? Like two millimeters, give or take? Yeah, I want it to come over the top of my, my shirt. I just realized that we're going to, here, let's... Let's commit that, but I realize we're gonna have a problem here because there's still a little bit of clip left over. So actually, if we do this the other direction, we just have to make sure that that gap in between is at least uh, 13 millimeters, give or take. We call it 14 for safety, but let's let's see. So let's see, distance from here to here is 12 millimeters or 11.5 so it's not going to give us enough so we just have to quickly go back in here ah, and uh, reduce this to four that should still give us enough enough room to all right hang on a sec i'm, miss, I'm mixing up my i'm mixing up my top and bottom here i hang on a second yeah we did this we did this bit wrong uh, but yeah, that should uh, that should allow us to fit the clip in there. So let's get rid of this. Let's see. So we're gonna do one side, starting from here, and uh, let's do this continuing down by three millimeters. I think that should be all right. Okay. So the next thing uh, next thing to do is, or the last thing to do is to make the clip. Uh, Error Raider asks, I wonder if Fusion 360 is single-threaded for constraint calculation. I think it is. I, if I, I vaguely remember this being a big issue, that it's, it's, had, trouble, it's had trouble with, uh, with doing anything threaded. So let's see. Uh, we're going to want to project this. Let's, and then let's draw ourselves a belt clip. Um, let's see. We're going to... I'm going to draw, let's call this 1.5 millimeters. Bring this most of the way. Let's see. We'll give ourselves a little, a little, a little curve, because, you know, real, real clips have curves. 1.5. Actually, yeah, I think that should be good. Now we're going to offset this. Uh, my, by 1.5, there we go. Did I do this correctly? Yeah, I think I did this correctly. No, I didn't. I should have done it by minus 1.5. Yep, there we go. Uh, we also don't need to offset this. So we're gonna call this minus 1.5. Okay. 
Very nice. So that will that'll bend will bend a lot. Uh, let's just link this like so, and uh, let's add a little add a little tangent constraint here. Very nice. All right, I think that looks uh, I think it looks decent. It's, yeah, I think that I think it looks good. Um, let's actually drop. Hang on a second. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, going to add a first. We're going to project this, and then we'll add a construction line because uh, we want this to touch the we want this to touch the plate because that will mean uh, that'll that'll reduce the amount of support material we need. Uh, let's also while we're at it project this so that we can make sure that we keep some distance. Make sure we keep some distance between this. Uh. Guess that's good enough. Man, I'm so used to I'm so used to uh, so used to Eagle. We're actually going to be using a bit of the version of Eagle that's built in. A second, I just want to make sure this all lines up properly. Uh, we're actually going to be using a bit of the version of Eagle that is built into Fusion. Because uh, I'd like to because we you know the board hasn't shown up yet, but I still want to do some prototyping. So I would like to try to get our board imported into the built-in version of Eagle uh, so that we can 3D print, hopefully we can 3D print a little, a little copy of it, which would, be, uh, which would be great. I don't think this is, uh, I don't think this is helping us. I think that's causing more, more harm than good. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get a little, a little, a little I, I liked how this was better. I liked how this was before. Okay, there we go. Um, let me think here. So this is going to be on the outside. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. Let's, uh, let's finish the, uh, let's finish the job here. So we're going to extrude this. Uh, let's see, extent to object. We're going to extrude that to here. Okay. There we go. There we are. So the last things to do are we're going to add some uh, filleting. Let's see. We're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna round off our corners here. That's uh, that's actually too too much. Yeah, we're gonna round off our corners because this is a wearable project and we don't want. Um, oh, I would. Yeah, it's a wearable project, and uh, we want to make sure that we have as few sharp corners to poke into my skin as possible. I'm going to disable tangent chain here. Let's make sure it didn't corrupt anything at the bottom. I think that looks that looks all right. Actually, you could probably get away with keeping tan keeping the tangents on. Ah, uh, it's too yeah, that's it's too much. Let's just cut this part. Save this. Uh, yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep it here for for. Uh, let's keep it here for prototyping. So yeah, I think this will work for now. We're gonna print it in this orientation. Shouldn't need any support. Unfortunately, we have the we have like a part that's gonna be under tension. Uh, see, we're gonna be relying purely on layer bonds uh, to keep the clip to keep the the clip from snapping off. The only ways around this. Would be to split this in half, then glue it together. Which uh, I don't think that's yeah. We either split this apart and glue it together, uh, or we could print it like. I guess we'd have to print it like this, and then we kind of we'd be relying like yeah. Then the these round surfaces here would be really hard to print properly. So look, let's just print it like this and see what uh, see what happens. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's think here. Do we want to print this on? Is there any reason to print this on the uh, Lulzbot or on the Tool Changer in particular? They they can all they can all print this stuff. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, let's do this one on the Lulzbot because the Tool Changer has the volcano extruder. Oh, sorry about that. The Tool Changer has the volcano extruder, and we can use that to do our prototyping at at, at a higher speed. We can we can run PLA through it much faster. So yeah, let's turn our attention over to the, uh, let's see, did I forget to put a, oh, I didn't put a button in, no, uh, which, which one is that, did I put, uh, oh, here we go, cool, 
So let's turn our attention over to the Lulz bot uh, and prepare it for. Uh, let's see. Let's turn our attention over to the Lulz bot and prepare that. There we go. For printing polycarbonate. So uh, yeah, first uh, first this thing is overexposed like crazy. What the heck is going on here? Let's deal with that real quick. Auto exposure engage. So this is the Lulzbot Tez uh, Sidekick 747. I know that's, that's, that, that title is quite a mouthful, but this printer is the prize. Uh, this printer is a grand prize for the uh, Hello Wearable contest. So uh, if you like what you see, you definitely have to make sure you enter. Ah. Knocked a controller onto the floor. Okay, so uh, we sh we still have this thing covering glue from printing uh, PLA. So first thing to do is to switch it on. And it switched off because we were recording for our next episode yesterday. Next episode is in the works. Uh, let's see. This is regular. So yeah, next episode is in the works. Uh, we were recording it. The fans on this thing are fairly loud. So we turned them off. All right, let's move this out of here. Alrighty, so this thing is currently loaded with PLA and it's covered in glue for doing PLA. So we have to give this a thorough cleaning and then we're gonna apply some Magigoo polycarbonate. Yeah, usually, you know, you don't generally, hopefully it, uh, hopefully it doesn't warp. We'll see, because this thing doesn't have an enclosure. Um, so we'll, we'll see if it warps or if it plays nice. I've never run polycarbonate on this machine before and I'd really like to. I know it'll work. Like uh, this thing does have an all metal hot. This this thing is an all metal extruder, uh, an all metal hot end. It uh, uses the Hamera, the same E3D made, uh, the same E3D manufactured extruder that three quarters of the Scorpius uses. And I I'm I, I've actually been really impressed with the uh, with that extruder with the Hamera. Uh, I I mean it's a bit you can do you can configure it for a direct drive or for uh, or for Bowden, uh, I've only used it as direct drive, but I have had great experiences with it. It's especially good for printing flexible filaments because it has an extremely short filament path. There just isn't enough room for the filament to start bending out of position. Why is my hair so weird? Alrighty, so let's go to change filament. Let's unload the filament, set it as PLA. <laughs> it probably should have homed it first. Probably should have homed it first. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's let this thing get to 200, and in the meantime, let's get in, let's get in here and find our filament. So, what do we? Which one do we want to use? I'm thinking we use inland tough, tough polycarbonate. This is yep. Here we go. Inland tough PC. Uh, I have it on good authority that inland brand tough polycarbonate is. It's literally Polymaker Polymax rebranded, and this is really high quality filament. It's uh, yeah, it's a really it's a really good filament, and I believe this stuff prints two fifty to two seventy, which this machine here should have no trouble doing. Again, we are using uh, an all metal, an all metal uh, hot end, which means that the heat break and the nozzle, uh, yeah, pretty much everything between the gears and the bed is metal. We, there's no uh, there's no Teflon in there to uh, to burn above 250 Celsius, which is a good thing to have. So let's see, we've hit 250. So let's, uh, let's pull out our, our our guide tube to make our lives easier. And uh, oh, our filament seems to have uh, seems to have jammed. Uh, a blob must have formed. Oh, there we go. Yep, a blob formed at the end, but it's all right. This is the remainder of that uh, that really crappy gold tone. It's it's called bronze filament, but it doesn't have bronze in it. It's just kind of gold tone. It's really ugly. Uh, I'll show you what last time we. So at the end of uh, I believe not the last episode, but maybe the last episode. Yeah, at the end of the last episode, we started to print this little th this little iris mechanism. And uh, I finished that. I put it on Instagram. If you'd follow me on Instagram, you can see that. Uh, cool, camera's still working. Um, yeah, I can show that to you. So let's adjust this. 
So we're going to first grab ourselves some purge filament. We don't want to switch directly from PLA to polycarbonate because the PLA is going to burn at 250 Celsius. So we're going to first run through some of this purge filament, which, to which tolerates a whole range of, of temperatures. So we're going to just put that in there and get it to bite. And then we'll go back to change media. No, not media. Wait, change filament. Change media means the uh, SD card. So we're going to uh, load ourselves some filament. There we go. So this should come through. It got pulled in, but not very far. Let's see, might be something in the way. It's not pulling it in. What's going on here? Hopefully this, hopefully we're not having any problems with this printer. <sighs> Everyone knows I've had enough printer problems. What are we waiting for? It's not getting, it's not, huh, it's not getting pulled in. So something seems to be clogging this up. Yeah, we seem to have a bit of, seem to be in a bit of a, oh, no, wait, it's not a jam. It's just the end of the purge filament is really gross. Uh, by the way, hello to everyone who has found us through the science and technology category. Please make your, please uh, feel free to, there we go, feel free to say hi in chat because I always like to, to meet folks who are new to the channel. What's going on here? What's going on here? Why isn't it going, uh, why isn't it going through? Let's see, do we have to grab a needle and, and, and start poking? Let's see. Huh. It's not coming, uh, it's not coming through. It seems to be, uh, seems to be stuck. What's the problem? What's the hold up here? So the easiest thing to do. All right, so nothing's coming through. Easiest thing to do is just to increase the temperature. So we'll go over to temperature, go over to nozzle, crank it, crank that hog up to 220. Hopefully that uh, liquefies whatever jam there was in there. Like I said, the PLA, pardon, this isn't a problem with the printer so much as it is uh, with the, the PLA. This, uh, this is kind of one of the problems with crappy PLA. It's got, this is slightly, here we go, it's slightly sparkly, see? And I'm guessing that whatever they're using, it's probably mica, like that they're like ground up mica. Not my brother, the, um, the stone <laughs> that they're putting in there to give it its sparkle. And it must, I, I'm guessing some of it built up. So we raised the temperature to 220. Let's see if that helps clear out the, the crud. All we have to do is get a little bit of this filament in there. Cause once, once we get, uh, yeah, once we can get this purge filament into the, the hot end, then we should be able to pull out any crap. Even if we can't feed it through, uh, we should still be able to, to pull it out. I don't like, I hope we don't have to disassemble. Disassembling a hammer is a big pain in the butt. So let's go to uh, tools. Nope. Wait, this, that's how you select which one you're using. So we're going to do move axis. We're going to move extruder and we're just going to, just going to move this by hand. There you go. In you go. Oh, we are definitely, let's see, we're definitely jammed. All right. Time to bring time to bring out the heavy artillery. I don't know if we can do something like a like a cold pull because I don't know if we can actually get in there far enough. So I grab myself a little uh, here. I should probably I should probably tilt this up so you folks can actually see what's going on. Uh, I got myself an acupuncture needle, so we're just going to get this thing into the hot end and uh, just wiggle it around to try to break up any break up any uh, any jam or clog or anything. If it's if it's something if it's like filament just if it's like crud just getting caught somewhere that should do a good job of getting rid of it so let's let's try again nope still no good must have been a, must have been a, glo a glob of filament must have broken loose somewhere inside the uh the hammer uh all right well we're gonna have to repair this thing at some point because we're gonna need to, we're gonna be getting two printers going Hmm. Yeah, so we have a little bit of a, got a little bit of a clog. 
Well, that's, that's, that's awkward. It's kind of a pain in the butt, isn't it? Let's, yeah, it's getting, it's getting pulled in past the gears, but not much further. So I'm guessing there's some, I'm guessing like when it was unloading a glob of filament, got caught somewhere. Damn. I hate it when the printer gets jammed. I hate it when we get, it, when we get our Schwartz's, we get our Schwartz's tangled. There we go. Trying to apply some force. So, you know, if I can push the, the crud or whatever a little further in. All right, so this isn't working. So, uh, let's see. We're going to, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back. I'm going to pull this out first, first off. Um, let's see. We're going to go to temperature. I'm going to cool this down. There we go. We're going to let this, we're going to let this cool down. Uh, then we can disassemble it and pull out whatever the global plastic is. There isn't... This isn't a very mechanically complicated extruder, really. There's just one, there's just one, there's this, uh, uh, here we go. Yeah, we should just be able to pull off, let me think here. Actually, how's, how's this thing going to be, uh, how's this thing going to be held on? We've got here, we've got them here, here, and here. Uh, because the configuration here is slightly different than on my... All right, so basically we're going to pull off the fan right here, and under that is going to be a pair of screws diagonally opposite. We take those off, and that pulls out the heat sink. Yeah, that pulls out this, this heat sink here, which has the drive gear. Uh, the drive gear is attached to it with axles. The, uh, the pins go between a metal plate. Yeah, the pins go into uh, sort of the, 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 the heat sink also doubles as sort of like the mounting plate for the... Uh, for the drive. It's, it's, it's pretty clever design. Anyways, the glob of plastic is going to have to be there. Worst case scenario, we just shove a piece of filament directly into the heat brake. This thing doesn't really have a, it doesn't really have a heat sink around the brake. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. This is, it's so, this operates in a similar, the hammer operates in a similar way as, um, as the Prusa's extruder, but it, it operates a similar way as the Prusa extruder, but it uh, it's not the same. They're different designs. The Prusa is a variant. Here, I'm going to switch us over to... There we go. Switch us over to this printer. Last night I was printing some polypropylene, so this thing has Magigoo pee, pee all over the bed. <sighs> sounds, like a, sounds like a regular Friday night. So we're going to wipe off our Magigoo pee, pee and uh, put, on some, put on some polycarbonate Magigoo. And uh, then we're just gonna we're gonna load up our, our polycarbonate in here. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh right, the uh, the Prusa is based on the E3D V6, which is an older design, and it has a uh, big problem with the V6 is that it has a fairly long filament path, and uh, the original versions have uh, have a bit of Teflon tube, so basically the drive gear pushes the filament through a very long a uh, very long metal tube with a heat sink around it into the, the, the hot end. And the problem with that is there's gonna be a lot of friction between the filament and the tube, especially as the tube heats up. So they line the inside of that tube with Teflon because it's a long way to go. And uh, Teflon burns at 250. So if we try to run a filament like the one uh, we're about to, the, it would start to roast and you do not want to overheat a fluorinated polymer. All right, so we've got mag so this is Magigoo polycarbonate. It's a special bed treatment designed for holding down polycarbonate. And it's going to be important because polycarbonate kind of likes to likes to curl a little bit. So let's get this down. This is a it's a very thin consistency. It's kind of interesting how the different Magigoos have different consistencies. Uh, the one for polypropylene and the general purpose one are very thick. The nylon one and the polycarbonate one are very thin. So I guess it just comes down to how much polymer is dissolved in it. All right, so let's think here. Which of these extruders are we going to use? The only one that doesn't have filament loaded in it right now is... Uh, let's think here. Yeah, all right. We're going to grab this guy here. I think I... Yeah, I cleaned it out last night after I finished with the, poly, the uh, polypropylene. 
So we're going to preheat this guy to 250 degrees so that we can load in our polycarbonate. Let's see, this is still 100, 100 Celsius. All righty. Let's, so let's see, let me, let's take a look at, oh, we don't, we don't need this. Let's take a look at the comments because it's been a bit. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Soydu says, all right, business idea. A solvent that works for all filaments and add-ins, but not the materials the hot end is made of. Call it printer laxative. Well, that would kind of be the holy grail, wouldn't it? Oh. There, there is no universal solvent for polymers. Because um, ba basically there are two things to give a polymer its properties. I know, I know you're joking, but like it's a teachable moment. There are two things to give a polymer its, its properties. Three, sort of, but yeah, there are, there are a number of things to give a polymer its properties. The ones we care about here, though, are the what the monomers are. Basically, a polymer is made of a bunch of smaller molecules kind of linked end to end, like a, like a chain of beads at Mardi Gras. And uh, the, the, the thing that's being linked together itself gives it some of its properties, and the way it's linked gives it some of its properties. And uh, the way a solvent... And, uh, the way a solvent uh, dissolves a plastic is by uh, sort of like some of these bonds permanently attack permanently bind molecules together and some just cause molecules to want to stick close to other molecules the solvent attacks that second one so certain materials are vulnerable to different solvents and there isn't going to be a solvent that attacks everything because different molecules expose different like different atoms and stuff so uh, that's why you have stuff like that's why, like, ABS dissolves in acetone, but not limonene. It's why HIPS dissolves in limonene, but not acetone. It's why PLA dissolves in neither limonene nor acetone, although it's slightly attacked by, by uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, yeah. So, let's see. So, we're heating, we're heating up here. I think, we, yeah, I think the plan is we'll get this, we'll get this printing, and then we'll, uh, then we'll we'll strip down the lull spot and get that thing fixed. Oh boy, yep. Look, this is part of the fun. The whole the whole point of this, the whole point of these streams is to show you is to like take you folks behind the scenes and show you how just what happens when I make projects. And let me tell you, this is a, a pretty accurate version of what happens when I'm making projects. Yep, maintaining maintaining the tools is a big part of the fun. So we're heated up. We we're actually heat up a bit earlier, but yeah, we're anyways, we're heated up. So let's take the tough polycarbonate and straighten it out enough because we have a very long feed tube to get this through. At some point, I'd like to make a bit of a design change to this tool changer. There we go. Bit of a design change to the tool changer to shorten the filament path and to add runout sensors. This is the only printer I have that doesn't have a runout sensor and that's a real issue. I wish there was a way to not just make it a runout sensor, but to have it actually measure whether the filament is moving or not, so it can detect jams. Anyways, we've made it, we've made our way through this ridiculous feed tube, so let's start extruding. We're also going to preheat the bed to uh, let's call it seventy, or let's call it seventy. It's it's actually going to print closer to a hundred. But we don't want to keep it at full at full heat until we need it. There we go. All right. So we've blown out the the purge filament. I think that should that should work all right. Uh, last let's see. Last time I had the baby stepping set a little aggressively. Actually, let's let's keep it where it is because it's the same extruder. Pardon. Okay, so let's turn our attention back to Fusion 360 and uh, let's export our model. Let's see. Look at my face. There we go. There's my face. Boop. Okay. So let's export this thing and get it printing and then we'll repair the lull spot and then we'll get on to actually doing, doing keyboard stuff. That's right. Uh, Luxuriant Squish says, Prusherman ASA is by far my favorite filament to post-process by hand. If you print on Capton with a brim, it doesn't warp that much. Yeah, I've had really good experiences with Prusha, with Prusha ASA as well. 
I think it's a pretty a pretty solid filament. So let's see, we're sending this to Super Slicer. That's right. I've been trying to migrate everything over to Super Slicer from uh, from Prusa Slicer because Super Slicer is more full featured. So we're gonna want this dead in the center. Oh, this just can't decide what sensitivity the space mouse should be. So we want this dead in the center. We want to use uh, Polymaker PC Max. There it is. So we're gonna do Polymaker PC Max. We're gonna use extruder number two for this. Do we need anything else? I don't think we need supports, but we're definitely gonna want a brim. And this should do it. We're gonna to try to print this. Let me think here. How quickly do we want? Let's see, 0.2 millimeter, 35 millimeters a second for polycarbonate. That seems appropriate. Polycarbonate, you print at like a medium speed. It's not, not the fastest, not the slowest. So this is gonna take an hour and 17 minutes. Oh, that's what that line was. Okay. There we go. An hour, 17 minutes, it seems reasonable. Yeah. Okay, extruder number two. Let's just confirm that there's no funny stuff going on. Going to view by uh, tool. There you go, it's all the same color, very nice. All right, let's, uh, let's call this Optagon Clip and send it. Going full send. So let's just confirm. Yeah, it's pretty good. 270 bed is 120, which would be a problem on a Prusa, but this thing can, can handle it just fine. Let's switch back here so you can see what's going on. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, Incendium87 says, I could have sworn I accidentally destroyed a regular PLA print by spilling some acetone. Maybe it wasn't the mater material I thought it was. Uh, well, a lot, of, a lot of materials are composites, or actually combinations of multiple filaments, or composites or alloys. So if it was, there's a chance that if it was like a tough polycarbonate or like a, or a tough PLA or PLA plus, it actually had some content of, it had some amount of uh, ABS in it or something else. It's also worth mentioning that PLA is slightly attacked by alcohol, not strongly, but it, it tends to break layer, it tends to like attack the layer bonds and get wicked inside. Yeah, all kinds of problems. Let's see. Why does this keep scrolling down on its own? Uh, Chrono Mass, would it be better to print it laying down? Well, it's not really practical to print it laying down because uh, it would be hard to support... Oh, here. It would be hard to support all of this. This right, this this overhang right here would need supports. And because this is slipping over something, if there's even a tiny bit of support residue or overhang, it's not going to fit. So um, we're going to try to print it without supports if we can get away with it. It's always better to avoid supports. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this, keep my finger on the baby step button, make sure that first layer goes down nice and even. We're, a little, we're level a little high, so I'm going to drop it down a bit. I want to get that, that nice bit of squish factor. Because we really want that first layer. That first layer is going to be doing a lot of work. This thing's going to have a lot of torque on it. Not torque, torque. As it gets taller, and uh, we're going to want to make sure it stays attached. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. All right, so this is going to take around an hour and 15 minutes to finish. In the meantime, let's turn our attention back to... Let's, well, let's turn our monitor first. But let's turn our attention back... Oh, here we go. To our sidekick, because we have to do some repairs. So first, I'm going to... Uh, let's go to motion... We're going to park, I want to park our nozzle. Basically return everything to a known position. I want to try to get the nozzle in the middle of this to make it easier to work on. There we go. Let's see, this is, going to, this is going to level itself and it should bring it back up afterwards. There we go, it's got a BL touch on it. See that, see that light? That's the BL touch. Now it raises itself back up. Notice how quickly it can move the z-axis, because this thing has a belted z. We also have to be careful not to put too much downward force, because when it's upwards, when it's all the way up, it's, it's being held up by magnets. Oh, and some folks asked last time, what, so what, so this thing is, uh, is on a belt, right? So right now it's being held by the z, uh, the z steppers are locked, and there are a pair of magnets. So some folks were asking what happens if it loses power, what ha like does the z axis just plummet? And uh, at the time I said no, because it's got the, the magnets. Okay, but what happens if, 
if it loses power before it makes all the way to the top. And I found out the answer to that too. It actually has circuitry inside that when it loses power, it basically shorts the stepper against itself. So it sort of gets, uh, it's like, re it's like a regenerative, re regenerative braking. It, uh, it basically breaks itself on the way down, not B-R-E-A-K, B-R-A-K-E. Okay, so we're going to, I have to turn the fan off first. I think we're just gonna, yeah, let's just turn the entire printer off. Yeah. So we have to be careful not to, not to knock this over. So let's see. Uh, first, I'm going to turn on the picture in picture so you folks can keep an eye on the printer. But yeah, let's uh, let's bust this thing open. Find a find a screwdriver that'll fit. Nope, too big. This thing's not that hard to to take apart and shouldn't give us much guff once we're inside. Remember, there's there's nothing in here that can. There's nothing inside the hammera that can melt or deform. It's not like a Prusa that has plastic components in, like, touching the heat path. So as l we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have uh, any unpleasant surprises on the inside. Although I'm, I'm often, I'm often caught on, caught on a wares. A lot of, a lot of creativity shown in parts uh, in broken stuff. Yeah. Let's uh, open this up. So there are only two screws holding the hammer together. Uh, four if you count the fan that you have to remove. And what's neat is that they put the screws that hold the extruder together. On the opposite side is the, the basically that you mount this thing from the stepper, not from the, uh, not from the drive, which makes it, which means that no matter, remember the, uh, the hammer isn't designed for a specific printer. It's designed to go into any printer. And uh, this configuration Make sure that no matter how it's deployed in the end user's printer, it should always be able to uh, should be always be able to come off. And yet here we are; it's not coming off. Come on. What's uh, what's it what's it caught on? Let's see, it should be it should come off, and it should take the extruder with it. Let's see. One of the pins is, is probably stuck. Ah, keep that connected. Yep, there we go. Uh, the ball bearing was stuck in position, so let's, so let's see. Don't want to put too much strain on the heater wires. The heater wires are, are holding it in place. Let's see. I'm just going to take the... I'm going to pull the heater cartridge out. Uh, do we need to pull out the... The temperature uh, sensor as well. I don't think it would hurt. Where's the temperature sensor go in? Uh, I know it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but part of the process. Yeah. One sec. So what I'm doing right now is just loosening the set screws that hold the temperature sensor, the thermistor, and the heater cartridge in place. And that way there will be nothing holding the extruder or holding the drive uh, onto the extruder. So this should come right out. It sometimes sticks a little. Yeah. Come on. Ah. Okay. We just have to grab a little screwdriver here and gently pry open. No, uh, let's not damage anything. Gently, yeah, there we go. Gently pry open that clamp. And there should be nothing keeping this in anymore. Uh, let's see, we're going to need, here we go, long nose pliers to just help pull everything out. Uh, what's holding the, th oh, the duct in place. Ah, the duct. A blade of kittens like, yes. At least she would if she were still here. Come on, heater cartridge, get out of there. What are you doing, heater cartridge? There we go. Okay. So let's see what's up. Why is this getting jammed. Mm. 
So we're going to pull out the... Uh, I'm going to pull the tensioning arm. Let's actually... No, we're not going to pull out the tensioning arm. We're going to pull out the drive, the drive gear. It's hard to remember what the names of all these parts are. There we go. Let's pull out the drive gear. Let's pull out the tensioning arm. Let's try to do this in a way that everyone can actually see what the hell I'm talking about. All right, so we've pulled out the we've pulled out the idler. Actually, no, this is the drive gear. Uh, this is the idler. Uh, come on, come on, out you go, out you go. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we go. There's a problem right there. Look at all that plastic crud. Look at all that crud in there. This thing is jammed all the way up. So let's knock some of it out. Yeah, this is, yeah, that was the problem right there. We had a bunch of, uh, we had some filament, we had some filament ground off that, that jammed up. I wonder if any of that happened during the, uh, while we were printing HTPET, although I doubt it. All right, so I'm just gonna grab, uh, where's, our per where's our cleaning filament again? Oh. Here it is. Uh, I'm just going to shove some cleaning filament in there. I know it's I know it's cold. It's not heated, uh, but I just want to see how far it goes. So let's see. So before uh, we couldn't get much further than the drive gears, but now let's see. Put me use my thumb to mark it. All right, now we're making it almost all the way into the heat break. So as long as the problem isn't within the heat break itself or within the the heater block itself then we're good. So cool, let's reassemble and go on our merry way. There you go, if you ever wondered what was inside a Hemera, uh, now you know. Sorry if I've, I've been trying to keep this thing in view, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. <laughs> I know it's, I know it's no excuse, but you'll have to, you'll need to forgive me. Or don't, I guess, it's free country, do what you want. So let's put the, let's see, let's put the tension arm back on. Oh, let's, let's take this back off for a sec. Yeah, this is how uh, this is how you actually tension it. So when you when you screw the thumb screw, it moves this little bit. Ah, moves this little white part up and down. Let's see, where is it? Yep, it moves this little uh, this little white bit here, this plastic part up and down. Ah, and it's got a ramp on the back of it and that causes it to either push harder against the screw, keeping it from moving any further, or the total opposite. It causes it to, it causes it to, to, to slide back in under spring tension. There we go. Yeah, either, either it acts like a little ramp, see how it's sticking out a bit, or when you release the tension, it slides back in, and that effectively makes the spring, uh, the, the, the area of the spring can compress longer or shorter, thus increasing or decreasing the tension. It's very similar to the mechanism used in the Prusa, except, there we go. It's similar to the mechanism used in the Prusa, except uh, instead of having to find an Allen key, you just have to turn a thumb screw. So let's get this, let's bottom this out. There we go. Put our idler, or put our drive gear back in. The drive gear is the one that's connected to the motor. The idler is the one that turns against it using a gear. Ah. So let's see, it looks like whoever assembled this, uh, there's a bit of a dimple on the, the thermistor. So it looks like whoever assembled this was a little overzealous with the hex key. I didn't, I didn't, by the way, this, this thing comes almost fully assembled in the kit. All you have to do is, is put in like, I think it's seven thumb screws. I think that's all it took. All I had to do is put in seven thumb screws, which let me tell you, after all this baloney building and messing around with all these printers was a real relief. So let's get this, let's try to get this into place without breaking any wires. Come on. In you go. In you go. Bottom out, please. There we are. Okay. So these screws here are going to hold the heat sink and the drive in place. And then the other two screws are going to hold the fan onto 
the uh, the heat sink thingy. And we also have to remember uh, we can't we can't leave until we have put the uh, the temperature sensor, or the thermistor, and the heater cartridge back in and tighten those up because uh, we're not going to be doing much printing if the heater cartridge isn't attached. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh man, this is killing my back having to lean over like this. If this weren't a stream, I would have transferred the printer over to the workbench and worked on it there. But uh, it's too much to rearrange. Don't think that would be very fun to watch. So let's screw this in. Yeah, this is the one thing I don't like about the Hemera is that the, the, the teardown or repair process is a little involved, especially if the, especially if the configuration of your printer uh, doesn't, like, doesn't, the configuration of your printer mean you have to unscrew the, um, the cartridge. So let's hold this in place and tighten it back up. We can get this one fairly tight. And then we want to turn our attention to the thermistor in the back. It looks like it's in position. We're going to tighten this, but not as far as it was before. We want to do it just until it... We want to turn the, the set screw just till it makes contact. And then a, barely a quarter of a turn. All right, so that should be good to go. Let's turn the printer back on. Let's turn the printer back on. Uh, we'll crank up the temperature. Let's run some plastic through it, and uh, then we'll be ready to go. Here we go. Printer, home thyself. So we're going to go to change filament. We're going to go to load filament. We're going to preheat for PLA. We're going to heat this, heat this thing up. Ah. <laughs> In the meantime, let's turn our attention back to here. I realized you're not going to be able to see anything. Because I, I set up the camera too high. <sighs> you still can't see anything, can you? Well, trust me, it's, it's, it's working. I'm going to turn up the sensitivity here. There we go. Now you can see, there, that, that, now you can see what's happening. So it looks like it has stayed attached, which is uh, one of the challenges of... One of the challenges of printing in... Uh, in PC. I think the problem we're going to have here is that the belt clip is too thin. I think even, even if this works, I think the belt clip is going to be too thin to provide enough tension. So we're probably going to have to reprint this, but that's fine. Uh, we'll run, that's, that's why we have multiple printers. So we can run off multiple things at the same time. All right. <laughs> Those things beeping at me. That's another thing I have to do with the tool changer is add in a beeper. Go filament, go! You can do it, filament. You can do it, filament, come on. Oh, there we go. Order has been restored to the universe. Yep, that is the price you pay for using garbage filament. <sighs> Wonderful. Now let's run a little more filament through there. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I understand if you're sick of uh, me getting new printers and other things and showing them off. Uh, yeah, we, I, ran too, I ran too many of those in a row. So we're not going to be, we're not going to be doing any, any first looks at products. I have turned down a number of freebies in the past week because I know the, the, that type of stream is getting boring. So, uh, nope, it's going to be all projects from here on out, including today's project. Today's project is, it's actually sponsored. Uh, yeah, this episode is sponsored by Next PCB. They're an overseas PCB manufacturer who gives, well, I got to say, it's one of the best selections of options you have like usually when you when you order from one of these one of these sites you get a quick turn cheap cheap el cheapo pcb it's like you know it's always going to be 1.6 millimeters thick it's always going to be green it's always going to have white text on it you know it's going to be basic and it's not going to be high quality and uh, next pcb's 
circuit boards uh, give you tons of options. You get all kinds of, you get to choose colors, thicknesses, copper weights, all kinds of crazy crap, uh, and all for almost the same price. So it's, uh, yeah. So I'm using them for today's project because uh, we got a lot of circuit boards involved in this, this sort of sequence of projects. I'm going to cool this thing down real quick because we're not using it just yet. Let's temperature. Yeah, uh, so we've got this mechanical keyboard project going on. And uh, yeah, that's why I partnered with them because they gave me the exact circuit boards I'm looking for. Uh, and for really, and uh, the price is really good. So every once in a while, you'll see uh, their link pop up in the chat. And if you use that link to register for next PCB, you'll get a $100 store credit, which is a lot of store credit. Says their prices are really good. A hundred bucks is enough to it's enough to make a, a whole pile of copies of something. Uh, it's probably enough to make, uh, you know, like 30 Arduino sized boards. Um, yeah, that would be enough to make, I, I want to say like three copies of, uh, of, of this keyboard project. Speaking of, uh, yeah, the other project we have going on here is making an extra clip, making a replacement clip for my heads up display so I can wear it during streams because I finally got the software working on it. Uh, yeah, so... Let's take a look at, uh, okay, so next, let's see, the clip for the Optigon is, is underway, so I'm going to call that one, I'm going to call that one done. So I'm going to try it, so I'm going to try a different approach here. We're going to do a little bit of a different workflow to how I usually do this kind of thing. Usually I'm just, I just make a rough copy of the board, but for this, I'd really like to try to get an actual 3D model of the board as best I can into Fusion 360. So we'll see what happens. I, uh, I have never used the board editor within Fusion and I don't want to design the project in that because I don't want my project to be locked into subscription software. It says the guy who designs everything in, in, in Fusion. The difference being that if I want to stop using Fusion, it'll be obnoxious to transfer the STLs or, you know, export steps or whatnot, but it'll be possible. Uh, so I've never, like, different EDA suites generally don't work too well with each other's uh, design files, so I want to use something uh, now that I'm going to be able to use forever. However, let's turn our attention back uh, back here, and let's try to... Oh, well, first, let's save this. Um, where are we going to... Save this in the Warbables section. Yeah, the Warbables. And we're going to call this Optagon Clip. Because that's what it is. All right, so we're going to close this guy. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, try to get our, let's try to get our file from Eagle... Uh, our circuit board file from Eagle into Fusion. Here's, uh, here's the circuit board file, by the way. It's a mechanical keyboard. It's a 60% keyboard with a bunch of extras, including the ability to, oh, the ability to uh, break it apart into either a split keyboard or a plank-style keyboard. Uh, and uh, three OLED panels, three OLED buttons that have, uh, yeah, so, the, so you can display stuff directly on the button. It's going to be a pretty cool project. So, yeah, let's try to get this board into Fusion 360 and I completely forgot how to even open the circuit how to even open the circuit board uh, stuff. Here we go. Uh, new electronics design. So let's can we uh, let's see it says reference. Let's see if we can pass this in by reference. Hopefully it doesn't you know I don't trust this software. I think uh, I think Autodesk is Autodesk, I, my trust in Autodesk is, let's just say, not complete. So I'm going to copy my files because I think these snakes might, without my permission, upgrade these files to the newest version of Eagle to lock me out of using my old software. So let's copy those. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to go to the Cyberdeck Mechanical Keyboard and we'll open up our, uh, our copy of the board file. All right, looks like it looks like it made its way in. So we're probably going to want to add. Uh, yeah, I haven't used this before, so we're gonna. There's going to be a. This is based on Eagle, although it's not 100%. Like they've made they've made improvements. So I also want to add the schematic. So here's a question: If I hit switch to schematic, it looks like an imported. All right. If I switch to schematic, is it going to ruin everything by creating a blank schematic or trying to recover one from the board, or is it going to give me an option to choose it? 
Let's find out. Uh, all right. So yeah, it created a sh it created an unlinked. Yep, it created an unlinked uh, schematic file. So is it going to give me the ability to import the schematic, or has it permanently locked me out? How do I how do I do that? Because it used to like it changed the. There, there, yeah, like the page, the page before that let me select what to import disappeared after I imported one, you know, after I imported the board files. So what the heck? How do I get the schematic file in here too? Let's, uh, let's get back down to the bottom of chat, see if anyone, uh, see if anyone pointed out the answer. Uh, meh. Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so how 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 do I get both in, or do I have to start a new? Did, did I did I just did I just permanently screw this up? Libraries document no. So is there some way to import to have this import the PCB? I don't know. Did I, I think I might have screwed this up. Yeah, I think I think I screwed this up. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna nuke this and start over. All right. So yeah, I'm just we're we're just gonna start over because this is Eagle, and generally when you make a mistake in Eagle, it's not possible. Generally, when you make a mistake in Eagle, like you know. Biggest, biggest mistake you can do in Eagle is you design a circuit board directly, like you basically you spawn all the components in the board editor before creating a schematic, because uh, there's no way to there's no way to pull that back. You can't go backwards. You can only create a board from a schematic. You can't create a schematic from a board. So you have to scrap the entire thing and start from scratch. There's no there's it's there's there's straight up no way around it. Uh, I mean I think you get around it by editing some XML files, but uh, it's it's not worth it. Okay, so let's let's try this again. So it says create reference. Is there any way to get in? Let's see. Is there any way to import a schematic and a circuit board? I think the mistake we made was here. Uh, so let's open up the copy. So I think it created a new tab. Uh, I think yeah, we just have to go back here. Yeah, there we go. That's 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 the yep, there it is. So we, now we've imported both of them and uh, we should hopefully they should stay linked. Uh, I don't like the white on I don't like the I don't like the white on the white background. I, I like I like it to be black. So these should be linked so we shouldn't have too many problems. Cool. All right. So uh All right. So let's see what happens. Uh we should be able to turn this into a should be able to turn this into a model and get it into. Uh, should be able to get this turn this into a model and get it into a into um, fusion uh, into the 3D modeling section of fusion. But uh, let's so let's see. We're gonna want to probably save this. Uh, just, do we do we create a project for the Cyberdeck? Yeah, Cyberdeck. There we go. Data Blaster prototype. So this is the. Mirage prototype. All right. Now here's the question: Can we take what we just made and get it into and get it into fusion? Luke who asks: Do you guys think a homemade hot end is viable? Use an aluminum block and a brass screw. The question is why. Like, what what would you gain from that? Uh, uh, let's see. So let's try to get the let's try to get this thing in. How do we do that? Uh, is it under import maybe insert insert mesh insert derive is that it? Derive requires a save design. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Let's call this Mirage Enclosure Prototype. 
Okay, so it's not letting us do that. Uh, all right, let's let's look this up. Let us look this up. So uh, let's see. Import e. Let's see. Uh, import eagle board into Fusion as model. You can import. Create a Fusion 360 model from an existing Eagle board file. Uh, okay, this is an older tutorial. Uh, let's see, so Fusion PCB model, I guess? How to work with 3D PCB. The 3D PCB is created as a parametric model. All right, in the PCB workspace, uh, you can find the view 3D PCB commands. You can use either one to create a 3D PCB. Cool, let's give that a shot. I, oh man, if there's the worst part about Fusion, as bizarre as this sounds, apart from the fact that it's a, it's a subscription business model, but that's, that's such a, that's so egregiously bad that it, like, it would just dominate, like, I'd never be able to talk about anything else wrong with it. Uh, yeah, the big problem is that almost all of his tutorials are videos, and all the videos are borderline unwatchable. Sorry if anyone in chat is the one who made those videos, but holy crap, I don't know how anyone could possibly be expected to get through those videos. They're so slow. They're just, like, the difference between text instructions and video instructions is night and day. Video, and don't get me wrong, video instructions are great as an intro, but they shouldn't, that you cannot have a video be your main source of, your main point of reference. You just can't, like, I'm not going to, like, if all I want to do is figure out how to get the board outline into Fusion, I'm not going to watch a 12 minute video hoping that, like, that, hoping that what I'm looking for is in there. No, I'm going to hit Control F, I'm going to, I'm going to find it, and there you go. So we should be able to go back to the board here and uh, go to View 3D PCB. There we go. So let's see. Most of the components, almost all the components are going to be missing because uh, these are all, these are all, I, I don't, I, we're barely using any standard library parts here. Uh, like, I, there, I don't think there, I don't think there are 3D, I don't think there are 3D components in, uh, I don't think there are 3D models in these libraries. Uh, yeah. What's going on here? Did we kill it? Because we're we are, we are frozen. Uh, are we are we screwed? In the meantime, while we wait for this to unfreeze, let's take a look. It looks like our looks like our, our thing is printing. We're gonna use this more as uh, more for to make sure our dimensions are correct, because uh, the clip is is almost certainly gonna be too thin to be useful. Just gonna let the it's going to let the thing just slip right off or, or snap right off. So it looks like we now have uh, we now have this updating graphics bar at the bottom, so we haven't completely frozen. Luxuriant Squish says, aren't all makers ADHD? I have 100 projects in the go at all times. I think it's more that... I think it's more the people who make a lot of... The people who make stuff, like, kind of self-diagnose with ADHD. <sighs> Because the starting projects before you finish old projects is not limited to ADHD. Uh, I would I would go so far as to say that like unless you have gone out of your way to deliberately extinguish that habit, it's just part of the human condition. I think everyone who gets into making stuff by nature, except for I, all right, I'm talking generalities here. So of course not a freaking hundred percent. Like don't don't rip my head off. Uh, but I think nearly everyone who go who starts making stuff will jump between projects. It takes, it's not even a certain amount of restraint. It's you, you have to beat like you have to beat back a bunch of cognitive biases. You have to be willing to confront the sunk cost fallacy is the big one. You have to be willing to, you have to be willing to uh, to take down to like deal with the IKEA effect. Like it's it's easier if you know what. Like if you know the psychology, the psychology at play, it's it's easier, but it still doesn't come naturally. So I think a lot of people self-diagnose. So it looks like there's a script here. Let me let me hide my hang on a second here. Let me I can't resize the window. Uh, let me hide. Here we go. The shill. The shill window. So you can see it's it's actually editing a time. It looks like it's editing a timeline. I'm guessing what's taking your so what's taking so long is that this is not. This isn't a what's the way of saying it? this isn't a first class feature of Fusion. I, I'm guessing somebody just wrote a script that generates a board 
or that generates a model from the board. And you can actually see the timeline moving around. So I'm guessing it's doing this the hard way almost. And that ties into my understanding of how everything works in Eagle. Someone just wrote a script and they added it in. Tinker Barrick says the 80-20 rule, uh, it's easier to start than finish. Uh, what do we, I forget the name of the rule, but uh, yeah, the rule usually is that 80% uh, of the work takes 80% of the time. But the way it works in, pro in working on a project is the first 90% of the work takes the first 90% of the time. The last 10% of the work takes the next 90% of the time. <laughs> uh, oh, Arrow Reader. Arrow Reader says something that, that I would normally start a fight with, but, but he's one of my Patreon patrons. Uh, Arrow Reader says, uh, there's pleasure in making a project, but you can get the same feeling from thinking about the project deeply without doing it. So if you do that, you're less inclined to finish the project. I disagree. I think this is something, or at least, I know, I know this doesn't apply to me, uh, and I suspect this doesn't apply to many people. Um, yeah. I, I think people, what's the way of saying it? Um, Coming up with an idea and letting your imagination run free is fun, but in this guy's opinion, compared to the pleasure of finishing a project, it's the, 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 the pleasure of finishing a project and having it and being able to show it off and be proud of it and be able to let your mind like move on, compared to the pleasure of letting your imagination run free and sketching stuff, it's so much better that it's so it's so much better that it makes coming up with an idea a chore by comparison like when i just the the sheer pleasure that comes from finishing something having it knowing it's part of your life permanently and you can you can share you do with whatever you do with it what you will compared to that pleasure coming up with an idea is almost it's almost like it's so unpleasurable by comparison. It's so less pleasurable by comparison. It's almost a chore. Like it's it's to the point where I actually have a hard time getting myself to to plan a project because it's just yeah. On top of that, the more projects you make and the better um, the more projects you make, the more experience you have building stuff. The uh, sort of you start to just do it all subconsciously. Like you just sit down to build something and you've already been thinking about it. Like you don't even come up with ideas anymore. You just have them ready. Uh, so yeah, on top of that, I feel like there's a benefit to extinguishing that in your, like if you, if you enjoy the process of coming up with ideas, I think it's actually, it could be beneficial to get over it. Uh, cause yeah, it's, I mean, look, if you can get, if you can get satisfaction through coming up with new projects and starting new projects, you're gonna have you're gonna have an impossible time finishing projects. This is taking for freaking ever. Is this is this like frozen? Because every once in a while it's like still updating the timeline. Uh, is this like doing anything? Um, I I think we yeah we're gonna give this three more minutes uh, until one fifty, and if it's not done, we're going to uh, we're gonna nuke fusion, and I'm just going to recreate the board uh, by hand using. Using registered geometry. Super duper easy. Yeah. Uh, Powder says, say you've made an... Oh, this is a great question. Say you've made an object and you've agreed to sell it to me for 10 bucks. I want the STL instead. How much would you take for the STL? Oh, hey, there's a puppy in here. Oh, hello, puppy. Hello, puppy. Where, how, how, what are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing there, pup? He's being, he's being shy. God. Hey, Rob. I must have left the... He wants to play. I must have left the door open. I can't play right now. You're going to trip over all the cords. <laughs> uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't like when we stream. He likes attention from me. Um, anyways, yes. So the, que so the question is, if I was selling a product, how much would I sell the STL for? If I'm selling a product, I would never sell the STL. It, it's it's like saying um, yeah it's I would, I would never sell the STL it's I mean that, that's like like sending someone the STL is like sending someone your nudes like like there's literally nothing you can do to limit its spread once you send the STL to someone you've effectively shared it with the entire world like even if you like look even if you sue them 
and you, you know, even if you sue them and you get a court to like, assuming, I don't know, you're, 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 you're literally the district attorney. So you, so you can railroad the case through and you get a preliminary injunction filed immediately or underway immediately. By that point, it's already been shared with so many people. It's, you, you can't, you can't lock all of them down. Basically, if I'm selling something that permanent, let as long as I'm, as long as I'm selling it, I can never, ever share the STL or the original files ever. Uh, just straight up, it, it it can't it can't happen. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the nature of the game. There's uh, there's no way to there's no DRM for there, there's no there's no usable DRM for STL files. So uh, yeah, it's 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 part of the process. There's there's no way to keep anyone from from putting it up. And uh, look, you you can share it and then just try to take it down. You know, you just try to take it down, right? Whenever um, you can share it, you try to take it down whenever they put it up. But first off, like these sites, like uh, sites where you share STLs and file sharing sites are generally not as quick on the draw with with DRM. Like there's no um, which way what's way of saying it? Like there's no uh, content ID for three D models. Basically, you share, you're sharing it with the entire world if you share it with a single person, and if you share it with the entire world, you've locked yourself out of making money. On top of that, uh, th there's a second part of this, in that if you are serious about selling your 3D printed files, you have to make the geometry really hard to rip off, because if, if all it is is like a bunch of, if, if all it is like a bunch of rectangles and, you know, a bunch of rectangles and, uh, and circles that have been extruded and, and like, mitered and whatnot someone could just buy your product and grab a set of calipers and reverse engineer it so you have to add in you have to add in like measures to make it harder to print uh maybe a distinctive style with like curves or something basically you have to make your model hard to rip off it's a you have to design that as one of your first class features uh so this thing is still doing something should we let it run like, can I, can I open a sec? I don't think I can open a second instance of Fusion. Uh, yeah. I, I, for what it's worth, by the way, the whole concept of selling an STL is ludicrous. It's, oh, all right, cool. It actually finished. Uh, all right. It finished, but, oh yeah. I was going to say, uh, mil our milling didn't come out, but it certainly did. Cool. Uh, let's save this before everything Cyberdeck Metcube PCB. Yeah, let's save this before something goes wrong. And how long did that take? Like twelve minutes? It's ludicrous. It's insane. Is this gonna take this long every time I try to save it? This is ridiculous. We're, we're, we have to we have to find some way to. Uh, if it's this bad, we, we got to find some way to simplify the geometry. Maybe maybe we can just export this as a mesh and import that into uh, what should we call it? into into fusion. Uh, selling an STL is ludicrous. It's a contradiction in terms. People are going to share the STL. Like remember remember you can only sell something exclusive. You can't sell something you can't sell something that other people can get on their own. And uh, yeah. I, I, that said, like, a lot of people, like, but I mean, this race is a really important issue in that um, a lot of people like the idea of 3D printing, saying it, a lot of people like the idea of 3D printing being able to, like, being good for the environment, right? They, uh, they want, um, they want, instead of having something injection molded in China, shipped across the, you know, shipped across the world to you. Instead, you know, you print it yourself. If you want that, if you believe that's the future, you must support, uh, you must support DRM. It's not, op you, you simply, otherwise the whole idea of selling any of those products, basically like you, you, you must support it. And you say, oh, well, we don't have to support it. We could rely on open source. All right, that's true. But as long as it's legal to injection mold, no one will ever sell the, you know, no one will ever sell printable files uh, ex unless the quantities are so sl so small. You don't have to believe me. Like this, this uh, er, er, people try this crap all the time in the Nerf community. Like they try to sell STLs all the time, and you name any of these Nerf blasters that cost like thirty five dollars on for for et, STLs on Etsy, 
Do a little bit of Googling, you'll be able to find them all on Pastebin. The only way they get the only way they can get around this is by trying to update the files like every few weeks, and that makes all the people who paid for them feel and printed them feel bad. So yeah. Uh, Tigger Barrick has a try has another workaround, although I know for I know this one doesn't work either. Tomas and Stefan in their Melt Zone podcast talk about making the models free, but instruction videos and manuals would be paid. See, that won't work either because it won't stop people from publicly complaining. So your products will get a reputation of being hard to build because people aren't going to pay for the instruction manuals. So people who don't have a lot of experience, people who don't know the dynamics are going to be like, how does, like, okay, so I buy a printer, I buy these models. Is this hard? And they look online and say, I've had such, like, they look on Reddit and they're like 57 threads on like, how do I assemble this thing? And, uh, yeah. CXOB23 says open source everything. I mean... Over the long term, but over the long term, but like if you want people to devote a significant amount of their time to something, you got to have you got to give them the ability to make money on it. Otherwise, they just can't. Right. Like I, you have to either you have to, yeah, you know, largely neutralize capitalism in order to have people give away large swaths of their time for free. It's not even a matter of choice. Like it's not even about being greedy. You just you just physically can't. You have to you have to feed yourself. By the way, like, I think I'm good about uh, practicing what I preach here, because I give away, like, yes, I could make all of my projects, like, Patreon exclusive, but I think that would be strictly worse than just giving them all away. So I don't. Uh, yeah, I try, to, I try to practice what I preach here. Um, I don't think you can, I don't think it makes sense either. It's, it's ludicrous. Like, anytime you, people aren't idiots, they know... Hang on a second. Looks like we got our we got our PCBs into Fusion. So let's update our to-do list before I rant. Oh, no, come on. Check. There we go. Uh, everyone knows that a an STL does not cost any money to manufacture. Like, it's oh, you just look greedy if you try to sell STLs. I think. Yeah, you just, you, just look, you just look greedy if you're trying to sell them. I think you could, to an extent, you could make an exception for, like, the, the sculptural STL files. But even then, like, like people know you're being exploitative. They're not, they're not dumb. Uh, intern, intern S Techie says, I paid for a few STL files. Am I a sucker? No, no, absolutely not. Like, if you want to support the, the, the issue, the other direction, right? If you want to support the creator, like, that's fine. Remember, even if someone gives you something for free, or if you can get something for free, Rather, just because something doesn't cost anything to make doesn't mean you, you, you can't pay for it, right? Like, it's up to you how you spend your money, and if you feel like that's the thing to do, then that's great. And that also is rewarding them for convincing you to spend that money. Uh, it's, yeah. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to think of the next... It's kind of cool to see this thing in 3D. So ch check this out, by the way. Uh... So it's called the Mirage Keyboard. It says, Zach from Avoid Star Lab proudly presents the Mirage Keyboard. One half is a macro pad and three halves a cyber deck. And uh, the reason you'll notice the text is actually upside down. See, I flipped, usually when you flip a, a board over, right? Usually when you flip a circuit board over, you do it this way. But you notice the text is upside down. I did it this way and I laid out the text so weirdly so that if you're only making the macro pad side, if you slice off the left side, it just says Void Star Lab presents the Rage Board macro pad and deck. It's like a stream deck. But if you make both, it says all this stuff. Yeah, I spent a little too much time on that. Okay, so let's... <laughs> Rufu Shinjiro says, largely neutralized capitalism. Now we're talking. Look, I... I've I've made I've made my views on I've made my views on, on, on capitalism pretty clear here. I'm curious what people want to replace it with. Cause yeah, I'm curious what people want to replace it with. Uh yeah, that's 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 the thing I find interesting. I like I so you'd think that with all the discourse happening on the internet, you'd have one person, one person saying we should burn capitalism to the ground and replace it with mercantilism. But no. Nobody, nobody even remembers mercantilism. <laughs> Mer mercantilism is trade without capital. Basically, you uh, you you can buy you buy and sell you can buy and sell products, but you can't you can buy and sell products, but you can't buy and sell uh, basically land is like 
I, as far as I know, nobody has tried to nobody's tried to lay down strict mercantilism in a in a um, in a post-industrial system. But yeah. <sighs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let's get this. Let's get, let's get an enclosure built around these things. So we're actually going to kind of build two enclosures here, but we're going to start out. How I'm think, what I'm thinking here is we'll start out by building the uh, the all-in-one version of the enclosure, and then we'll maybe modify it. So, like, I don't know exactly how. This is also one of Fusion's weaknesses: is making uh, making models that fork at a certain point. Like having a model that has different variants, but uh, we'll see what we can we'll see what we can do. In the meantime, uh, we can get rid of all of these, except what's going on here on the board? Is this going to give me a super long list? What what is this? What are what are these red things here? What's what's what does this do? Oh, these are the these are the pack oh, packages. I see ah. Ah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Got a little bit of a little bit of a bug here. The uh huh. I wonder why the uh, the copper layer isn't going over the silk screen layer. Anyways, uh what how, so what do we do next here? So we want to get this in uh, to, do we just like, oh, is this going to take this long? All right, so this is going to be, this, this is unworkable. Uh, if it takes this long every time we save, then this can't happen. Uh, we have to figure out some way to turn this into, basically to strip this down to make it easier to work with. Because if it takes this long, if it takes this long uh, to save every time, uh, this is going to curve hours out of the workflow. Because you should be, sa you should really be saving after every step you do. Every time you do anything that you think will make its way into the finished project, you should be saving. So, uh, would it help to get rid of everything except the board? 3D and 2D documents are out of sync. Uh, okay. So let's go back. Let's go back here. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. Uh, we're going to Im try to insert. Let's see. Insert derive. Will this work if we uh, derive it from the 3D model we just created? This is a learning. It's a learning experience. So at least now it showed up. So let's see. Uh, derive. All right. Is this is this going to uh, is this going to give me a going to give me a lot of guff? Hmm. Well, yeah. Hmm. All right. We're not going to wait much longer. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to allow three more slowdowns. Uh, after the third slowdown, uh, we are just going to we're just going to export this as an STL and then import it into uh, yeah, let's see here. Import it into Fusion. Okay, so it looks like we got the top copper, but none of the others. So let's try saving this and see how long it takes. All right, yeah, so this is, yeah, uh, this isn't terrible. I guess because it pre, I guess like it pre-calculates some of it, but where's the board? Where's the board itself? Did we make a, did we make a mistake? I think we might have made a mistake here. Uh, let's... Let's get this. I think I think we were too hasty. Can we delete this? Can we get can we get rid of this? Is this is this not letting me delete this? What the absolute hell? It doesn't allow you to delete this. So I guess we have to break the link and then we can delete it. So I'm guessing this is going to slow us down like crazy. Uh Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna cause. This could cause all kinds of problems. I want all the. I like. I, ideally, I'd like all the dimensions. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, this is a problem. Okay, so this is not ready for prime time. This is too slow. Uh, this workflow is. This isn't even a very complicated board either. Um, all right. Do we want to give this one more try? Uh, 
I don't think we should. I think I think we've given it its I think we've given it its chance. Yeah, this is causing too many slowdowns. It's screwing our workflow over too much. We've already wasted at least twenty minutes. Uh yeah, we've already we are, we already blew at least twenty minutes here. So can we render animation simulation manufacture? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any good way of going about this. Okay, so here's here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to we're gonna derive that again, right? Mechanical keyboard PCB. We're gonna try to get the we're gonna try to get just the board, right? So let's see. Oh, we have to select what we want. Okay. So we have to select what we want. Let's see if this works any better. It's like. Uh, Ah, so is this going to take less time? I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't cause, yeah, so it doesn't cause slowdown. So it looks like the issue is those really, is a really complex geometry introduced by like the copper layers. So let's see if we can get this and the silk layer. We're going to delete this and I, it's a learning experience for me too. So we can't delete this. We have to break the link. We have to break the link. We have to let it calculate. All right, so the board isn't isn't very heavyweight. Okay, cool. That's good. So let's insert a derive. Uh, I want to get some of the silk screen as well if I can, because that will make it easier for for us to plan around. Um, let's get to in here. So let's see what we see what we want. We want uh, the board. Can we get the What's what's body one? What is what is what is what is that? What happened? Why are the two? Why why does it say we're out of sync now? I'm really confused. Oh, I hit insert SVG. Insert. So why why isn't it giving us our silk screen? Uh, what's what's the what's the story there? Oh, it brings us, it opens up the file. Okay, so we've jumped between files. So, where is the silkscreen layer? Is it canvases? Is there a way to get the silkscreen? Uh, yes, looks like, looks like there is. So we've got board and we've got our silk, so it's rendering the silkscreen onto canvases. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, good, so let's save this. Uh, hopefully this shouldn't take much longer than a few seconds, and now, yep, cool. And now we have all of our outlines, and that'll make it easier to design around our stuff. All right, very, very nice. So yeah, we've already wasted enough time, so let's let's not get much let's not get much further. Uh, hopefully we made this two millimeters. It's one point six. Um, does it matter that much? Is the extra? Yeah, I, I think we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it like this because this is too. Mm, no, it's it, yeah. We can end up with gaps. We can end up with gaps. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. So this. Uh, so the the issue happened ahead of time. I. I don't. Is it? How do we tell Eagle? How do we tell Eagle? Like, now I'm curious. Is there a way to change the thickness of the board? How do we... What's PCB hole? Add a drill. That's weird. So is, is there any way to change the thickness properties, maybe? Uh, to change... Basically, I want to change the, uh, the, the FR4 thickness. Board... Uh, description, material name. So does it, is it just always 1.6? Bounding box? Height? Can we change this? No. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's look this up online. Uh, uh, Fusion 360 PCB change thickness. How to change thickness of PCB in electronics design? Uh, in the DRC layers tab, you can change the thickness of the layers. Okay, so where, doesn't tell us where that is. 
I'm guessing it's in the PCB thing. Okay, where's our tab here? Um, of course, here we go. Rules DRC. There we. It's called Rules DRC. Very nice. Uh, DRC. I'm guessing. Sizes. I've never, I've never done this before. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so we got two millimeters. Two millimeters thick core. Let's apply. The 2D and 3D PCB documents are out of sync. Okay, so how do we, how do we, re, is there any way to resynchronize them or are we just, are we just doomed forever? Uh... Is, is there 2D and 3D PCB documents are out of sync? Is there any way to resync them automatically, or do we have to completely redo this entire thing from scratch? Uh, it seems you have to manually update. If you've made changes in the 2D PCB design, save, done, and then push the view 3D button. You made, okay, so we're going to have to, so if we push this button, we're going to completely, I guess we're going to have to completely re-render this whole thing, which is going to take for freaking ever. Wow, is it taking this long to save the PCB file? Wow, okay, so we've, all right, so now we've established that the board editor baked into Fusion 360 is literally worthless. Any piece of software that takes this long to save is unusable and unfit for use by any anyone serious who actually intends to have a finished product at the end of it. The last thing you ever want to disincentivize anyone from doing is saving. Saving is so important that my um, saving is so important that my loop deck has a dedicated save button right there. It has a button just for saving. The loop brother. All right, so we've saved it. Uh, and now we have to hit view PCB. But last time we did that, it took ages. So what do you think? Is it going to take longer? Let's see. Let's hit view 3D PCB. Let's hope it can reuse the old geometry and move faster. Because really all it's doing is changing. It should be changing one extrude. But uh, yeah, I think we may, have, we may have screwed ourselves. I don't think anything in Fusion's written. Tinker Barrick says, uh, maybe the script to import the th circuit was not written in multi-threading. Twelve, hence 12 minutes. I don't think anything in Fusion is multi-threaded. But on top of that, the, the script is, I mean, the script is just clearly garbage. Because this is not, this, this board has like, has like 80, has like 80 items in the bill of materials, right? Like, this is not a very complicated board. So it looks like it's completely recalculating the entire thing from scratch, and it's not giving us any way to cancel. Uh, let's see if we can open up another instance of Fusion. Yep, looks like, looks like we can. Uh, it's probably going to throw an error, though, and say that our... Oh, let's see. I think it, it might not even... Oh yeah, we, we got another window opening. Uh, let's hope it actually works and it doesn't say that our, our license is being used in too many instances. Let's, let's hope this actually works. All right. So let's open up our... Let's go to Cyberdex. Cyberdux, quack. Mirage enclosure prototype. We'll delete the, uh, we'll delete the, uh, uh, the unused files here. One component is out to, is out of date. Did it finish? No, it couldn't have finished already. No way. No, it's it's so frozen. I can't even open the window. Get latest. All right. So actually, this yeah. So now it seems to be doing the computing for the inherited file in the background. So who even freaking knows anymore? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who even knows? I don't know how hard it is to put, um, that's weird. Check this out. The font for these is Arial. That's odd. Uh, all right. So I don't know how hard it is to update, to like add models, but let's get ourselves, uh, let's get our, let's get ourselves some, uh, oh man, 
trying to figure out software and talk this trying to figure out software and talk at the same time is brutal let me just tell you um we're gonna have to put up uh the o like the oleds so we can either get models of oleds or just try to directly attach them like to the components uh i think it's better for us to just import some files so let's try to find some models for these oleds so let's go to uh how are we how are we gonna what's a good site for this 128 by 64 oled model um 3d model grab cad let's see what's on the grab cad see what we can grab from the cad this looks good this looks good this looks all right let's uh let's download it and see what's wrong with it there we go. We have our disposable email address we set up last time. We we got our disposable email address from the last time we used GrabCAD. So let's see what's wrong with this that's going to make it unusable. It's, an, it's a step file, so let's see if Fusion is okay with importing it. Uh, insert mesh. I, or is, I think we do this through... Do we just drag it in? I forget how to I forget how to get step files in. So we can't just drag it in. Uh, maybe we can insert mesh. The mesh. I'm meshing around. Ugh. Downloads. Uh, can we do it this way? All right. So no, we can't. Uh, Let's let's look this up too. Uh, import STP into Fusion. I think we might have to import it as its own. Yeah, we have to create a new design for it and then import it. I think I still think that's the best way. Uh, I still think that's the best way to to go about this. So let's get this in. Oh, come on. Upload. Do it. <laughs> Let's see. Everything in Fusion takes for freaking ever. Yeah, uh, I wish, um, I wish, uh, I wish FreeCAD, like, I wish, uh, yeah, FreeCAD or any of the others were, were, were good enough. Still not, still not, uh, no, there's still no, like, open, like, well-maintained open source, uh, CAD program that I feel comfortable compl going all in on. I would normally have switched to SolidWorks by now, but, uh, I want to, I want other people to be able to make my, uh, make my projects. So let's try to, let's try to line this up. So is this, what? Let's see, is this thing upside down? How do we how do we set this up? Let's tab back over, and take a look at this. Okay, so this is gonna end up upside down. So we're going to turn this around 180 degrees. There we go. All right. Uh looks like um <laughs> Um, why isn't this letting us move? Uh, oh, it seems like we've frozen. Okay. Move this. Can can we move this? Components. There we go. All right. So let's try to move. Let's try to set this so that it is rest. It's not. Re yeah, we want the the header resting on top like that. Call this 5.5. Close enough. Let's take a look. Let's go back to the top and let's try to line up the holes. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah, there we go. We're gonna have to change our view mode to wireframe. Minus 2.5, 2.75. There we go. Let's save before something goes wrong. So you can see how the how these buttons work, right? You've got um 
Oh, there we go. You can see how these, how these uh, OLED buttons work. They have a screen on them. And uh, these right here under it, supporting it on one side, is that is its header, right? Which is on, which has this cutout here, so it can rock back and forth and flap around. And on the other side, it's going to be supported by a button, so you'll be able to push it down and click the button. All right, so now we just have to create a pattern of this, and let's hope this doesn't cause too many problems. So we're going to do, we we do have to capture position. I'm glad it reminds us now. We're going to make a pattern of components. That component in particular, we do want three of them. And uh, where's our, where's the thing that you dragged to make the thing do the thing? Oh, we have to pick our, pick our directions. Here, let's let me just use that. All right, that looks close. There we go. Yeah, it should be an integer number of uh, millimeters because that we we're using a millimeter grid when we laid out the file. All right, so let's save this before anything else goes wrong. Cool. Uh, in the meantime, let's tab back over here and uh, let's see if they let's see if grab if anyone in GrabCAD put up a kale chalk. No. Let's just look for kale. No. Oh, it still has the OLED tag. That's that's profoundly stupid. I don't know why they would ever do that. Okay, so very nice. Uh, Kale LP chalk keycap. All right, it so looks like we have a bunch of options. That's a really nice render. Oh man, that's that's pretty. Okay, so let's download this. So we're gonna have to create a few more. Uh, let's export this here, or let's extract this here. Let's see if, uh, are we saved? Very nice. Let's, uh, let's, here we go. You know what, let's do both of these at once. Let's get the keycap as well. Low profile keycaps. Uh, yeah, so the keycap dimensions here are going to be slightly off because I forgot that the kale I forgot that kill uses uh, the the kill chalks. The low profile keys use a a, a a loot. They use a tighter spacing than Cherry MX. Let's see, extract them. Yeah, so I spaced the keys for uh, Cherry MX, but uh, they should actually be spaced t closer together. So once we put the keycaps on, uh, there are going to be gaps in between. By the way, uh, this this episode is sponsored by Next PCB, who I realized that I should have. Put back on the screen. <laughs> yeah, this episode is sponsored by Next PCB, who uh, also fa is also fabbing these boards as we talk, as we speak. So um, yeah, are they gonna... yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, they're sponsoring it. They're a circuit board manufacturer who offers really good deals, really good quality, and a lot of options. So uh, yeah, uh, every once in a while you'll see a link show up in the chat. So go ahead and click on that, and you get and register and get a hundred bucks off. Uh, your next order on next PCB, and that goes a really long way. 100 bucks is a ton of boards, and yeah, they let you they let you customize the silk screen color. You can custom you can customize the solder mask color, uh, board thickness, copper thickness. Uh, whereas some of the a lot of these other uh, quick turn overseas manufacturers limit you severely on what you can make. Plus, they support a lot of the details. The reason why I yeah the reason why we picked them to build this project is because they support a lot of the details like tab routing. See all that? See, we wouldn't, I don't think we'd be able to do that. Uh, well, I don't think we'd be able to have them mill this out if we used another manufacturer. So yeah, without next PCB, this project and the stream would not have happened. So yeah, let's go back uh, here. Let's see, so we have, we have two instances of Fusion open. And uh, we just have to make sure not to get uh, not to get confused. We're totally going to get confused. So we got our OLED. Where's the chalk? Where's the key? Where's the? Uh... Here we go. So let's get this in here too. Upload both of them. Very nice. Let's get that. Uh, let's get that in. Tinker Barrack asks, "What's the plan to make them push pushable without smashing the fragile OLED?" Well, I mean, we shouldn't. You shouldn't break the OLED. 
You shouldn't break the OLED, like, unless you drop something on it. And I, I think what we're going to try, what we're going to try to do is put a little frame or something. Basically, we're going to put something to cover the corners and put a little bumper on those OLED buttons. And hopefully that should keep it from breaking the two ways that's easiest, like putting pressure on a corner and snapping it off or dropping something onto it. Uh, your finger pushing it shouldn't break it because like it, it it has to bend in order to break and there's no uh, there's no way of, there's nowhere for it to bend right because it's it's flat against its own circuit board so I'm not worried about it breaking uh, we'll put a little bumper on it to make it harder to smash them by dropping something onto them yeah why is this taking so long Jeez Louise. Chronome asks, will the stream be available later? Need to sleep. Eventually, yes. Uh, eventually, yes. I'm, I'm a bit behind on, on processing and uploading the streams because of how heavyweight and difficult they are. It takes around 12, it takes around 6 to 12 hours total to transcode, uh, to, yeah, to transcode, um, render and upload the streams. Even even on my computer, so we're gonna try to get it up. Uh, I although I, I will admit it's gonna take a bit longer for this one because my focus is on finishing the next episode. Got nearly all the footage, uh, nearly all the footage and everything cut. Uh, Random guy three says Twitch does not autom automatically do a vod. Problem is Twitch deletes vods after first off. Twitch deletes vods after two weeks, uh, unless unless you're uh, unless you are a partner, I think. And that is going to take a month, a month plus to get. It's going to take a month plus to qualify for, so they'll delete it before that. Second off, I don't want to split the views between Twitch VODs and the second channel on YouTube. And it, it just makes it harder. Instead of telling people, go to my second channel, uh, bit.ly slash voidstar live, or you just type, uh, oh, I forgot to put it on the channel. Uh, yeah, instead of telling people to go to two places, tell people to go to one place. Yeah, remember that there's a limited amount of information you can convey at once, so you always have to figure out ways to coalesce stuff together so there's less to tell people. Part of the fun, if I, yeah, let's see, refresh, very nice. Okay, so let's get one of these bad boys in there. Did this, oh, almost, did it give us a tiny piece of circuit board attached to this too? That's stupid. Why did it do that? Why is there a why is there a little piece of circuit board attached? Oy vey. 3.5, 3.25, Is that it? Yeah, close enough. All right, and that should line up because this key. Yep, lines up because this key is in, is already in the origin. Okay, so let's save before something else goes wrong, and let's throw a keycap on it. Yeah. Uh, yes. We've, we, 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 at least for now, uh, at least for now, I have set the auto moderate, I've set the moderation bot to be fairly aggressive about emote spam, uh, cause we actually try to talk about stuff with emotes, and I, uh, I, I, I would have to set up all these, oh man, like I'd have to set up this, so this really obnoxious relay system in order to like filter all the emotes out so I can read chat within OBS. And I have, oh man, I don't have time for all this crap. So let's get this in here and try to line it up nice and tidy on top of the key. Let's see, let's zoom this in here. Try to get this into place. There we go. Look how low profile this is. This combination of keycap plus key switch is still lower profile than just a Cherry MX on its own. It's great. I love low profile keys, uh, low profile keyboards. I don't have any because, you know, I haven't made any keyboards yet. But I love them because uh, you don't cock your wrists when you're, you're like, you don't cock your wrists when you're um, typing on them. I get to keep your wrists nice and flat. Yeah, good for ergonomics, good for the soul. So let's, so it's gonna be really easy. Uh, it's gonna be really easy, here we go, to propagate these around. Uh, we're not gonna, like the bottom row is its own ball of wax. I think we're just gonna pretend the bottom row is the same as the others and, and deal with that later. Uh, yeah. 
So at least for at least for now, we're limiting the emote spam. Uh, gonna gonna play that one by ear. We also have a lot of folks coming in from YouTube, and uh, I don't want people who've never used Twi like. It's much. What's way of saying it? It's much more acceptable to spam emotes on Twitch than it is on YouTube. Uh, on on YouTube, like you're, you'll get thrown out of the stream. Like you'll get thrown out of the stream for for spamming emotes on Twitch. It's like it's like normal. It's like it's like you, you spam emotes to remind everyone you're still here. But at least for now, we are going to. Uh, at least for now, we're limiting it because I'm a big fuddy duddy. So we're spacing this 19 millimeters. Yep. And then all we have to do is, um, no, no, it's, oh, it's minus 19 millimeters. Yeah, in the wrong direction. Ah, there we go. Okay. So now we can, no, we'll just edit this, uh, quantity. I think it's, it's enough. <laughs> oh, that was weird. Why? Are they appearing all over the place? Minus 19. Oh, okay. I guess, I guess it's regular 19 in that direction. Let's hope this doesn't slow things down too much. Looks like this key. Oh, hey, check that out. Looks like our print is done. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is what the finished circuit board approximately is gonna look like. While we let that cool down, because that plate is made of glass, 120 Celsius, so it's gonna stay hot for a few minutes. So this is approximately what it's gonna look like. Things are a little different on the, like, the bottom row, because there are fewer keys, but uh, we just want to, so the next things we have to do is add, uh, the, only, the only other things we are important to add are the headphone jack and uh, the Zhao processor. So let's see. Let's go back to GrabCAD and uh, see if anyone has uploaded a model of the Zhao. Because otherwise, making that, yeah, otherwise, like, I think we could be able to just import it into Fusion and take it from there. Like, import, I think it's an open source project, so I think we just import it. And, uh, let's, not, not Zhao, Zhao. Oh, there we go. VinX mod. This is a fit up CAD file for the postage, postage stamp size Ciduino Zhao. There we go. Excellent. Uh, for those who missed the this last stream we worked on this, or last time I showed it off, we I decided to instead of we were before going to implement an Arduino pro an Arduino micro directly on the board, but I decided against it in part because uh, we you'd have to load a bootloader on it, so you need a programmer, and in part because like this just saves a bunch of time and makes life easier. This will let us use. Uh, there we go. We got a step file. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, we're using the Seedwino Zhao, which also gives you a bunch of options on platform. You can either use the RP2040 or the SAM9. The SAM, uh, the SAM, yeah, the SAMD version, depending on what is available. So let's, uh, let's upload that step file and let's get this guy in there. Seedwino Zhao. Yow. Okay, so while this thing uploads, let's turn our attention back over here and uh, let's release this and see how well it came. Uh, see how well it came out. Let's just, let us see. Yeah, this Magigu is uh, this Magigu is great. Can't believe I, I I thought it was all just baloney, so I I never I never got it before. Ah, I knocked my my body pack off when I sat back down. Let's see. Wardrum says, is this an ortholinear keyboard? Isn't that hard to type on? It is an ortholinear keyboard. I don't think they are very hard to type on. So here we go. We have our little our little clip dingus. So let's see. Yeah, it's it's very tough. But yeah, you can see how how floppy this is. I mean, it's not snapping straight off, so we are we are getting the layer adhesion that we uh, that we want, but we're gonna want to make this thing at least twice as thick. You see how it's already bent out of shape? We're gonna want to make this thing much 
thicker because it right now isn't grabby enough. It, but let's check our other dimensions too. So this thing should slide in like so. Cool. It is sliding in, but it's a very loose fit. Yeah, it's sliding in, so it's a very loose fit. So I think we just have to drop that by about half a millimeter. And we want to size, size this up by a lot. I think right now it's 1.5, so I think we might get... I think we'll bring it up to three, maybe? I think three. So let's, 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 quickly, uh, let's quickly do that. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to... Yeah. Let's quickly do that. So we're going to go back over here. Looks like we're done uploading. We'll open up our other instance of Fusion. And we'll take this opportunity to close this, too. So let's open our Warbables file. Optagon clip. I thought we already had it open. So the first thing to do is we're going to drop this from 12.5 to 12. It's not letting us. We're going to drop this from 21.5 to 21. That's working. Why isn't this allowing me to change it? Is this like over constrained? Why will that over constrain it? <laughs> what is uh, setting the dimension? I guess it's this. I'm confused. This, these, these should be mirrors of this. Uh, all right, well, let's do this ourselves. Symmetrical constraint between this, this, and this. That should fully constrain it. Excellent. Okay, so we've we've hacked off uh, half a we've hacked off half a millimeter from each side. Do we want to remove even more? Yeah, I, do we want to remove even more? I don't think so. Zoster, Zoster says the green direction on that clip is going to break quicker. Uh, I know you want to avoid support, but it could be a problem. Uh, that's why we're using the uh, that's why we're using the polycarbonate because our our layer adhesion should be good enough to resist that. Again, uh, yeah. Remember, remember that like there is only one orientation that would uh, make this thing strong. Remember that like here. So right now we're printing it like this, which does put the layer lines this way and makes it weaker. But we also can't print it like this because then we're going to have layer lines here and that will weaken this part as well. So it'll just whoop, it'll snap off at this joint. So the only way we would be able to print this well is like this. And then think about this, you're going to have inner supports on the on both the top and the bottom which means it's going which means it's going to be next to impossible to actually fit this thing in there we're gonna have to perfectly clean those off so um yeah so we're, we're we'll try to thicken up this clip which here let's let's just try to snap this off let's just try to break this off let's see how far we can we can take it this is 1.5 millimeters yep there we go okay so we still managed to make it fairly far you know yeah broke at a uh, broke at a layer line there we go so look, it could be a problem, but it's not much filament. We can we can uh, we can see what happens. Uh, we might also want to glue uh, might, might also want to glue them together. Might want to print a clip separately from this. But let's try. This is part of the prototyping process. The t time sp yeah, don't solve problems that don't exist. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. So yeah, let's um. Well, first, I realize we should probably round these parts here because they're looking a little, looking a little aggressive. There we are. So this bit right here, the clip needs needs uh, some change in. So let's go. You think four is too much? Three, three millimeters. Three. Let's see what damage it caused down here. Should be all right. We don't actually this there has to be at least a bit of distance here or these will fuse together during printing let's see there we go cool 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 oh crap i should have i should be showing you what we're doing herpity derp oy vey all right there we go <laughs> Ah, let's fill it this. All right. Cool. 
Let's save uh, this guy. We're going to open up Super Slicer, and I'm going to... Uh, we're going to close it, because that will save our, uh, that'll save our settings. So hopefully when we uh, print this again, we don't have to manually pick... We don't have to manually pick all that stuff. Uh, let's head back over to the printer. Where did I put the, the Magigoo? The Magigoo? Where's that goo? That is the nylon Magigoo. Where's the, here it is, the polycarbonate Magigoo. And let's put a little, a little back on there. Very nice. Cool, cool. So we're, we're set up and ready to go. We want to print this on Extruder 2, because that's the one that I loaded the polycarbonate into. And there we are. So this is going to take an hour and a half. And look, we'll just we'll see how strong it is. Optagon clip. If it's, uh, if it's unacceptably weak, then we'll just uh, print the clip. And we'll just print the, uh, the fabric clip and the, uh, the, the thing that holds the, the thing separately aligned you know aligned properly for them and we'll just glue them together and there you go there we are uh chronome says just hit f5 to reload the object in super slicer i mean the object like what fusion 360 is sending it directly to super slicer so there there's no there's nothing to reload Un like unless we were exporting the stl somewhere i try to avoid that because it's hard to, because then like either you have to manually type in a version number for each one, which then defeats the purpose, or you either, yeah, you either have to type a version in, or you might end up, I might end up being confused, and if I ever want to reprint the project, I find the old one. I find like an older version, and I don't realize I've updated it since then. Yeah, remember, anything that, anything that can be confused will be confused. If there are two options, you're going to pick one wrong sooner or later. <laughs> Uh, Tinker Barrack asks, what's the difference between Slicer and Super Slicer? Uh, Slice 3R. I mean, there's a big difference between Slice 3R and, like, Prusa Slicer, right? Prusa took Slice 3R and made a whole lot of changes. Super Slicer is a fork of Prusa Slicer. So it's sort of two steps removed from Slicer. It's, uh, it's a better, better compare with, it's basically Prusa Slicer, except, uh, better multi-material support, and, uh, just better access to a whole bunch of uh, like, ex like really fiddly settings. So yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Robert Blackheart says, I recommend not just gluing them. I, all right. Yeah, no kidding, man. Like it has to be a mechanical connection as well as a glue connection, as well as like an adhesive. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to working on the project. No, glue glue on its own is never enough. Uh, you have to have a mechanical connection as well as adhesive. You have to, and that means two things. First, you have to increase the surface area by you know adding waves or pegs or something, and you also need to make them mechanically interlock with each other. So, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, let us see. Uh, NL12PT says, someone needs a local version control like Git. It's, it, I mean, that's a lot of work. The, the, the one thing, like, really, there, this only comes down to one thing. There's only one thing to do here to, to try to, to avoid this kind of confusion. Just make sure you, you have one canonical version of every project, and that's it. I, I see some people save, like, 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 ver like version one. Or like version one, uh, version two, version two final, version two final. Really, no, really, just don't like don't do that. Just overwrite the old files. Like just get rid. Like if you're that worried, I, like I think I use uh, I use Dropbox. So like that gives me a bit of a do over. Like that has some versioning built in. But the number of times I've had to roll back to a previous version, I could probably count it on my fingers. Like, like. Yes, that that will screw you over once in a while, but it's worth it. Like to make yeah. <laughs> Error reader says, "Oh man, Zach, you'll be so triggered by how people name their files, uh, name their word files." Yeah, there's just just don't be a don't be a data hoarder. Like 
you don't need backup versions. You haven't changed it that substantially. You're not going to, like, how, just, you can get over this the same way you get over real life hoarding. You just ask yourself, when was the last time I needed this? How often do I need, how often do I use this? How long do I have this? When was the last time I touch it? In other words, and then you ask yourself, okay, so if I had thrown this out, would this have affected my life in the slightest? Yeah. Yeah, just don't do that. On top of that, Word already has versioning built in, right? Here, here, here. So you can, so you can look all smart to all your, to all your coworkers. Uh, Word already has versioning built in. They made it super easy to enable. You just go to review and where is it? Where is it? Review. There's a, uh, Oh, where they, they, this, I hate this friggin, oh man, I hate this friggin, uh, the, the ribbon UI. Uh, tr it's something like track changes. What do they call it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's the big button right here that says track changes. That's it. You click review, you click track changes, and now it's versioned. Blah, blah, blah. Oop, that's not what I wanted. There you go. And you can even have it, you can even like set it so that it doesn't, see it says all markup. There you go, no markup. And now every time you save it, it now automatically does versioning. You can do all markup and view all of your, view every version together. Uh, yeah, it's super easy. They, they added one button that does it. Don't save. No, why did, I hit don't save. I, I very obviously hit don't save. Uh... Where were we? Okay, let's, uh, we had the two versions of, we had the two instances of Fusion. So let's close this down. Oh, I hit save. Oh, it's going to take forever. What did I, what have I done? I, that's why I have two versions. Okay, so I don't like all of these, uh, I don't like all these components being listed separately. It's going to make it hard to find what we're looking for. I called this a prototype, but we might end up renaming this because this whole project is basically a prototype. Let's get our Seedwino in there. Let's see. So this thing is going to be, so this thing's oriented wrong. That's all right. We're just going to turn it 90 degrees like so, because it is mounted on the bottom of the board. And let's drag it into place. So check this out. This module is really neat because uh, it's basically, it's an Arduino, but it is uh, castellated. So you can basically solder the entire thing directly onto the board, right? This solders straight onto the circuit board, lowest possible profile, as if it were a surface mount component. It's super cool. And this is going to allow us to keep a super low profile and also make this super easy for anyone to solder, even if they don't have a hot air rework station or a very fine soldering iron tip. The project we, we were making, like, granted, like, there, you're still going to have to put, um, there's still going to be a bit of challenge here for the, uh, the IO expanders. Pardon. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's still going to be a bit of trouble with the IO expanders, but um, look, I, you got you to make some, you got to make some concessions. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good working model uh, for us to build this off. I'm gonna hide. I want to. I want to group all of these up. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I see there are too many. There are too many items here Oof, on the side. So we're going to make a new component. Wait, what? Come on. What's going on? Did it freeze? Why did it freeze? All I did was right click. All I did was right click. Dropbox has a bit of version control. More of a, it's more goof proofing though. Uh, so we're going to create a component. We're going to call this one. We're going to call this one parts. And we're just going to select everything. Drag them all in here. It's taking a while. Nest them all in. Fusion does not like when you do anything remotely complicated. Starting to get fed up with its crap. All right, so let's let's build a let's build a board. Yeah, so let's build a board. We're gonna we're gonna try to make the most of the. Um, 
let's see, we actually want to up, now that I'm thinking about this, we want to update our external references because remember we made that board thicker? That was the whole reason we opened the second instance at all. Uh, yeah. So that's, hopefully this doesn't take too long to update changing one variable. So uh, yeah, we're, we're keeping this low profile, so we're going to want to make the thinnest case possible. But um, yeah, we're going to make this the thinnest case possible. Now, let's think. So we've got our, our mounting. Ah, what, what's going on with the mounting holes? Because the holes are... Oh, what just ha what happened? The, the, it didn't update the thickness of the holes? Yeah, it didn't update the thickness of the holes, so the holes aren't making it all the way through the board. What kind of crap is that? Oh my god. Damn it, Fusion, you had one job to do. Why did it, why did, why did it do that? <sighs> oh my god. All right, so looks like we already have, uh, looks like I put, a, I already made a mistake with this board. Huh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't make it. Nope, I didn't make a mistake with this board. The problem here is that this bottom row is not. Ah, uh, uh, yep, there we go. So, yeah, this bottom row, uh, we, should, we should have suppressed a few of these. Suppress enabled. Suppress this one. Yeah. Suppress this one. Yeah, the, 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 key, the keys are laid out differently in... Uh, the keys are laid out differently in the real thing. Yeah. There we go. This is just, this is just approximate. There we go. <laughs> okay, well we'll keep these here just just in case. Oh my god. Look at the, look at look at all the hell this is wrought on our on our, our timeline. I don't yeah, we don't need space bar space bars. Get out of here. We don't need a friggin' space bar. Also, it, to make to make keys longer, to make key, keys with keycaps longer than one unit, basically keycaps significantly larger than the key switch, you need to add a stabilizer, a little metal bar that keeps it from wobbling when you hit it on the side. And this is a problem. Yeah, this can be a problem with a uh, uh, low profile keys because they use a different sort of keycap. Basically, low profile keys need low profile stabilizers, and they are really hard to get a hold of. So I have decided to design this thing around that. Oh, instead of having to have a hard time, instead of giving people, instead of tasking people and myself with trying to get these low profile stabilizers, just cut them. Plus, screw the spacebar. Spacebar is stupid. You also spacebars also get a little weird on a split keyboard. Uh, okay, cool. So let's build our uh, let's build our enclosure. So now we have the two millimeters that we want. And uh, yeah, we want our enclosure. We have to remember to leave. Uh, we have to remember to leave some relief for all these, like relief for this. But all, yeah, let's think. Oh, so this guy, the Zhao, we should uh, move this because it's no. It's after we, after we changed our. Let's see. Yeah, after we changed our dimensions. This is no longer sitting on the board. I think that's good enough. Capture that position. Make it permanent. All right, let's do this. Space bars aren't stupid, says S23414. Space bars are the basis of all words. The sp... The sp... I'm not saying don't be able to type spaces. I'm saying don't make it a bar. It's not the space that's the problem. It's the bar. So let's think. How are we going to make our... Um, how are we going to make this thing? So we're going to want a piece on the top and a piece that goes around the side, I guess. Uh, I hope I didn't... I'm trying to keep this thing as small as possible. I'm trying to keep this thing as low profile as possible. Uh, a, sp a space pub. It says Nested Dreams. Yes, a space pub. Random Guy 3 says, you can also use unconnected keys as stabilizers. 
Ah, uh, yeah, but then it clicks twice when you press it. Yeah, then it then it then it clicks twice, and we don't. Uh, yeah, it just it it's not right. It's not right. I'm just so let's think. How how do we want to lay this thing out? Uh, I I might have been a little too aggressive about getting about like making the board dimensions as tight as possible, because there's nothing really to there's nothing really to do this on the bottom. Uh, yeah, I probably should have added a few millimeters at the bottom here to screw on to screw into. Uh, so let's take a look over here. I've, I've already taken all the components. I've already taken uh, a bunch of parts that we're going to need and put them over here just in case we have to measure stuff. And here's one of them. These are stabilized. These are, uh, uh, what are they called? Threaded inserts. But I seem to have bought rather, rather th tall threaded inserts. I think I might have made a mistake here. These things are six and a half millimeters tall. It's a little... It's a little too much. Uh, remember, we're trying to keep this thing as low profile as possible. So let's grab the let's grab my my collection of uh, my collection of threaded inserts. Let's see how far we can see what's available. Oh boy, where did I put them? Where are my where are my threaded inserts? Here we go. Let's see what else is available. I I I must have just bought some that are too they're too tall. I would I don't I mean they'll find use in a few, in another project. So we've got some we got some. Let's see these ones are M3. They're a half millimeter. So let's see these ones are are quite are quite short. Overall length of about three millimeters. So these are really short. But that doesn't give it a lot to bite into the plastic with, so they might just pull. They might just pull out. Clickety clackety. Random guy three says, uh, "True, I always use linear switches. Oh, that could be interesting. Use like even if the board itself is is clicky, you just use linear switches as stabilizers." So this one. So this is kind of the middle ground. Although I don't think I actually have enough of these things for the board. See, most most of the time you only need four uh, screws to hold the circuit board down, but but we need eight because uh, remember we got that breakable bit in the middle, which means the board is going to flex heavily. So we have to give it extra support. So it always feels rock solid. So I think this is the one I should have got. This one's kind of in the middle. I think it's, yep. This is just under four millimeters tall. So we're going to grab a bunch more of these, but this is our boy. This is, this is what we, this is the one we want to design around. So we've got uh, four millimeters. And hopefully that's, yeah, four millimeters plus a bit for the base. So the thing's gonna be six millimeters thick on the bottom. Is that gonna be too much? I really wanna keep this thing as low profile as possible. And I, you know, I mean, as low as, as low as we can go. So I'm thinking the base maybe six or eight. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, IB Goge says, uh, do you, if you need screws, could you print stud supports? So, uh, I think I think you mean bosses, basically like a cylinder with a hole in it. I don't want for, for this particular project. I'm trying to avoid uh, having the user having the user uh, drive screws directly into plastic because uh, I expect this. Uh, you know, like. I expect this thing to be modded a bit. I expect people to be opening and closing this a bit to, you know, get access to various parts. So to that end, I, uh, like that, that's the, that's the main problem with, uh, drilling, with screwing stuff directly into, into a, into a hole in plastic is it will eventually like every time you overdrive it a bit, it strips the, 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 the bit, it strips the hole out. So for anything that you're going to open and close often, you really don't want, you really want to use metal inserts. Boop. There we go. Uh, Jeff Hardy 56665 says removable pop rivets. Well, then everyone who builds this thing for themselves is going to have to have a rivet gun. Can't do that. This is also one of the, uh, it's also one of the scoring guides on our contest or hello. We're doing our hello wearables contest in a few weeks where uh, I'm challenging the community to build wearable projects. And the winner is going to win a sick 3d printer and a spot in an episode. And you will get a lot of bonus points if you can make your project, if you can make it able, make people be able to build your project using nothing but a 3D printer. 
and things that people with a 3D printer are likely to have. So yeah, let's uh, let's get let's get building here. So I'm thinking we will make a. How are we gonna How are we gonna design this? We're gonna have a tray on the bot. So we're gonna have like a tray on the bottom to keep it from shorting. Probably a little like some little bits. Oh, I should probably be. I should probably get this in view. So I'll have a tray on the bottom. Uh, we'll have an, another piece that goes on top that attaches here. Like problem is that part's not gonna be able to attach here. It's going to be a little weird. So we're going to have a piece that goes around and down. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to need something to some sort of overlay or protector piece. I think we're, yeah, I think we'll do like a little bit of a tray. We'll do a, tra a little bit of a tray action. Uh, NL 12 PT says, what do you have plain? I'm guessing you meant planned for, uh, let's see. S, S, or, all right, S2's asking for the Halloween project. Does the prize ship outside the U.S.? No, uh, they, you can't. So if you win, if you're outside the U.S. and you win the contest, instead of winning the 3D printer, you will instead win the same amount of store credit to buy stuff that can be exported, such as, uh, I mean, other Lulzbot printers. Uh, yeah, so I think you'll end up getting around just under 1,500 U.S. dollars. Uh, yeah, you get a different printer or some store credit. Yeah, part of fun. Uh, Jeff Hardy says, no, there are these pop rivets that are plastic. It's a two part. Oh, you're talking about per, no, you n no, absolutely never, never make anything permanently, like permanently connected. If, you if you're making 3D printing, you're implicitly saying the type of people who are gonna build this thing are hackers. And you never serve hackers something that permanently snaps together. <laughs> That's, Oh, no way. I mean, it's if this were a consumer product, I think you're on the right. If this were a consumer product, yeah, get rid of the fasteners, just snap it together. But uh, yeah, making something that works, making something that goes designed for hackers, uh, you absolutely have to make it modifiable. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's get let's get building. Take, we're getting we're, we're getting a little we're getting a little too distracted. So yeah, let's this and uh let's get our let's get our tray going our tray thing i think we should start there and uh and move on so we're gonna make a sketch uh where do we want to where do i want to do this how do we want to do the sketch just thinking here mm. let's just do we'll do this on the plane i like to I, as much as i can make sketches in the plane X, Y, there we go. Cool, cool. Ah, uh, this. <laughs> uh, Nessa Dream says, Zach, what about larger decorative pieces that bad to, that had to be split for printing? Uh, I mean, if you have to split them up for printing, then you're gonna, uh, you know, then, I mean, you usually those, those are gonna be glued. So you're, you're gonna want to put pegs in, uh, yeah. You're gonna want to put like pegs and stuff in there to 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 add some reinforcement. So let's let's do this. So we need to project. Uh, let's. So here here we go. We're gonna we're gonna start by projecting the outline of the board. At least the pieces of outline. Let's make these. Uh, we're gonna make these construction lines because. We're gonna be, uh, cause we're not, we're not gonna be using them for, uh, we're not gonna be like extruding them or anything. I'm gonna hide our uh, printer for now. So let's, oh, so we need to make a rectangle. Basically like uh, we have the corner, the corners have been knocked off here, but we don't, um, so we knock the corners off uh, to make it more like, to make it more likely to fit in the board, but uh, we, or to make it more likely to fit in the print, but we're, um, we don't want to we don't want to bring that into our own ge geometry because that would you know that would reverse the reason we did it in the first place. So uh, we're projecting that. So now let's add in some collinear constraints. Where's a collinear constraint? Ah, man, I'm so tired. I'm actually less tired now than I was. I've been. The reason the next episode's been taking, I, I, I know the, I know the next episode is taking forever to come out, but I was kind of, I was kind of burned out and I was convinced to, I was convinced to, to, to prematurely halt the death march. So I've slowed my, uh, 
I've slowed my schedule down. Slowed my schedule to something less aggressive. I put some gaffer tape in here to keep this this wire from getting pulled down, but it's not it's not helping. There we go. Uh, yeah, I slowed my schedule down to something less aggressive, so I could like recover a bit, and that is. My, that is why the next episode is taking so long to come out. I, I don't like... <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable about it. I know that people are, get, are losing their patience. I know that people are forgetting about the channel, but... There are, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got limits here. Uh, do we want to do this? Let's, let's give ourselves a half millimeter of offset. Yeah. I... Yeah. So my most sincere apologies for taking so long to come out with the next episode. How thick do we want the walls for this to be? I'm thinking around two millimeters. I think that's about right. So we're going to have 2.5. There we go. We're going to we'll be able to knock the, knock the corners off here. Well, yeah. So let's see. So we're also going to project our holes because we're going to need these to to place our bosses. Um, I'm not going. Yeah, I'm not going to make these construction lines. Oh, actually, we shouldn't be picking those. We should be picking the circle because if we ever fix that problem and get these holes to go all the way down through the entire circuit board, then we'll no longer have anything to project. We'll have to manually select all this stuff over again. Um. Uh, sorry for flopping it around. I seem to have a very hard time controlling my, my space mouse today. Don't you hate when that happens? Yeah, so let's project these. Uh, we're probably going to use them... Uh, in addition to lining up our holes for the, the threaded inserts, we're probably also going to have some holes to drill out. You notice that here uh, we have an extra set of holes, right? We've got a redundant set here and here. This but these buttons shouldn't be here, by the way. Don't worry about those. Basically, I don't know uh, how. I I don't know if we'll be able to put screws here uh, without the keycap colliding with them. So I added a second one just in case. This one's further from the corner, so it's not going to do as good a job of reinforcing. But um, I'm not I'm not sure this is going to get in the way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. We've got all that. We've got all those projected. So we're just doing the bottom here. So let's see. We 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 have to we have to be careful to leave um, careful to leave these. Uh, XLO etc. says. The displays on the right half for SSD 1306s, right? I always thought you could only have two because you only have two I squared C addresses to pick from. You are correct. Uh, we are going to either, depending on what, hopefully we can use the, the RP2040 version of the Zhao, and we're, we're just going to configure one of its PLUs or whatever uh, to add another I squared C bus to it. Uh, if we don't have access to another I squared C bus, we'll just bit bang. So, yes. X, oh, it says X loop X. Uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, yes, you are correct. You only have two on the same bus. That, that's why we're using two buses. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to also project... Wait, what happened? Why did we leave the sketch? Oh, we should probably save anyways. Thanks for the reminder. Let's see? It's going to take a few seconds. Yeah, so let's go back to projecting. So we're going to want to lay out the areas where we can. So let's see here. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm just. So what I'm thinking here is if we want to. Is if we want to like project the the outlines of all the keycaps so that we can get like um ah uh, how do you say it? like basically like put support in between the keys i think we should do that because that's going to make it feel really solid and i like things that feel solid so let's let's do that um so yeah we're going to project 
just thinking. So what what is this? Is this is this a is this an edge? All right. So we're going to set up a selection filter, which I don't remember where to do. But we're going to set up a selection filter to only select edges, which will make it a lot easier to to do this. Are these still going to be visible? Uh, so let's, yeah. Hmm. Eh. Another thing we could do is, um, let's see. No, another thing we could do is hide all of the parts. Oh, there's no silk screen on top to show. All right. So I was going to say, like, we just use the silk screen and just fix that geometry, but we don't, we can't do that because, because there is no silk screen for that. So we are going to have to do it this way. So let's hide the board. Uh, let's set up our selection filter. How do I do that? Uh, Tools, is that it? Tools, yep, there we go. Uh, selection filters. So we're going to deselect all and we're just going to pick edges. So now we can hit P for project, dial M for monkey, and now we can only, now we're, now we're going to be able to only select edges. We don't need to pick all of them to make this happen. We just need to pick some that we just need to pick one that kind of like exemplifies each uh, each key. Technically, we could get we could get away with doing this with um, with just the pegs, you know, with the the indexing pegs here. But I think this is easier. <sighs> Avish four Y says, any chance for Pro Micro footprint support? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there just isn't enough room on the bottom of the board, and I, I don't see any for, I don't, I don't know too many people who benefit from that. I mean, I do know, like the the only people who benefit from that are people who already have a pile of pro of uh, Arduino micros lying around. Because if you're buying them, if you're buying the microcontroller for the project, then it doesn't matter what it is as long as as long as you can buy it. And uh, I've I've got a I've re I've got a purchase commitment. I've been talking to uh, Seed Studio about a purchase commitment on the Zhao products, so we're not going to we're not going to go overboard here. We're going to select a few, and uh, then we're going to uh, project again because we have too many of these. <laughs> uh, let's see. Actually, hang on a second. Hang on a second. We're going about this all wrong. We're going about this all wrong. Yep, we're, we're, I made a, I made a, I made a boo boo. We made, we made a, we made, we made a boo boo here. Here's why. We're just gonna project one of them, and then we're just making a, we're gonna make a rectangular pattern because that would be much easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> yep. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a rectangular pattern here. So we're gonna project this, and we're also going to project the irregularly spaced ones on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to we're gonna have to deal with those. Yeah, fortunately, we're gonna. Yep, yeah, the time the time has come. Our laziness uh, our laziness is is no longer gonna fly. Let's see. So we're gonna. Go back to our. We're gonna, we're gonna let's let's wipe our selection filters. All right. So, unhide our board. I want to move these buttons and keycaps back where where they are supposed to go. Move. There we go. Move components plus this component. No, what? Why? Why? Why is it upside down? Uh, yeah, in order to do this properly, we're going to have to actually place these where they're supposed to go. So, uh, yep. The end of our laziness is nigh. There we go. Oh, man, that looks really confusing. <laughs> Wait, 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 what? Select that? Did I select the wrong one? That's how I did. I did preface that by saying this was confusing. Let's 
see. This doesn't need to be exactly exact. We just want to make it roughly, roughly rough. <laughs> I think we might need to add more. I think we, I think we need more switches. I deleted, yeah, I deleted too many. I deleted too many before. Well, let's save this before we really screw something up. And let's go back where we created the rectangular pattern and just reselect. Let's just un unsuppress uh, a cup, unsuppress another switch. Boop. Yep. Oh, there we go. Boop. And now we have more switches to play around with. Wee. Yeah, I thought we'd be able to get away with this, but we didn't. So let's uh, get back to moving. We're going to move these. I know this is terrifically boring. <laughs> this is terrifically boring, I know, but we're only going to have to do this a single time. Future, uh, future episodes, we are going to be able to just use the geometry we made today and get right to get right to printing. This stuff, this type of thing is this type of thing is important. Uh, because when you're building one thing that has to fit into another thing, the part you have to nail, the part that you've no you've no mercy on, is how they is how they interact, right? It's how they connect together. So I want to make sure that because we're basing, yeah, because we're basing the uh, the. I guess I could have like I could have gone back and added these models, like tied these models into Eagle, but I don't I don't want to do that. It's 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 a better use of my time just to just to do this. All right, I should be using my space mouse here. All right, so let's move these guys around. If you have any, if you have any, any, I know I know this is not the most exciting. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to talk about while I am moving this around, then uh, please say it in chat. Otherwise, I have to ad lib and vamp. Yeah, otherwise I have to I have to keep on vamping and uh, that is hard when I'm trying to uh, make a model. Let's grab these. Oh, I have a little button on the side of the space mouse that's I put I put the space mouse in between my two halves of my keyboard. So it's kind of hard to get at that. But that little side button. There we go. Yeah, that, that little that little side button uh, lets me snap directly to a view. Oh, looks like looks like we pulled a couple of these out of the board. Uh, that's what I get. Close enough. Yeah, how did these how did these get pulled? Why what why did the Z get changed? I didn't like I didn't even touch the Z. Oh my god. Let's save these before I screw something else up. Uh, Fusion of course automatically gives you a Fusion, uh, Fusion already gives you a version, a versioning system. So even even less to even less to worry about. I want the front view. Two point five is that going to be enough? Two point two five. That's close enough. Oh geez, I thought what, shouldn't shouldn't have been move. So this has to go up as well, uh, 0.75, be good enough. All right, this one needs to go down a little. Minus 0.25, all right. Hopefully these aren't moving in other directions as well. How did, what, I, how did this even happen? Oh, Fusion, you so crazy. Get these in as well. Minus four point five works for me. Let's capture position. Let's save. All righty. I could. I, I could. It's true. Avish points out that I could have used point to point to make it more accurate. You're completely correct. It is strictly. It was strictly worse not to use point to point. It. Uh, yep. It was it was a that was a strictly wrong decision. Should have used point to point. Totally right. Oh, we got we got one more. We missed one. 
No escape. Uh, well, what point? Yeah, we're going to want... Uh, at this point, I don't think it's necessary. Let's go point 0.5. Point 0.5. There we go. There we go. Close enough. All right. So let's get back to uh, let's get back to working on our our sketch here. I'm rearranging this. I'm rearranging the capture position so that I can use the new positions to project. So I can, or so I can project the new positions in my uh, in my sketch. Let's hide the board. We don't we don't need the we don't need to see the board. Wait, why did this one get why why are they out of why are they out of the grid now? Why are we why were we moving these on multiple axes? What the hell is going on here? Is that did that come out of that come out of here? Is that is that part of the board? Y is minus 76, Y is minus 76, minus 76, and over here, minus 76, minus 76. Yeah, what, what happened? Why, why are these not lining up now? That's, what, uh, <laughs> I'm so confused. I don't know why, I don't know why we're having so much trouble with this. M for move. Uh, oh, is it because we're picking a, a start point that's at an angle? I think that I think that might be it. I think I think it's I think we're picking uh, I think we're, we're picking something at an angle. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're using a, an angled coordinate system. Man, I just can't catch a break. Minus 0.5, is that good? No, 2.5? <sighs> uh, all right, so if we're gonna do point to point, um, what are points gonna be? What do we, what do we have here? Is this, is this, did this do the job? Is this, is this good enough? I probably should have made one and then just copied it on a, like just did another, um, <sighs> Let's see. Well, hopefully, all we have to do is move these two. I, I was going to say, like, we probably should have just copied one of these. and Because these are on a different spacing. They're on 1.5 unit spacing or 1.5 times 19 instead of 19 millimeter spacing. But um, I sh should have just, just mirrored them. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. So let's capture the position. Uh, let's move ahead. Close enough. Okay, so we have projected one of these. Uh, right, now we're going to project one of these. I know this is... Oh, man. Fusion always ends up putting up such a fight when we're, when we're doing streams. Let's go body faces. Yeah, because that will be... Let's hide the sketch. Or let's hide the board. Because that will make life a bit easier. Okay, so... We don't want, actually, we don't want this one. Deselect, please. Oh. Uh, we want to project this. That's exactly the one we want. And then this has an even spacing. Yep. So we want to project that. And uh, we also want to project the, the Seeduino. We want to project the, the, the Seeduino footprint as well. And also, we want to separately project the USB, uh, the, yeah, the USB-C, because that, it's a, a different height off the board. All right, so we've got a bit of, so we've got some, we've got some projections down. Let's see, another, let's see, we also, we also care about these guys. We also care about this. I'm, I'm going to project, I'm going to project the headers. 
we're, we're basically we don't we don't want to we want to avoid colliding with with stuff if we can avoid it. The thicker the board, thick. The thicker the board is, the more reinfor uh, the more sturdy it'll feel. But the um, the more chance we have of colliding with something. So let's be uh, be more careful. Okie dokie. So yeah, let's. Let's hide all this. We also want to hide our canvases. We don't need those right now. Actually, uh, let's, let's keep our body here. Okay, so now that we've, now that we've done this projection, uh, we can use a rectangular pattern. Where, yeah, here we go. Use a rectangular pattern to, uh, propagate, the, uh, to propagate these. I actually, we're gonna, we, are we gonna offset? Do we, need, do we need to do any offsetting? I don't think so. I think we should just be able to, Let's do a little bit of an offset just to just to be sh just to be careful. Let's see, one millimeter, one millimeter, right? Yeah, just to be on the safe side. Yeah, one millimeter. Let's offset again, minus one millimeter this time. And uh, yeah, let's let's copy this. Let's copy this through. So we've got rectangular pattern the lines we just created. So we're going to use again spacing because we already know what our spacing is. It's 19 millimeters, 19 millimeters. Or I guess in this case it's going to be minus 19. Yep. Let's fill her up. No. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. <laughs> no, I accidentally, I was, I was dragging the, yeah, there we go. I was dragging the distance selector instead of the numerical selector. There we are. So we're going to enable suppression so we can turn off the ones that are off grid. Yeah. Shouldn't at least some of these line up I'm a little... I'm more than a little confused here. All right. And then uh, this one here, we can do the same thing, back to a rectangular pattern. Except this is on a 1.5. Uh, let's see, again, we're on, we want spacing, and this is on a 1.5 unit. So it's real simple, 19 times 1.5. There we go. Oh, I did it again. 19 times 1.5. There we go. And now uh, we'll be able to reinforce this with the plate on the bottom. Cool, cool, cool. Think here. Okay, so we got we got that done. We want to leave plenty of room around uh, we want to leave plenty of room around the rest of this. So let's let's see. I'm gonna turn where's Let's see. Why 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 am I why am I not? Oh, let's turn our canvases back on, so that we can see our silk screen, because that's going to show us where the components are. So we've got parts here. Let's take a look back at our print. By the way, it looks like it's going well. Very nice. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's think, how do we want to do this? What are, let's, so let's see. We're going to, okay. So I'm, 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 think, I'm thinking out loud here. Cause basically the question is what parts do, what, what, what points on this is it safe to make the bottom of the enclosure touch the board? And what has to have a, what has to have a gap? Um, yeah, it's 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 important not to get dragged into the weeds here, cause uh, yeah, it's important not to get dragged into the weeds here, cause you can get really you can end up putting way too much detail in here. So uh, let's see, the other things that need reinforcement are the buttons under the OLED. We don't want the board to flex, right? We don't want the board to flex with the uh, when we press the OLED. So that's going to be really easy. We just you know make draw a rectangle and fix it uh, around under the switches. It's not going to work here. So we actually do need to do a, a fairly decent job of lining up the uh, the seat we know. <laughs> well, so let's 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 take the uh, let's take the easy. 
take the easy route first. First, uh, we're going to draw a rectangle. We're just going to be cut. So, like, there's no geometry uh, to hook this. There's, there's no geometry to, like, kind of hook this onto uh, to, uh, to project and uh, reference this against, I should say. So, we're just going to draw it. Let's see, we're going to draw it. We should probably flip back over so that we can select it more easily. Okay, so here we have another problem. Uh, we've got a chip in the way here. Yeah. Hmm. We got a, yeah, we got, our, we got a chip in the way. I think, I wonder if it's easier instead to draw, in this case, places we don't want the, uh, Places we don't want it. Mm. Yeah, I want to make sure there's something solid that we can push down on. I wonder where the circuit boards are, too. I'd hope they would show up by now. I'm kind of kind of disappointed they haven't. We turn on... Yeah, wireframe is enabled. I wish there was some way to look at the top and bottom at the same time. I bet I bet we could just change the uh, opa opacity or something. Okay, so this one we can't just put uh, support underneath. Hmm... All right, I think we're going about this the wrong way. Why is it not letting me select this? Did I did, did our selection filter get switched back on? That's weird. When did that happen? So let's delete this. I think instead we should pick places that we don't want uh, that we don't want anything to be supported on. Mm, yeah, I, I'm going up. One of the things I'm trying to get better at on uh, with streaming is to decide when it's time to shut up and uh, decide when it's time to be quiet and uh, focus entirely on the work. So I think we might end up I might end up going into the tank a little bit. I'm, I'm yeah. I still I I'm just I, I I'm, uh, I'm still just I'm used to YouTube where like people are just they've got their finger just on the skip button they're just ready to jump as soon as it becomes even remote like not not even boring like if they even think for a second they just but uh, i think this is a good time as any to like kind of go into the tank hmm. meh i think it could be meh. let's see so we've got stuff I'm gonna go back to Eagle. Ah, no, wait. Ah, we have to... I'm gonna go back to Eagle, and uh, we're gonna switch back from. Actually, I'm going to save this. We're gonna call Slayer Selection Top because it blew out all my presets when I switched versions. So, we've got our on our bottom. All right. So on the bottom, uh, let's rip this up. So we've got uh, resistors. Uh, we've got the Zhao. We got resistors around it. We don't want to put anything there. We don't want to put anything under the wobbly bits. Let's, uh, let's put this back on. The wobbly bits, we wanna, don't wanna have anything under it. And around here, we don't want anything. So let's go back to normal. Yeah, I don't, want, I don't want the board to feel wobbly. Although I don't, actually, I'm not sure this is gonna be a problem, except around here, we're gonna want we're gonna to want to have like a rail, maybe like a rail on the side, and we're just gonna stop it near the near the Zhao. Yeah, I think that's the way to go about this. Yeah, we have to be careful because um, not all this, not all of the silk made it. So let's, all right. So let's get this. Uh, let's get this underway. We're gonna project one of these. I want that rail. Okay. We're going to draw a rectangle to give ourselves a lot of clearance around this around this chip. Cuz remember, it's not just the silk screen, not the, it's not just the uh the the rectangle, the chip that um it's not just the it's way oh man, it's hard to hard to flip back and forth here. Uh it's not just the chip we have to add relief to. Remember we also have pins coming off of it, and those also need some relief. I'm going to rip up the top copper as well so we can take a look at it. 
So it looks like we only have the one capacitor, and that capacitor goes almost all the way to the to to the um, the, the route. So it looks like we're okay here. Oh. This is too aggressive, though. We don't need this much clearance. This should be all right. And uh, let's see, these guys here, let's just fix them because they are arbitrary. Let's see. Sandyman13 says, you plan on covering OLEDs with acrylic or something for protection? That's a good question. Um, it's a good question. Probably not because it's not practical for home gamers to fabricate it. I might, maybe we could do like polycarbonate sheet because you can cut it with, with scissors. But yeah, the, the, whole, the whole idea here is like, I want to sell this as a kit and you can 3D print the, uh, you know, you can 3D print the pieces yourself. So I have to make sure that we limit the number of non-3D printed pieces. Basically, we're, we already have to have a board custom made. So I don't want you to have to also go to Palalu or whatever and have them laser cut something. So maybe we'll put a little, uh, also, like, yeah, maybe we'll put like a little bit like of a polycarbonate sheet, something, something like that. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's draw a rail out to here. Out to here. And uh, from here, all the way over uh, to here. Actually, we should probably, pro oh, we should project this too. And just link that together, there we go. Because uh, we got to figure out what we're doing on the other side. Okay, so let's see. Is there anything we're forgetting in the corner? Nope, the corner's completely clear. The corner's completely clear. So let's also project this and this. Mm-hmm. Let's unfix this. Uh, I think we're going to have to unfix more. Now let's unfix these. And this guy, we're just going to make it collinear with this. There we go. And let's fix these up. All right, so that's going to give us a, a cutout over here and make sure that we don't, uh, we don't whack into anything. All right, so we have a resistor over here. So we want to make sure that we don't encroach on its territory. And we also, let's see, these here, uh, this is a header. And I'm going to leave, so we're going to leave a cutout in case you uh, soldered in the header. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, we might, you know what, I'm going to model this in, but we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to forget about it. Basically, we're going to leave the cutout there to make a variant of this if you want the header to be in place. Yeah. So, we're going to make a rectangle. From here, uh, let's see, from here to here. And then we want to have it pass through here. Then we'll just offset this to give ourselves a nice, generous keep out zone. There we go. All right, where exactly is resistor for? Let's take a let's take another look here. I yeah, the 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 reason why we're not just carrying the copper, like the reason why I didn't just add the copper here is because it seemed to slow fusion down a lot when we added the copper to our model. All right, so yeah, so this is directly under R four on this side, so this isn't even. This isn't even necessary. Isn't even necessary. So we're not gonna from here and here. Okay. All uh, right. So we. So let's see. R one, two, and three are next to their labels. That. Yep. There we go. So we should be able to simply draw a couple lines here. Let's see. We're gonna. Off, I'm going to turn off the chain selection and offset this. 
let's call it two millimeters for now. Give ourselves some more, uh, some more keep out here. Basically, I want this to have as much, I want, I want us to be able to have as much of this bottom touching the board as possible with, while still reducing our chances of overlapping a component. That's, that's kind of the worst case scenario, is if we like crash into a component. So there's no components on the bottom here, uh, although we do have this guy here. Let's see how C17 and C22 are oriented. I wonder if, I wonder if uh, the Space Mouse would work in the Eagle that's in Fusion 360. I wonder if, I doubt it, because it's the same person. It's the same person uh, writing all of it. Okay, so C22 is off the side. And so is, yeah, C22 is under its label, and C7 is over its label. I realized I made a mistake here when I sent out to have my board made. Oh man, I made a very, made a very subtle mistake. I didn't renumber my parts. Because uh, the parts aren't going to be in consecutive numbers, and they aren't going to be numbered in any sensible order. Because, uh, I, I, you know, you, you, add, you spawn a bunch of parts, move things around, add stuff, move things around the page... So yeah, the, the, the numbers are going to make no sense. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to renumber them before we make the final, the final version. Ah, <sighs> part of the fun. Zekeepa is ranting about how music nerds are screwing up the vacuum tube market. Because <laughs> they make it sound warmer. It's the imperfections. They look cool. They they make your they make your your hi-fi look like an old tiny jukebox. Like, is that n why why are people not like why are are nerds not allowed to say that they just like stuff? Why does everything have to be rationalized? Oh, it's C seventeen, so we have to leave. Let's call it let's call this two point five. Yeah, why does everything always have to be rationalized? Can you, can't you just say like I just like it? They make it look cool. They, they remind me of an old-timey jukebox, and that makes me smile. Like, no, you have to, you have to rationalize it. What, what, I, I came up with, an, I came up with, like, a slightly offensive name for this last time. What did I, what did I call it? Oh, it's wife logic. Because it's the type of logic you used to convince your wife that it was worth buying. It's, it's how nerds with cognitive dissonance uh, uh, feel, feel better about themselves. Yeah, close enough. Let's see. Luxuriant Squish says, I haven't used Fusion 360's PCB designer yet. I used Dip Trace. Oh, that's that's the one I keep forgetting about. That's the professional quality EDA suite that everyone in the industry uses that I completely forget about. Dip Trace. Um, can't, yes. Um, Eagle, well, I know Eagle has a circuit simulator. It has a version of Spice built in. I don't, I'm not, I don't know very much about the version in Fusion 360, but I would assume that since they've like coalesced the products together, that you can, uh, that you can simulate it. That said, I use, I, I make almost, uh, I make, everything I make is a digital circuit and it has logic in it. So I just don't get a lot of value from a circuit simulator. Um, yeah, just straight up. I don't, I don't get a lot of value from a circuit simulator. So I just, I, I've never really developed the use uh, VFDs do look cool, and they, yeah, v VFDs have one advantage in terms of being able to use them in hobby projects over vacuum tubes, and that is that there are sensible reasons to still use VFDs. Like, VFDs are outdated, but they still have uses where they, where they're just strictly better than an LCD or another type of, uh, of display, whereas a vacuum tube is just, it's just for, it's just for cool factor. It's just for fun. It's, 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 it's swag only. Let's see, seven. Yeah, there we go. The lights just flicker or was that just me? Ah, let's see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, is there anything else that needs, anything else here that needs relief? I can't get no relief. Dun, 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 dun. Outside in the cold distance. Oh, oh, of course. Of course. We've got our uh, headers here. Yeah, we got our headers in case somebody gets second thoughts after splitting their board apart and wants to unsplit their board apart. Yep, the headphone jacks are on top. Um, yes, there's a reason I put the USB case. Um, yeah, I had. 
There's a reason I put the USB on the bottom, but I put the headphone jacks to connect the two halves on the top. And that is because a, um, that is because I pulled, so I went through the workshop grabbing every, uh, every headphone jack I could find and every USB-C cable I could find. And the average headphone cable is slim, is, is, th is thicker at the connector than the average USB-C. So yeah, it helps keep the profile down. But look, it's, this is a prototype. Part of the prototyping process is, is making stupids. It's figuring out, figuring out the best way to do stuff. All right, so let's, again, we're gonna make ourselves a rectangle. I wanna actually, th this thing should really be construction. And we're gonna offset. We're gonna offset this. There we go. Let's call it two millimeters. And uh, just to make life a little easier, we'll just continue this down to the wall. All these holes around the edges are stitching vias. They make sure that the uh, top and bottom ground planes are connected as uh, thoroughly as possible. They're not necessary in a board like this at all. I just want to make that clear. No, no signal on this board no no signal on this board like is that sensitive that we have to worry about stitching our ground planes but it it's a, it's kind of like a mark of professionalism it shows attention to detail and looking looking good is um looking good is is very important to me because i'm insecure let's see and we're gonna do the same thing uh yeah mm. Let's see, so these guys here, let's see, yeah, so these, these dudes here, we, um, yeah, we want to leave, we want to leave a, a, a hole around there. I think for, for now we're not going to like worry too much about dimensions and constraints, because again, this is just a prototype. So it's, it's really just a sanity check. I wish I had the board. One thing we could do is 3D print a model of the board. Um, yeah, we could 3D print a model of the board and actually like shove headers and keycaps in it. Which could, act, now that I'm thinking about it, it could be pretty, pretty sick actually. So let's see. We might do that. Uh, probably want to run that off on the Prusa though, because a long, thin part like that is likely to break as we try to peel it off a glass plate. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the reason the Hi-Fi nerds like vacuum tubes, or the reason they claim, is because they they just... They, they, mess, they mess with the signal a bit in... A, they mess with the signal a bit in a way that just adds character. So, yeah, the, hu the human ear is very... All right, so basically your brain knows what things are supposed to sound like. And it uses the difference between what it thinks they're supposed to sound like and what's what it actually hears to make guesses about your environment. That's why, like, thing That's why, like, it can feel weird when you step into a room with, like, if you step into like a really messy room, a room with a lot of furniture and clothes in it, and you, you start, you hear less echo. It feels weird, and that's because you're used to like hearing the sound of your own footsteps echoing, and it compares it. So when you're, basically when you're editing in a studio, so like if I'm editing an episode, right, I want as little of that as possible. I want the, what I hear to sound as much like the waveform, you know, as much of what's going on in the computer as possible. It's called a flat response curve. And that is what you want for mastering sound, but if you're listening, you actually don't want that flat sound. It's ba it basically sounds like you're in that muffled room. There are no echoes. There's no, there's no cor like corrupt. There's no like corruption as you like with different frequencies. I don't know the I don't know, I don't know that much about this about about the hi-fi stuff. Basically, though, you want to add in some schmoo. You you want to corrupt the sound a little bit to make it more comfortable to listen to and to give it a bit more character. And on top of that, the way that character is brought in also affects the quality of the... It also affects like what aspects of the audio are brought up. For instance, um, if it's very echoey, uh, treble is emphasized and bass is de-emphasized. So 
high pitch so a high, high pitch sounds electric guitars can actually start to sound shrill and uh but like mid-range sounds like spoken word can sound more well-rounded and pleasant and uh basically the, the hi-fi nerds add in vacuum tubes kind of crap up the sound a little bit and give it a sort of well-rounded sound. Now, how much this actually plays out, especially when compared to things like equalizer settings, uh, any, the, any effects that your receiver adds in, uh, characters of your of your your monitors or your speakers, I'm 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 skeptical. But at the end of the day, the end of the day, even though they don't really like to admit it. Hi-Fi is a lot like mechanical keyboards in that the 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 form and the self-expression and the feel matters as much as the actual outcome. So yeah, and I really like I I, I love a I love I don't I don't really listen to a lot of music, but I think a top of the line like looking at a top of the line Hi-Fi system is just really cool. Like you got vacuum tubes, you got like like speed like you got speakers like some of them are big and solid for the and some of them are like skeletonized with like tef, like kevlar uh like kevlar cones showing yep you got like graphic equalizers dancing yeah i think it's i think it's, I think it's a pretty cool hobby it's not one i'll ever indulge in because i just don't listen to a lot of music so let's see we also let's see we just want uh no we don't want to project we want to offset so let's just offset this, this, and this by two millimeters uh, to give us a little more room uh, to mount the mount the Zhao, the Zhao. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 especially like I don't know something really bothers me about like audio, like audio files in particular. It, talking about like what's best. Like I get mechanical keyboards too, in a sense. You can definitely say that one thing is a. You can definitely say that one thing does the same thing as another, but better, or cheaper, or more efficiently, or something. But I mean, what's good and what's bad depends so strongly on the preferences of the uh, of the, the the depends so strongly on the preferences of the the listener. And like I don't know, I, I had a I had a client who. I had a client who ha who's like a hi-fi, it's like a hi-fi nerd, and uh, he, his, his, his speakers were like, his speakers were like particle board boxes with like, sem like semi-crappy drivers transplanted into it, connected to like $8,000 of, 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 of audio equipment, because his, because he used to listen with his dad, who, he used to listen with his dad, who would, um, who uh, he was like building out a system over time. He was waiting for like the perfect deal to come along on speakers. It never happened, so it always had that that character. I thought that was very cute. It's just so personal. It's hard to say what's better or worse. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got let's see, we've got this stuff coming in. We should have just about everything we need to start modeling. Uh, one other thing we want here though is to add in proper amount of relief. Uh, or proper sized holes for the here we go for the threaded inserts is this it yeah this is what we care about so let's see we want to make it slightly uh, very like just uh, basically the same size as the bottom of it so it's around five it says 5.1 so we'll just call this nominal five millimeters so let's just uh Let's see. Easiest way to do this is just five millimeters. Copy, paste. Hmm. No, wait. Undo, redo. All right. Easiest way to do this is just make a rectangular pattern. Uh, copy it five times. Or wait, we need we need more than that. We need uh, we need at least eight, maybe even maybe even more. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be eight plus one two. So we got we gotta have ten in total. So we're just gonna do ten, and then we're gonna delete the pattern. And now we just set these uh, concentric. 
then we don't have to type out dimensions over and over again. Yeah, we don't have any of that crap. Uh, let's save. Let's see. Concentric. Where's our concentric constraint? Yep, there we go. It didn't copy the dimensions, but that's that's fine. Why why is why isn't this working? Or eesh. Oh, it's because I'm selecting the center point instead of the circle. Alright. We didn't copy the dimensions, but we can always add those later. Again, or we've we've spent a little too much time getting uh getting into the weeds. So we're gonna try to save a little. There we go. Here. I think we're I think we're we're a day late and a circle short. Nope. Actually, no, we're not. Uh add that concentric constraint here. Sketch arc. There we go. And here. No, here. There. Why does it even let me select something that it failed to solve? What? Why does it even let you select the midpoint? That's stupid. There we go. All right, let's save. Okay. There we go. Nice. Gold-plated cables. Oh no, the audiophile cables. No one, no one I know who actually cares about. No one I know who actually cares about sound. Like buys the super fancy audiophile cables. Like you'll get fancy cables because you want everything to look braided and uh, you want everything to have a really thick shield on it. But no, nobody who buys that crap. I don't. I don't know anyone who buys that crap. All right, let's. Let's see. Mm. Hang on a second. Something weird. There's something weird going on here. Something weird, and it don't look good. Yeah, this this right here is set up wrong. Something strange in the neighborhood. Yeah, this should surround the chip. And then we'll put this here. I am hearing scratching at the door. I suspect it's some kind of dog. I suspect it's some, some type of puppy. All right, let's move this over. Yeah, let's just keep this over here. Cool. Oh, he's getting all impatient. He misses me. Well, we'll, we'll start. We'll start printing this, and then we'll 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 play it by ear. All right. So this looks good. Is there anything else that we're forgetting about? Anything else that we're um, anything else we're forgetting about that we want to leave um, that we want to leave open? Uh, optical, yes, Toslink is an optical connector, so there's no value in gold plating it except to look cool. What part would even be gold plated? I thought it was, uh, yeah, what part's gold plated? I, I thought it was, like, made of nylon or something. <laughs> On top of that, like, it's not even like the quality is an issue. It's a friggin' digital format. Like, even if there was a problem, it would, like, how, like, even if there was a glitch, the glitch only lasts what? Like, 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 it's... It's an uncompressed digital format, so even if something went wrong, it's only going to last like one four forty eight thousandth of a second or something. <laughs> oh man, some people just have some people just have so much money they struggle to figure out how to spend it. Alrighty, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get our let's get extruding. Let's. Get extruded. In. Oh wait, wait, we made one more boo boo. We made one. We made one final boo boo. All right, here we go. And that is, we have to leave room for the USB. We have to leave room for the USB port. Uh, this is one of the wider ones that I've found, so I'm going to use it as our benchmark. And uh, it's about 13 millimeters wide. So let's uh, yeah, let's add let's add that in. 
This is exactly why I projected that USB port in the first place. So we're going to do, uh, let's see. Mm. Well, first we're going to do a center line. And we're going to put that in the middle of the USB port. Yeah, I should just gold plate everything. Call it audio file. Should make a make a make a hi-fi system and just gold plate everything. Like the outside too. Oh you fault. Isn't shouldn't ever isn't everything supposed to be optical now because we're in the future? Like isn't everything supposed to be like like optical drives and memory crystals and and like fiber optics supposed to be able to like look at a circuit and actually see the electricity going or the the the, the data going through it. <sighs> Can't believe we're still putting our lightning in metal, passing it through, passing it through rocks. Uh, Fourteen or fifteen? Call it fifteen. Might as well project these two. The uh, the USB like the the plug part is always going to be smaller, or the the jack is always going to be smaller than the plug. So we can just leave a hole about this size. I don't know. Does the standard does this, is, does the standard include like how much metal should be exposed after it's plugged in, or is that um, or is is that just on like a per device basis? Yeah, let's give give ourselves some options. Who are we gonna call? Mythbusters? I was I was just watching a Mythbusters. Like I was looking something up in particular. I think it was something exploding. Uh, what was it? Man, I forget. I was, I was talking to someone talking to someone about this on our Discord. Oh man, it was like some safety thing, and you know how safety conscious I am. Uh, and I was I was talking about how it exploded. Okay, let's do this. So this is already on the bottom. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Coolly, coolly, cool. So let's get rid of canvases and yeah, let's get rid of the canvases and the and the the board uh, to make it easier to see. And let's figure out what gets projected or what's what get what gets extruded. So is this is this right? All the uh, all the cutouts are not going to get extruded, and we have our we have our holes in here as well. Looks like we're going to have a bit of an overlap here. Um, hmm. Overlap there. We can fix that up. Uh, yeah. All right. So we just want to fix this guy up here. So we got this. Uh, we got this little little overlap going here. Are we are we in our sketch? Yeah. So I just want to. So we're just going to offset this to have two millimeter walls. Let's just confirm that this isn't going to collide with. Uh, isn't going to collide with anything. Not. Uh, it's getting a little close, but I think it's. I think it's all right. We're gonna offset this by two just to make sure there's enough plastic there to to hold the uh, to hold the insert down. So let's turn this off. Let's hide this again. Finish up, and now we'll extrude. Want to make sure we're actually extruding the right part. Okay. <laughs> make sure we're actually doing the underside of the board. All right, come on. Is there any anything else we have to make sure? Uh, this has to be. Ooh, what's going on here? Huh. Let's see here. How do we want to do this at the bottom? Let's just leave this. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of how to. Uh... 
I'm trying to think of like how much space we have to leave for the USB. I think we'll do that. We'll do that afterwards. I'm just going to leave a hole for the USB connector. Let's see. There we go. Leave the rest of this uh, open. So we're going to have to do a minor, a minor tweak here. But otherwise, so we want to make this thick, thick enough to hold our uh, heat set insert, as well as give it a little bit of extra wiggle room. So let's uh, let's call this five millimeters. What's going on? Why 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 isn't it why isn't it visible? Oh, because we we hid bodies instead of just hiding the board. All right. Okay, works for me. All right. So the problem was we had this problem was this bit doesn't uh, doesn't connect. Ah. I I made it I made it go to the wrong uh made it go to the wrong place. Oh, because it's offset. Ah, because it was offset. All right, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so now we'll now we'll just oh, hit the wrong thing. Is there a key combination for for finishing edit a, editing a sketch, so I don't have to like constantly go back and find the button and click on it? So you know me. You know how much I love clicking on buttons. Uh, all right. So the USB port, let's think here. The USB, I should probably cut the USB, I should probably like cut the USB port out later. I think that's probably the way to go about this. Yeah, I think we should just forget about the USB port while we uh, extrude this and then cut it out from the other direction. Because... It's, it's the, the USB port is sitting on top of the Zhao, which is sitting on top of the board. And I'm going to totally forget about that. So, yeah. Okay, so this should give us enough clearance to get around to all the components. Yeah. Should get us, uh, should buy, this should buy us enough clearance to get around to all the parts. And uh, be able to stick our, stick our bosses in there. So now let's add the bottom. Uh, so let's go to extrude. Copy all of it. What's going on here? All right, one, 169 profiles. 169 profiles. Aw, yeah. Oh yeah. So technically I only wanted to make the right side today, but I figure... <sighs> so remember, remember, like, I recommend making projects in a tiered manner. Basically, you want to be able to eject as many as often as possible. So if we design the whole keyboard at once, like if we design one for the whole keyboard instead of just the macro pad, it'll make it more generally useful. So, um, yeah. Uh, just, the to-do list doesn't really doesn't fully line up here. I am I am aware. Okay. So, we've selected all our geometry. We're going to start from the bottom. Yeah, we're going to start from what we just created. We're going to go down 2 millimeters. And there we go. We should have ourselves a nice little bottom. A nice little bottom. What is there something greasy? You, there's some sort of greasy residue on my space mouse. Is it leaking space? Oh no. Is it is all the space leaking out of it? Oh, we we seem to have overdone it a little bit. That's okay. We uh we we projected a, a bit that we did not need to project. The void is leaking, says error reader error reader, that's right. <sighs> I knew I shouldn't have cheaped out on my on my void. Like it's supposed to be a it's supposed to be a one-way thing. Something's not stuff's not supposed to come back out of the void. It's supposed to get sucked into the void and be lost forever. There we go. Shouldn't have cheaped out in the void. Oh, it's for it was for speed. That's right. I, I greased up my, my space mouse so I could model faster. Oh, oh we missed a we missed a part. 
There we go. Haha, <laughs> everything's fine. Uh, Oshikuru9x asks, what brand void did you use? I used... Brand. I don't think my mic is capable of picking up sounds like that, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's take this, let's, let's, let's think about this a little bit. So, we've got this bit on the side, this little lip that's going to go up and over the board. But we want this, if we want this thing to be really solid, this shouldn't just be two pieces that sandwich against each other. They should actually over, they should actually like interlock a little bit. So let's make that happen. So we're going to change this uh, from 250 to let's say, you think five would be too much? I guess, I guess we could always make it uh, smaller later. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. <laughs> so yeah, let's see. So actually, I think we, we might have overdone it a little bit. So let's see. We do want a chain selection. Basically what I'm doing here is, let's see, there we are. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have the two halves sort of inter, interlock a little bit. 2.5. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have the top and bottom sort of interlock a bit so they don't wiggle side to side. It's gonna make it feel much more solid. Yeah. Want everything to feel uh, to feel nice and solid. So now we're going to extrude. Uh, we're going to we're going to extrude this bit right here. So this part right here is going to is going to go. Let's see. Hang on one sec. All right. So the, this rim is going to surround the board and keep it from jiggling side to side and make it feel more solid. But then that sort of inner line that we just drew, uh, we're going to we're going to uh, pr we're going to extrude that even further so it kind of interlocks with whatever ends up going over it. Yeah. Zkeepa says why Unicode includes Braille is a mystery to me. The, 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 the silly answer is that your brain is so large, like, I hope I never, I hope I never run into you in a, I hope I never run into you in a, in a, in a dark alley, because your brain could totally kick my butt. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Your brain could totally kick my brain's butt. Your brain must be so large and, and pulsating. The serious answer is the Unicode has every, like, any... Any glyph used by humanity to express information. Like, it has, like, ancient runes. It has hieroglyphics. <laughs> like, yeah, it's going to have... It, it, is, it is funny that it can be used to express something that the people who use it to express things can't actually read. But, you know, that's not the point. Hell, it has emoji in it. It, yeah, it, it, is, it is pretty funny, though. <sighs> has uh, Braille. Oh, man. All right, so this guy here, we're going to start from here. Wait, what, why, 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 isn't it, why isn't it letting me... Oh, all right. So we're going to start from there, and uh, how, how tall should we make this? Let's... I think it's two. I think it's too tall. 1.2. Uh, hang on a second. 1.5 millimeter layers. Uh, let's call it one. Let's call it one and a half millimeters. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we got this lip. Very nice. So let's get this board out of here. We don't need that anymore. This is looking pretty good. Uh, Z Kiba is completely correct. Uh, emoji used to be uh, Japanese only, which is why it has so many Japanese-centric things. That is completely correct. It used to be a sort of value add 
by it's a sort of value add by Japanese uh, cell cell carriers. They uh, they would add emoji to their phones to kind of convince you to take to use theirs instead of the competitors. But then they immediately realize this is a stupid idea because if you use to talk to a competitor, then your emoji make no sense. So um, yeah, they ended up. They end up standardizing. Bear with me one sec. I'm going to go into the bathroom and grab myself a little water. We're coming to the end of our stream, but I'm thirsty now. Uh, yep, there are a ton of Japanese exclusive things. There's a Tengu in there. There's like a stick with Dongo on it. There are like tor like. Tori uh, arches. Oh man, there's all kinds of all kinds of stuff that makes no sense to Jap to to Americans. And the Moai head. I don't know the story behind the Moai head, but I love it. It's my favorite emoji. I love the Moai head. Um, yeah, this is, pre this is this is looking pretty good. Uh, which printers do we have that can actually print this? So this is 272 millimeters in the long side, which I think is too big for the Prusa. Um, I think, or is it three? Is the Prusa 300 millimeters on the side? We could definitely print it on the tool changer. But before, yeah, we could definitely print on the tool changer. But um, you know, before we do, we just have a few more, a few more odds and ends. Yeah, Prusa's not big enough. We, I guess we could split this. We could split this in two, but I think it's better to just print it in one shot on the, we could either hook the, the, the whatever it is, it's not going to be done today. So as, as usual, my to-do list is too, uh, is, is, too optimistic. Let's hide the let's hide the sketch. Uh, yeah, as usual, our to-do list is too optimistic, but um, at the very least, it'll be here for us on Monday when we continue the project. Yeah, so I think this should I think this should do the job. Uh, before we, you know, I'm not I'm. We, let's see. We're, we're, I mean, we're not done yet. Like, we still have to add. Um, we still have to like round corners and stuff. So one thing to think about is like the aesthetic of this. If we want to make it sort of like round feeling or we want to make it like if we want to give it sharp angular edges or if we want to give it rounded soft edges. I think I like I like angular more. Um, yeah, I, I like angular more, but there's no doubt that soft is more softer is like just more phys more physically comfortable. Um, we could split the difference. Yeah, like yeah, we could just we could just split the difference. So let's add our board back in here. All right. Hmm. Soydu says it's a cyber deck, so it should be cyberpunk. I guess yeah. I guess we should we should try to get some of the styling. We should try to get some of our cyber cyber deck styling in uh, early on. So let's. Uh. I'm hitting the wrong button. Uh, why can't I fillet this to five millimeters? Can I fillet both of these to five millimeters? Can I fillet these to three millimeters? All right. <laughs> so let's let's see uh, let's see how well this is going to work here. Uh, let's go. Call oh, this one three. Let's add another selection set over here and see if we can bring this in five. All right, that looks. That looks pretty good. Five millimeters is big, but it's not particularly dramatic. We do seven, ten. Well, then it just slices it all the all the way off. No, that's that's too much. <laughs> uh, I think eight. What is this? Is this not eight? Eight millimeters isn't gonna work. But ten is. That's that's stupid. Uh, see, oh, hey, our uh, our thingy is finished. Uh, it's, so we can't do eight millimeters and three millimeters. Uh, but what if we also bring this in? I want, I like one point five. All right, here we go. That looks that looks all right. Really, like we can't we can't shame for this a tiny bit more. 
Ah, all right, that'll work. Okay, so check this out. So what do you think about this? So we square off the corner, right? But then we fill it this. So it's got this distinctly like octagonal um, silhouette, but it's still going to be rounded, easy to print, less likely to peel off the bed, and less likely to uh, give, you a, give you a scrape. Yeah, I think, that, I think it could end up looking cool. Yeah. Hmm. Urufu has a, a chef's kiss emoji. Or a chef's kiss. Emote? I think, yeah, I think they're, I think Twitch is calling them, I think Twitch calls them emotes. Ah, oh, man. I'm so uncool. I don't know how my leg, I'm so unhip. I don't know how my legs stay attached. But let's, so it's not going to be, it probably won't be able to solve this until we select all of the corners that have to, or all the edges that have to get uh, chamfered. It's not chamfered, it's chamfered. Ah. There we go. All right. And the edges. All right, then let's round them all off. It's just, there's no reason not to round off the inner ones too. That'll make it more. That'll make it easier for the top and bottom to fit into each other. No reason. No reason not to. It's got that little bit at the corner that might um, that might end up being a thin wall, but that's fine. Honestly, it doesn't even matter if that comes together. I think this. I think this is looking all right. It's got a bit of a, it's a bit boxy, uh, bit, bit boxy, bit, um, bit, uh, bit rounded. I think it's, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So actually let's turn this on. So is there any way, let's see, so I think we probably also want, um, let's, uh, let's hide this part we just made. Oh, oh, wait, hang on a second. We, oh, right. We want, we want to see our parts. That's I was going to say, like, I want to, I want to be able to look at the, 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 the Seedwino too, but we've already, uh, we've already got that under control. So let's create a sketch on the side here. Let's project. There we go. Let's project our USB-C cable or USB-C uh, connector. There we go. Uh, you know, let's just friggin' project the whole face. No time for this crap. <laughs> <clears throat> We don't need to look at our parts anymore. All right. So, so we decided before they were about 14. So we decided that like uh, it's about 14 millimeter, uh, 14 millimeters wide. Where did I put that USB connector? Where did I put it? Did I throw it on the floor? Did I tuck it behind my ear? Oh, whatever. Uh, let's see how long this is. So this is going to be nine millimeters. So if we wanted to bring it up to 14, uh, then we would have to offset it by five. So let's just offset this by uh, 2.5. Yeah. So in this and this are, yeah, 14 millimeters. Actually, it didn't have to be that big, right? It only had to be 13. Yeah. So let's see. So this is the, the hole for uh, the USB-C. Huh. So one other thing I want to do here is, oh, another thing I want to do here is uh, we're going to project this line. I want to extend the cutout all the way to the top. Because if we do it the way we are now, it's going to need an overhang and we're going to have a hard, not only is it going to need an overhang, but 
like it's we're gonna have to awkwardly like tilt the board as it goes in and uh yeah we don't want that so yeah let's get this one too okay so let's finish the sketch let's take a look at the parts again parts unknown hmm Uh, I think that's actually, no, no, I think about that. I think this is going to be a little too aggressive. I want to offset this a little bit. Let's call it 0.5. And yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to kind of have two, two cutouts here. I want to have one for the port itself and one for relief for the cable to get around it. And, uh, yeah, we, we can't, we can't count on the user soldering it in that exactly. So let's see. Yeah. So let's extrude. Um, yeah. Let's see. So how do we want to do this? Actually, I don't know. Well, what's our, let's see, what's, what's our, what's the dimension here? I want to see how far out from the board is the USB port going to protrude? Approximately. It's about, it's like, 0.8 millimeters, give or take. Which is not a, that's not a, no, 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 not an impossible amount. All right, so here's, here's, here's how we, here's how we do this. We're going to go, we're going to extrude uh, the USB. Let's see, we're going to extrude this. Let's hide everything else. <clears throat> oh, may, hang on, made another, made another boo-boo. And then, we can we can we can fix it afterwards. Yep, cut it out through there. Here's the problem. I forgot about the lip. So we actually want to project up to here and uh, get rid of these coincident constraints. Bring these up so they they have to they have to cut through the lip as well. Do 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 do. There we go. Right, and I love working on projects. So this should cut all the way through still. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, hang on. What happened here? Why isn't it cutting through? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, <clears throat> we had we had too many streams in a row where I wasn't building projects. Where we were looking at 3D printers or other such things. All right. Hmm. Let's get our let's get our parts our parts in there. Okay, so this we want extent to object. So we'll cut all the way here. This is for the plug, but we can offset it, I don't know, like 0.5, back it off by by 0.5. I, see, I don't know exactly how much, like, oh, uh, here we go. I don't know how much wiggle room we're going to have when we plug this in. I guess there's one way to find out, right? Where, where is the Seaduino? I think I threw it in here. I hope I threw it in here. It's so tiny. It's going to be so super easy to lose. Oh, here it is. Snap these together. So let's see. We have a full two millimeters in between there. Full two millimeters. So I think 0.5 might even be too too conservative. Uh, I think it'd be 0.7. So let's see. So from here to here, we have point, point 0.7. I think, you know, let's make it a full millimeter. Why the heck not? Pardon my pardon my swearing. Pardon my French. All right, so now we have a nice little cutout here for a USB port. Wee. So check it out. We have the bottom half of the keyboard done. I mean, it hasn't been prototyped yet. We don't know if it's going to work, but but it is complete. That's pretty nice. Huh. 
So we'll add, uh, we'll add something to go over the OLEDs to protect them. And I guess if you'd like, uh, add a little, you know, put a little bit of like plastic or something to scratch proof them. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to fully, uh, I don't think we, we can cover them in any way that will make them impact resistant because why does it keep, why does Fusion keep switching back? Like, I'm not even touching anything here, but Fusion's going to switch back to wireframe. Uh, luxuriant squish, you're, t you're completely right. They said, whenever I design something in Fusion 360, after it prints, I'm always amazed how tiny it is. It looks so huge on the screen. Same thing for me in circuit boards. I'm always, I always get the board and I'm like, what was I thinking? There's a half millimeter clearance between the head of this screw and this component. It looks so big on the board. Yeah, everything, objects in, uh, in real life are smaller than they appear in CAD. I have to figure out some way to make that rhyme. Uh, yeah, so we'll add, we can add, a, we'll add the keycap type thing to that. That'll also make these uh, OLEDs the same height approximately as the keycaps. You notice that there are big spaces in between there. It's because actually, yeah, the space, yeah, I think these keycaps here are actually designed for, uh, for, are designed for Cherry MX spacing. So I guess I'm actually okay. Well, that's pretty sick. Uh, let's see. Luku says the first keyboard I'll build will have hexagonal keycaps. What are you going to have like just irregularly shaped spaces in between them? <clears throat> or are you going to stagger them? Uh, I think that'd be a little weird. I think, I think that'd be a little odd. Like our fingers are used to finding, our fingers are used to like finding the edges of keys. That might, that might, that might be a little weird. The B key. What do you think? If I screwed everything up, should I have made this like a hexagon, a hexagon keyboard? Oh, <laughs> the dog is, uh, the dog is losing his mind. Probably been a little too long since he's, uh, since he's had a W. Yeah, let's, let's, let's sham, chamfer the bottom. Chamfer. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, we, 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 we can't round it because this part is going to be flat against the bed. If we rounded it, it would have an overhang and it would come out come out looking a little, a little ugly. Yeah, it's really easy to get used to an ortholinear keyboard. Uh, it's, it's really easy. I think, I think it was like, I, it was kind of awkward for the first few days, but within two weeks I was typing at nearly full speed and... A month or so after, uh, a month or so after that, I was typing even faster than I was before, because uh, like it's just I, f I just find it so much easier to to type in ortholinear. Like it's so much easier to remember where everything is and for my fingers to find the to find the key. Boop. Very nice. Um, do I want to add? Yeah, I guess I I guess I, I might as well might as well at this point, right? Uh, we're going to project the bottom here yep we're gonna we're gonna project all oh, the poor puppy we're gonna project the bottom we're gonna add some center lines and we're just going to add some places to put uh to put rubber feet hey brooke if, if you're listening i think that i think that pup might need some we need some walkies wait till wait till he stops barking if we, uh, if we give him a walk because he's barking, then we're training him to bark when he wants a walk, and we don't want that. But, yeah, we're coming to the end of our, of our stream. Okay, so we're going to want a hole that's about 8.5 millimeters. Uh, let's see. Grab a construction line here. Uh, no, no, we don't want that. I was wrong. Um... Hmm. All right. Eight and a half millimeters, we said. 8.5. For our feetsies. Move this, move this a little further inland. All right. And then we will just mirror this over here. Mirror both of these over here. And uh, then we will simply uh, extrude them. 
So uh, we made the base two millimeters thick. So just out of curiosity, let's let's cut let's cut in five millimeters and see what we see what we're slicing into. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, remember, it's, it's going to sag because this is going to be an overhang. So um, let's let's. Now I'm thinking about this. Nope, this is the wrong. We've gone about this the wrong way. We've started. We've started wrong. If we put, if we add an ins, ah, mm, damn. If we add an inset to put feet on, it's going to make it less sturdy. Uh, yeah. So, man, this is this is this is tricky. We could add a little inset to put TPU in, um, but. Do screw uh feet that screw in says Matt L sixteen ninety eight. I want to keep the low profile thing going. What's is there something even even lower profile that we can do? Hmm. Some way to increase the friction with the desk. Is there some maybe we like put the put like rubber or something on the bottom? Just doubles double stick tape it to the desk. Just put some put some yeah. Let's see, so we made the base two millimeters thick. So we could just make, could just punch out two millimeters. How 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 deep are these feet? These are rather large feet as well. Yeah, I'm. You know what? Let's just let's just get rid of this. Yeah, we don't care about this. Uh, we we just won't use this. Um, I think we'll just specify like a low profile low profile feet. Yeah, I don't think that this looks pretty cool. This is this is turning out to be a. To be a nice looking keyboard. The re yeah. Let's see. Huh. Hinged feet, says Zkeepa. No, we don't. We don't. We don't do that here. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't tilt a keyboard towards yourself. I think the met. Yeah, like even even if it was just like deploy, like to deploy. Um, yeah, we could just print the entire thing in TPU. That would that would be kind of neat, actually. Uh, I unfortunately I don't think I can do like if the idea is that that people at home can print one for themselves. I don't think we can do that because uh, not everyone. I, I'm pretty sure nearly everyone can print TPU, but I don't think most people feel comfortable printing TPU. In the meantime, let's ah let's rescue our revised clippy thing and let's see how well it works mm -hmm. ah i dropped it everything's fine all right so let's let's see it should fit slightly tighter it should fit it should be snug let's see it should go on this way all right that's all oh, that's that's nice and snug and this guy should yeah that's it's it's staying put i think it'll work for now not the best but i think it's pretty it's pretty good let's, yeah, let's give a little a little test run not the most comfortable yeah, not the not the most comfortable because of the uh uh, because of the clip, but um, we could, uh, yeah, I think we'd make this work. I'm gonna call this a good repair. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this thing repaired, even though I think the 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 hook on the the clip there is a little too, a little too aggressive. But nothing stops me from printing another one. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, why does this keep? Oh, by the way, the this, this shirt was, uh, I completely forgot, I think this shirt was given to me by, by Reagan, I, I think. So, somebody bought it off my, my Am I put it on my Amazon shop wish list as a joke, and somebody bought it. It has a little quagsire in the pocket. It's a little pocket quagsire. It's a little itty bitty pocket quag. So, yeah, oh, I love, I, I love this. Let's see, uh, let's see how this prints. Let's go, let's head back over here. Let's see those prints. By the way, of course, before I forget, episode sponsored by Next PCB. Uh, every once in a while, you're gonna see a let's see. I'll tell you what. I'll trigger right now. Let's go hash bang sponsor. 
there you go. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Next PCB, and they have given me uh, they've given me a uh, a coupon for hundred bucks off that any of you can claim just by clicking that link. Hundred bucks is a lot of boards, and they do all. I mean, they do all kinds of crazy boards. You can get you can get uh, flexible. They, they make flexible boards. They make boards that are combination flexible and rigid. And they offer a lot of features that you don't usually see in these like overseas manufacturers. You can get like gold fingers, castellated pads, uh, it, tab routing, like inner inner like inner milling, like like we've got here. A certain other PCB company the name starts with the J. I don't think they offer that in their service. Uh, yeah, and uh, they are sponsoring this project and this episode. So go ahead and support them and support the channel. Uh, this episode would have been, or this project would have been kind of awkward to do without them because a keyboard is fairly large, and by the time all said and done, I would have spent like a lot of money on boards. So yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> See, keep us this. So they didn't fire you for not using the product in the video. Well, when we planned this, I had, I had hoped to have the PCBs in hand, but you know, global. Sh Global logistics being what they are nowadays, uh, I think this is an acceptable substitute. Besides, the project is going to be made with them, and pardon if this ends up if I end up doing if I end up doing the uh, the kit thing if I end up making this whole thing a kit, ugh, then I will try to use them to manufacture all those boards. So we might end up buying a big old stack of boards. This might be my very first. Hope, there's a chance that this could become my very first Kickstarter project. I, I've, I've helped a lot of clients get stuff on Kickstarter, but I've never done it myself. Could be, uh, yeah, could be, could be interesting. Anyways, uh, let's give this a little save, and let's see how this looks in the tool changer. Let's make it on up. Let's see how this looks. I don't know where the boards are. Uh, oh, man, that goes edge to edge. That is... That, that's completely filling this thing up. I have to make sure that whatever tool we print this with can actually hit all of those points. Oh man, that's a, that's a big board. That's a, that's a big print. Of course, like, let me think, let me think for a second here. Uh, Matt asks, how does the $100 show up? It's showing zero in the balance. I believe if you register using the link, yeah, I think, I think if you, uh, if you register using the link, then um, just place an order from that account, and it should automatically apply $100 credit against whatever you order. Yeah, I, I, I rigged up the Chromance so you can control it uh, using stream using stream commands. If you have any problems, by the way, if you have any problems with um, uh, you know Next PCB, if there is any sticking point or anything, feel free to feel free to reach out to me, and I'll I'll pass on your uh, I'll pass on your concerns to my rep. I don't know why this is moving so slowly. This is pretty neat. Uh, so now I just realized this, that like I can print friggin' 300 millimeter wide keyboard cases, but your average viewer can't. So yeah, you are live with Will says, it looks like it's a collection of coupons. Okay. So I guess, I guess it's a bunch, I guess it's coupon codes. It's, I've been using like they, 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 they gave me that code for our first episode where I made that together where I made the cyber deck so they may have changed how it works so I'm very sorry I should have looked that up in advance it looks like you get a coupon pardon pardon my misinformation could we print this diagonally on a yeah that's that's an interesting point uh, unimposing craft dinner says turn it diagonally yeah let's let's take a look uh, let's switch this over. I should have a... Do I not have a... Oh, yeah, I do have a Prusa. <sighs> switch this on over to a Prusa. And uh, let's turn this around. I don't think this is going to... Yeah, I, don't, I don't think this can fit. I think it's too big. Yeah, I think it's too big for our, our buddies at Prusa. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I just yeah, this is uh, I just realized this can't this can't work for our, for our needs. Let's hide let's hide the boards and the parts because yeah, you know, we are gonna have to uh, divide this up so that folks at home can make it themselves. 
How wide did these end up being? Could we just like slice this in half and just add some pegs? So it's three millimeters. If we punch a 1.75, if we punch a two millimeter hole in there to stick filament in there to hold it together, it's only gonna have one millimeter walls. Uh, I think it's doable, but I don't think it's optimal. Hmm. How do we want to do this? Maybe if we like slice it, then I'll have to uh, or angle it 45 degrees. Yeah, that's right. Print it, print it like, print it like that. So it's all support, all support material. That would take centuries. Oh my God. So we're going to have to split this thing in half so folks at home can make it themselves. We don't want it to, uh, we don't want anything splitting apart though. We don't, we don't want it to feel wobbly. Which was a problem with the, which was a definite problem with the 668. Uh, if you put some pressure on it, it starts to strain in the middle where it connects together. So we're gonna have to do a little zigzagging. We're gonna have to do a little zigging, a little zagging to get this thing to, uh, to get this thing sliced up properly. We could, we, we could do tab, uh, yeah, we could do tongue and grooves or tabs. Hmm. I could do, yeah, we could do tongue, tongue grooves or tabs. Those have to be dialed really in, really far in. Let me think here. They have to uh, be dialed really far in, or like on the user's printer, or they're not going to go together. We don't want. We, we want to avoid anything being supported. Let's think here. So we don't want to just cut a Z, like a, an S into the side because we don't want anything to be supported. Uh, yeah. We want to we want to limit how much support material we need. I'm thinking we we could slice it dead dead down the middle, and then just add holes uh, to pin it together with add holes to like <clears throat> to like pin it together. We could also like just cut here 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 here. Just like make it make it like a zigzag. Just increase just max out the surface area. I think that's the way to go. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the way to go. Just like. Have it zig and zag back and forth, so that there's a, so there's a whole bunch of surface area. Yeah, I think this is the I think this is the the way the way to do. Okay, so we just so to split this in half, uh, we just have to create a sketch. We just draw a line, and we just use that line as the tool. So uh, we're just so let's so anyways, I started projecting. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I want to go like zigging and zagging like that. I think that's the way to go. So let's, oh wait, no, oh, I, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. I screwed it up already. So let's create a new sketch. We're running out of time here. We got 15 minutes. So I'm just going to try to cut this, we're going to try to cut this thing in half and, uh, then we'll sign off for the day because we're coming to the end. Actually, uh, yeah. I think it's, a, no. I guess I can't check it off yet because we're not done designing. Wompity, wompity, womp. Okay, so let's project in uh, everything we're going to need. So let's see. I don't want to go... With yeah, we're gonna want to go through the center. So what did we say before? It was three millimeters. So I think this will work. Yeah, we're doing we're doing ortholinear style here. Let's see. Hmm. I'm not I'm not sure we have to go this. I'm not sure we have to go this crazy. All right. Oh man, this is, this is not hard, this is not, fun. this cannot be fun to watch. So, yeah. basically, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see, you'll see what we're doing here after I, uh, after I off, uh, after I offset these. So let's see. So we decided before this is three millimeters. So we're just going to offset this 1.5, negative 1.5, and uh, so on and so forth. And then we'll just link them together and Bob's your uncle. 
who is like whose uncle is Bob? Like, what? How? How does that make things easier? Who? Who is this person? Is is who? Who is this Bob? This so-called Bob, that um, that can that like <laughs> seems to have some sort of dominion over over trivial tasks. How do we want to do this? Do we want to just continue this up and slice it here, and then continue this down and slice it here? Or we could also carry this over. Like, yeah, I think this is the I think this is the way to go. This is the way to go. So we're gonna project this and this. Yeah, we're gonna so we'll go like slice this, and then continue up this way. And uh, then we'll continue over here. Oh, that's gonna slice. Uh, <coughs> it's gonna slice one of these in half. Uh, we could just go like just through the center, or just end it here. Yeah, I, I, I think this is gonna. Be, I think this would work the best. So we're gonna want to. So okay. I wonder how I wonder how well these will uh, these will fit together. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. All right. So let's put a construction line here. Yeah. Let's put a construction line here. Uh, let's put a line, a regular line. Start. Like a, a regular line. Go all the way here, and uh, yeah, let's connect them together. Oh, apparently the British Prime Minister had an uncle named Bob, and there was some nepotism at play. So the way to make something easy is if Bob's your uncle. Ah, I see. So let's just bring this... Right there. All right. So what's the, let's see. This is how far apart? Why is it measuring? Why is it measuring there to there? What? That's so strange. <laughs> I'm guessing this is going to be over at least 1.5. Uh, all right. So I think we can slice this in two here and then they'll glue together. They got a lot of surface area. Um... I don't think, can we offset this entire thing? Or is it not gonna let me because part of it's already offset? Yeah, it's not gonna let me. So, could we just, are these just uh, would these just fit together? Like, are our dimensions gonna be good enough that we just like, these together? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. I'm, I'm still, yeah, I guess most people, we, we are gonna have to fix, yeah, I guess, I guess we are gonna have to fix this. Or at least increase, at least increase this. But yeah, let's let's see how this looks. Let's uh, here we go. We're going to split the body. We're going to make this our tool. There we go. And then there were two. So yeah, now we got two pieces, and uh, yeah, now we got two pieces. And because we slice them where they're thickest, we're going to have the most surface area to glue this together. There we go. That fits just perfect in a Prusa. And if it fits in a Prusa, pretty likely it's going to fit other printers as well. Oh, and I realized I just made my job easier because now I can print both halves at the same time. Prototype twice is quick. My brain is so big. Mm. All righty. Anything else we want to cover? Anything else we want to talk about, hang out, etc. cetera, before, um, before we sign off for the day? We usually end at 5 and we're approaching 5. Can we offset the faces? Jamal Popper uh, suggests we offset the faces. That is an excellent idea. Let's give it a shot. I don't think the offset faces tool. The way I've the way I understand the press pull. I, I I mean we could try press pulling or offset faces. The way I understand this is that it never works the way you want it to. So I'm guessing it's not going to help us because it never works the way I want it to. But I suppose 
there's I suppose we could certainly give it a chance. Did we select the inner? Did we select it like an inner thing as well? I think we did. <laughs> there we go. Oh, fusion. So janky. All right, let's minus 0.25. What, did it actually work the way I expected it to? Oh my gosh. How much space do we need? How much space do we want between this? You think half a millimeter of clearance is enough? Or like in total, or you think that's going to be too much? I'm thinking a half millimeter. Well, let's, 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 let's give this a shot. Let's try a half millimeter. There we go. Wow, it actually worked. I... This is the f literally the first time I have ever gotten any real utility out of press pull. Well, there you go. First time for everything. I'm glad it, I'm glad we didn't sign out early. Glad we didn't sign off early. Cuz this majestic day would never have come. And Fusion, is it just me or is Fusion getting like like, is Fusion getting jankier and jankier over time? Like, now it's frozen? Like, less reliable and just weirder? Or has it always been this way? Or am I, like, has it always been this way? Or am I just getting more, am I just noticing it more as, like, I build more advanced projects? So we have a lot of clearance here. I'm wondering if it's too much. Half a millimeter... Could be a lot of clearance to cover, but that's fine. Uh, all we have to do is edit this. This is why I love Fusion 360. I love the ability to go back in time. I think, all right, a quarter, a quarter millimeter, I think, could do the job. So before we get confused, let's go back to Super Slicer and discard that. All right, I think, I think we're in biz. I think we're in biz nasty. Uh, Point point two five. I think I think point two five will work. Um, yeah, especially because yeah, yeah. Let's look. Let's let's let's, let's give it a shot. I I found that the Prusa X X Y uh, the Prusa slicer and Super slicer tend to get the X Y dimensions pretty accurate. Generally, there's around a point two five millimeter fuzz factor that 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 gets involved there. So uh, yeah. So it's 0.25 total. Hmm. Yeah. Soy do. I see a little, I see a little, a uh, little keystroke or a little keycap icon next to your, next to your name. General Popper is correct. Fusion does not take advantage of powerful hardware. Yeah, it's not well optimized. I, I think that's the price you pay for them, the multi-platform aspect of it. All right. Enough faffing about. Uh, yeah, we never ended up, uh, never ended up using the lull spot. Just took, it took longer than I expected to, like, I expected it to take a while to get the file from Eagle in, to get the model from Eagle into Fusion, but it took, still took longer than I expected. Either way, uh, it's currently just about five. Let's, uh, what do you think? Should we get some, uh, some printers going? Let's get some prints going. Maybe we should, uh, maybe I should switch this over to being like, what, like a printer and chill stream. I just realized, I, is this, does, does this stream have the right name? I think the stream has the right name, but I might have forgotten to rename it. What, what, what are we, what are we even calling this crap? Yep, designing a 3D printing mechanical keyboard. I've got to get better with, i got to get better with titles and thumbnails. Man, I'm just, just not good at that. Uh... Shoggoth 9T says, plans for keyboard inclination. You don't incline a keyboard. It's bad for your wrists. Keep it flat. Keep it flat. I don't want to, I don't want giving people carpal tunnel to be on my, uh, be on my conscience. Um, yeah, let's keep the stream going for another couple minutes. Just long enough to get some prints going. Yeah. First, let's turn our attention uh, back here. We're done. So what's cool is we're done printing polycarbonate. So we have to <coughs> wash the polycarbonate um, we have to wash the PC Magigoo off the bed, but we don't need to unload it and load in, uh, poly and load in PLA because in one of the other extruders, we already have PLA loaded in. And that extruder has a volcano nozzle, so we can run this extra fast. I think we're just going to start the prints and then call it a day, though, because, uh, the hour draws late.
So, yeah, let's see. So we're doing, doing PLA. So let's give this the glue. Let's give it the glue. Got some, got some of that fancy glue that changes color. Yeah. And if this were preschool, I'd be so friggin' popular right now. Everyone, everyone wanted to hang out with the guy with the color changing glue. And the smelly markers. You have those markers that like, that like smell like different fruits and stuff. Yep, encouraging kids to, 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 to snort um, markers. All right, let's, oop, that's not what we want. Let's go back over here. And, oh, I just realized, oh man, this might, you know what? This might be a good time to, so I found out, here, check this out. So I found out that this build plate, I didn't even know this last time. This is actually a double-sided plate. The, like, the, the side that's up here is, is plain glass. And I'm pretty sure on the other side, it's coated with PEI. So I don't even think we have to glue it up. I think the other side is coated with PEI. I did not know that for the stream, or I would have... Uh, the other, like the stream where we showed this thing off, or I would have talked about it. By the way, if you want to win one of these Lulzbot machines yourself, uh, you got to enter a con you got to enter the contest. We're doing a, we're doing it's called Hello Wearables, and I'm challenging you to make a 3D printed wearable that we can put on things. It can be any kind of wearable. It can be a wearable computer. It can be cosplay. It can just be fashion. Uh, as long as it's wearable, I'm gonna take the best ones and feature them in an episode on the channel. And uh, we're giving away a $1,500 prize package to first place. And I want to say around, uh, give or take three or four hundred total for second and, and third. But uh, yeah, the top three as well, the, the top three winners as well as anything I like, anything I think I can actually pull off printing in one week is going to show up on my channel. So yeah, that printer's pretty sick. I'm being very gentle. There's just a little bit of crud. Get off there. All right. Oh, it's got TP. Oh, that's cool. It's got TPU in the corners. Oh, check that out. The other side is coated in PEI. So now it has a very slight frosted look. I didn't even realize that. I've never, oh, sorry for, sorry I keep knocking this. I've never used a glass, a PEI coated glass plate before. I'm guessing that uh, parts, I'm guessing that, P, that PLA is going to stick to it really, really well, but it's going to be next to impossible to remove before this thing fully cools off. I've only used the spring steel PEI on the Prusa, so I'm pretty stoked to try this out. I know that this is, uh, this type of plate is a really common upgrade for the Ender, uh, for the Ender printers. I think Creality sells um, sells a glass sheet with P, uh, sells a yeah a glass bed with PEI sheet on it. Pretty cool. Alrighty. Well, while we're while we're doing this, might as well preheat, right? Temperature preheat for pla. We're gonna use uh, I don't know what 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 should we prototype in? We have a bunch of white PLA from uh, Micro Center. Uh, could you probably probably use that? We've oh man, there's so much film in here, and we're getting more. There's there's even more filament coming in. Oh, there's nothing. Oh no, you can't see me. I forgot to turn the monitor. We're getting even more filament in because uh, um, I got I got Matter Hackers to provide some of the rarest so there were a whole bunch of filaments that i couldn't that wasn't that was i thought i couldn't feature in these videos about every filament which would kind of mean they're not every at all but you know what can you do about it and uh yeah matter hackers called, reached out to me out of nowhere and offered to send over some filaments so yeah it's pretty sick we want to do it in red uh we actually do yeah i actually do have some red um uh... Hmm. Well, we're definitely gonna do the other one in white because that's what's loaded in. Let's get that one started before uh, before we get too sidetracked. 
So, uh, oh, we definitely probably want to go over here. So let's tr let's do the left side on the left printer and the right side on the right printer. So we're so creative here. How do we even think of this stuff? One one challenge we're going to have here is that these fingers, these magic fingers, are going to uh, they're going to try to curl. So we're going to need a brim. Uh, yep, we already have our brim. Okay, so we're we've got a uh, Prusa. Nope, we're gonna do Squirt Stephanie. Yep, we're gonna do Squirt Stephanie. We want all these on our P our special PLA profile because the fans on this thing are so ridiculously strong. If we use the regular PLA profile, the layers won't stick to each other because the fans are too strong. <laughs> so we're gonna go fast. We gotta go fast. We're going to print this on the fourth extruder because that one's the volcano. Actually, we got to go f fast is good, but we can go really fast because this is a volcano. Yeah, let's let's friggin let's go. Let's let's open this thing up. Let's let's go full send. Uh, what do you think? Should we try 100 millimeter a second parameters? Uh, how 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 crazy how crazy do we want it? Yeah, let's do it. 100 millimeters, 120 infill. Uh, let's go 50. Go 50 solid infill, top solid infill. Let's bump that up to 40. Uh, support speed 100, bridge speed 100. Uh, actually, let's bring that back down. Uh, thin extrusions, we want those to be slow. Yeah, first layer speed, uh, we'll leave that where it is. I wanna make sure that goes, um, I want to make sure that goes down okay. We're going to keep this, uh, let's go 0.2 millimeters. This is a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. So it's bigger than it's bigger but not that much bigger like it's not the difference between 0.4 and 0.6 but yeah um i think that could i think that'll work so as for our filament uh, let's switch let's take a look at our pla all righty so we're going to be running pla we're going to be we're going full send here so we're going to bump the temperature up very slightly to can this stuff go 225 or is it going to start taking damage it says 225 so we're going to try to print this stuff 225 Very nice. All right, get this roughly centered. There we go. Let's. It's really, it's really open her up. So it's still gonna take three hours. Where's the? What? Why is it? Why is it printing? Oh, I, oh, I was messing around with the multi. I was messing around with the multi-material settings. Uh, I gotta, I gotta unscrew this. I have to, I, I think I have to upgrade Super Slicer too. I think this is an old version. Three hours still. Wow. All right. Well, it's nature of the game. Send it. Uh, keep left. Send it. And uh, then we need to move on to the uh, the other printer. We're gonna have to install some some PLA in there. Let's grab one of these. Uh, oh, hey, check it out. We have a we have some fusion. We have some uh, some cheap fusion pur color purge filament. Basically, you know those uh, you know those mystery flavor dum dum lollipops that like like as they switch between flavors, they just like take the flavors in between like with half of one half the other and call them mystery flavor well this is mystery flavor pla there's a little bit left but that's okay we have a run out sensor so here take a look at here watch the printer while we get this uh while i get this stuff set up and we're gonna go we're gonna go full send oh lulzbot yeah this thing we could probably open up pretty hard too because this has a 0.5 millimeter nozzle as well I believe this has a 50, I think this is a 50 watt heater. I think the heater in this is substantially spicier than the one in a Prusa. Don't, don't quote me on that though, I'm not 100%. It is a wider nozzle though, and uh, this printer can haul ass. Whether the filament can, whether the extruder and the filament can keep up. Remember that's, remember like these things are built for three millimeter filament. Uh, this one, and the one I'm giving out for the the one we're giving out for the contest is the exception. Most low spot printers are designed for three millimeters, so you can print in a hurry. Uh, come on, 
I really don't like this this runout sensor. It's really hard to actually get the filament past the switch and into the feed tube. God damn it. Mm. Why am I having so much trouble? I, I can't get it in. Get your minds out of the gutter. I feel like I'm going to break this. How hard is it to get a friggin' piece of PLA into a... Do a friggin' tube. Jeez Louise, there we go. Alrighty. Well, while that's printing, let's switch back over to... There we go, here's our color purge filament. And uh, let's take a look at our extruder. to change filament. We're going to load filament. First, I have to line it up and make sure I don't shove my pinky into the extruder cooling fan again. Oh, the nozzle cooled back down? Well, no, no worry. We're back to... We're printing. I'm printing here! Let's drop this down a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start messing around. I've been I've been messing around with uh, like speed and and quality settings because I feel like I've been leaving a lot of leaving a lot of speed on the table by uh, just never taking the time to to learn how to uh, taking the time to learn how to print fast. All right, here we go. Oh, it's Zkeep, are you you printing in? Uh, you you doing you doing some peak printing too? I still have a bunch left. I have to I have to figure out a good project for it. Oh, my printer is beeping at me. Boop. Come on, filament, you can do it. What do you think? Did it reclog itself? Didn't reclog itself. Maybe step this down a tiny bit. All right, we're moving. All right. Uh, one thing I realize I should do is uh, give the PEI a good clean with some alcohol because it is PEI, and you're supposed to give it a clean with alcohol before you print PLA on it. So let's. Do, let's do so. Here we go. Doing more printing outside the closet than in it. Print fast and break things. Oh, we could try. Tell you what, let's go over here and uh, let's save this. Instead of fast, we'll call this 0.2 millimeters because it is really fast. Yeah. Print filament settings. Let's save this as uh, turbo fast because we're we're printing a little bit hotter. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's so let's uh, close this down and uh, let's go ahead and print this guy. And uh, yeah, we'll do a little bit of printing, and then we'll do like we'll just get we'll just, you know get everything printing, and then we'll uh, then we'll call it a day. So basically, over here I'm doing the same thing, except it's I'm printing and picking a Taz Sidekick. Oh, I'm going to need the SD card. I haven't got this guy set up with OctoPrint yet, because we have something interesting coming for that Seed Studio 
is sending over this device called the Reterminal, which is like a Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen on it. And I'm going to try to rig it up for Octoprint, because if that works, it is going to be the easiest way to get Octoprint on a printer. Like, it's a Raspberry Pi, it's got a display built in, it's got a quarter inch thread on the bottom, like, cam like for a camera, so it can make a mount in like 20 seconds. And that's everything you need to attach a touchscreen with Octoprint or Clipper, fine, directly to your printer. Mm. In the meantime, so let's let's try this. Let's let's print this at 0.2 millimeters really fast. No, not the ultimate printer. We want to do the Taz. Get this in here. We definitely want the brim. Uh, we're printing this really fast. So the PLA with turbo fans isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it because uh, the fans on the the fan on the Taz is a lot less ridiculous. But, pardon, we still want to jack the temperature up. Uh, yeah. Let's give this a shot. This, let's give this a shot. So this is saying four hours. Um, why is it saying, why is it saying four hours? Oh, because the point, it's a 0. 0.6 millimeter nozzle on the Volcano, not a 0. 0.5. The 0. 0.5 is on the Titan. So we're slightly smaller here, but yeah, you can see the difference. Like, remember, I'm using literally the same profiles for both of these, right? I just took literally the same, the same settings and I switched it from one printer to the other. And the difference between a 0.5 millimeter and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle is an hour. Yeah, so if, if you've never gone any bigger than a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you are severely limiting what you can do with a 3D printer. In the meantime, uh, Lowell's bot, uh, let's call this. Keep right. There we go. X eject that. I wish the eject button just fired the SD card out of the computer. I, I, I miss that. Something just makes... I don't know why, but something just makes me so happy when... Or something made me so happy when, like, I right-clicked the CD drive and hit eject and it actually popped the CD out. I don't, I don't know why, but it, it just made me smile. So let's go back to... Let's go back here. Let's get rolling. Print from the media. It's it's fine. It's it's not one of those mainstream medias. <laughs> Somebody on Twitter called me far far left the uh, yesterday. I didn't I didn't even know how to react. I didn't even know how to react. I am anything but. I'm 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 far I'm far moderate. Ah, oh, here we go. Smash into it full speed. Aw, oh, it didn't. Oh yeah, uh, hamburger menu is totally correct. Three and a half inch floppies had some serious velocity behind them when they ejected. Yeah, because like th there was like this mechanical linkage there. Like the harder you push the eject button on some of them, the harder it fired the the floppy disk out of the out of the computer. I, I might have gotten in trouble in, I might have gotten, like, you know, yelled at in my elementary school computer lab for seeing how far I can fire a, see, fire a floppy disk. Yeah. <laughs> compared to most Western countries, Zach is moderate right compared to American, Zach is somewhat left. Yeah, I think that's about, I guess by American standards. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not I, I'm definitely not gonna say I have a, co a coherent political theory. <laughs> I th I think the goal I mean I don't know. I, I think the goal the goals are admirable, but the implement I'm, I'm not I'm not sold on an implementation yet. Anyways, let's see how well this goes. And uh in the meantime, look at that first oh, isn't that a great first layer? You know why the first layer is going down so great? Because I didn't increase the speed for the first layer. We're gonna, everything is going to go to hell. Like, as soon as this thing... As soon as this thing, like, go, goes to the second layer, it's going to go nuts. And uh, then we'll start calling it a... We'll start calling it a day. i got to speed up this, uh, this auto-leveling on the lull spot. There's no reason for it to be moving this slowly. There's no reason for it to be going this slow. 
Oh, it's got boogers all over. Get out of here, boogers. Get out of here, boogers. Jill says, next stop, Micro Center. For you or for me? For... Yeah, I don't think Micro Center actually sells a lot of stuff for this. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Let's, get, let's keep our fingers on the baby step button. Oh, uh, yep. Definitely too low. There we go. Is that too low? I think that's... It's too low. Is this bed just really cockeyed? Did I like mess something up? Did I screw it down unevenly? Nope. No, this, this is this is how it's always set. It is def the bed is definitely uneven. Uh yeah, the auto this auto leveling is not effective enough. Yeah, this, this auto-leveling was not aggressive enough. I have to... Ah, man, I, I gotta do some more... I gotta do some more re reading up about... Uh, what, what am I adjusting here? I, co I gotta do more reading up about... Um, about Marlin. Because it's, uh, it's just such a common 3D printer firmware. Eventually I'll, eventually I'll run Clipper on something, maybe. I, I did make it a Patreon goal. I made a Patreon goal that I'd make a, a Voron and install Clipper on it. Close enough. Oh, man. Let's see. Unknown VS13 says, you ever tried the Pine Soul for soldering? I've never used any of Pine's products. I'd, I'd really like to, though. Uh, they, they make stuff that sounds interesting to me, but... It just seems like it, like it could either be exactly what I'm looking for, or it could be just complete jank. They they they're, they're making this uh, this e-paper tablet. It's the type of thing I've been looking for 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 forever. It's basically like a, an e-paper tablet the size of a sheet of paper. So I think that would come in handy even for streams to like you know look at data sheets and other stuff like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, I think it's about time to uh, it's about time to draw this one to a close. Um, definitely, I'm not going to sign off until until we hit the second layer on this thing, so we can see how bad everything goes. But thanks a lot to everyone for watching. Uh, luckily, we did hit our goal of maintaining 75 average viewers. So as soon as I hit that stop streaming button, we're going to have all the prerequisites for me to apply for um, not partnership. What's it called? Ah, I was really on a roll there. Um, the one where I can take subscriptions. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. This is, uh, this is the, the end of an era, but yeah, we're still trying to grow the channel out. So I appreciate everyone telling all your friends and, you know, people at your hackerspace, people you build projects with, uh, just anyone you think would be interested. Um, if you want to hang out after this, uh, head on over to discord.gg slash voidstarlab. But before you do, uh, make sure you check out today's sponsor, Next PCB, because they're offering 100 bucks in coupons, apparently. And um, yeah, the circuit boards are super high quality. They have uh, all kinds of features that you don't ordinarily see in these things, these guys, like yeah, like like edge plating, inner inner routing, just crazy stuff. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a uh, yeah, it's gonna they, they, they've been. They're helping me out with all the with uh, with all the boards for this project, and that means a lot. So this is going to this is part of a later project. We're going to be working on this on Monday, so make sure you set your calendar. You make sure you put something in your calendar. Affiliate, that's what it, I think it's affiliate. Uh, anyways, um, oh, this is uh, it's an interesting question. Zoster says, when the stream ends, can you start a new one with just the printer cam? Normally, I would say yes, but. I want to keep that average view, viewer number high so that I get a higher chance of um, actually, you know, actually being, you know, you don't immediately get affiliate or whatever. You have to get approved. Anyways, uh, yeah, this has been a blast. I really love working on projects. This has been a really good one. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot left to do on this. I, I hope that the circuit boards arrive by Monday. There's a chance, a low one, but a chance nonetheless. So uh, we might actually be able to start pulling this thing together. Oh, it's super exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it.
A nozzle. I would love to make a nozzle cam. Oh man, maybe the uh, maybe the maybe the sidekick. Maybe the sidekick. I can stick a nozzle cam on it. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone for for hanging out with me. It's been a real blast. Thanks to everyone for uh, being interested in my projects. And now let's watch my uh, now let's watch my printer go completely haywire trying to uh, trying to print at a uh, hundred millimeters per second. Thanks a lot to everyone for watching, and of course, I will uh, see each and every one of you in, on, and around the vicinity of the future.